There we go. All right, we're just working out a few kinks there, I guess. So uh, yeah, type try a new. Sorry, go ahead. So good morning, everybody. It's the 2023 United States National Snooker Championship live here at Embassy Billiards in San Gabriel, California. David Bernie's in the booth with you, alongside with Christian Youngers. We're happy that you're all tuning in wherever you are. Feel free to let us know where you are, if you have any comments or questions. And we're going to start off with a great match to get things going in this tournament. It's last year's champion, Stephen Wong, hosted that great Tom Collins trophy in Ox Billiards last year in Seattle, Washington. He's taking on Seattle's own Alexander Newstead. And Stephen set to break off, and we have begun. 2023 U.S. National Snooker Championship. Good morning, Vinit Dasani. We're missing you, Vinit. Vinit is a, a great help in the Vancouver scene, does a lot of scorekeeping, refereeing, player, and all that good stuff. So, yeah, we're just uh, let us know as well how you're watching it. Like if 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 any hiccups are happening. Yeah, how does it sound? Visually, audibly. And we'll see. Obviously, we were hoping that maybe we could get a volunteer in the room just to kind of help out with a little bit of the scoring. <laughs> just because they're using these uh, ingenious uh, creations by. Uh, Jay Pradhakar, who's the head of USSA and PAPSA. So the players put in their scores via the iPads, but that goes directly to our stream. So we're not keeping score in the booth. The players are kind of responsible for it. So hopefully as the tournament progresses, we can get some volunteers in there to make our job a little easier and give all you great people out there up-to-date scoring. But it looks like that uh, Alex is in here first. And talking to Alex last night, he was a little concerned. Obviously, he's fearing that he's playing last year's champion. And I told him, well, you know, hopefully he maybe doesn't wake up too early. And uh, I'm not sure. Hopefully, you would think that uh, Stephen would have that switch. You know, most of the time when he's at the table, he's a player. And then as soon as he's off the table, he can switch that back to being a club owner. But that might play out a little bit here. Now I know Christian, who's in the booth, he uh, he's part owner over there at Aux. So Christian, how do, you, how do you feel sometimes when you're playing in a tournament, you know, when they are at Aux, being you know, part owner, part player, do you have that ability to tune out? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's a... It's pretty, pretty tricky when you're, you know, you're split on your focus sometimes. You know, you're running, running the tournament here, doing live stream there, doing a bunch of stuff. It can definitely be distracting, especially when it comes to um, focusing on your own game. Um, so I think uh, definitely a big tall task for Steven here to be able to um, uh, bring in the focus during the big match time. We know we've seen, we've seen him do it before. Um, and that he's capable of it, so don't count him out for sure, but I think uh, 
Alex Newstead's going to be a little bit of a sleeper pick in this tournament, if I'm if I'm being honest. Uh, oh, I don't know. Is that oh, a little yeah, just evergreen state bias there? Not not bias. It's not bias when when you see the results and you see when you see the performance. I've been practicing with him for you know past couple couple months or so, and he's definitely elevated his game quite high. Uh, Venita Sani asking, where can we find the draw and updates? Uh, it's going to be over on cloudsnooker.com, I believe. There's going to be a link there to the live scoring. I'll post a link in the chat if you guys want to check it out. Yeah, it's really important to get that uh, kind of first frame in these early round robin matches where they're, they're short ones, they're best of three, and they're not playing all three since there's a lot of players in the tournament, so a lot of matches to get through. So you get that first one on the board, you're kind of in the driver's seat, and your opponent might be reeling a little bit. So this is looking promising or ready to start for Alexander. That's when he wants back for sure. Yeah, he had a couple of reds and blacks there. He really could have put a, a hefty score up there. Bad safety shot there by Steven. Don't know if Alex has the, can get around this green to nip off a bunch of those reds and come off two cushions back to bulk. <laughs> David Brock in the chat. <coughs> What's up, David? <laughs> Batman and Robin, really? Okay. Is that the start of a new nickname <laughs> or what? I don't know. What about Bo and Luke Duke? Yeah. We are in America, although we're not in Georgia. <laughs> I guess what, what it was a, a duo over there, and maybe chips, I guess, in uh, California. <laughs> Hello there, Gertie, from all the way from Belgium, home of the 2023 world champion, Luca Bassell. Mm -hmm. Glad to hear you're tuning in, and hopefully uh, there's lots of great snooker coming out of Belgium. I'm definitely trying to work on my uh, Flemish, shall we say. So when I see Luca and Laura next, we can maybe share a little conversation. And I think David Brock has created a monster in the chat s stream with this uh, duo pair here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Leave it up to David Brock. Well, first real chance here for Stephen Wong. Looks like... Uh, I believe uh, players are spotting the balls so far in the round robin for each other, but uh, we will have referees hopefully, you know, partway through the round robin bracket, depending on who's available, as well as um, I believe later on in the quarterfinals, we'll have a referee on the stream table for the rest of the tournament. Yeah, this is, you know, balls are nicely spaced out. I think Stephen could really put a dent in the scoreboard here. And yeah, on that note of spawning balls, I was talking to Renette Danka, who is a, a strong player, I think probably one of the favorites to lift the trophy come Monday. But he and I were talking about the whole philosophy as he started off that, you know, you'd have a referee or someone is spotting the balls for you. And then when he played in Canada, it seemed like players were alternating back and forth and there wasn't really like a, a fine line and I was kind of maybe mentioning you know, maybe when these tournaments begin that people in the rules it should be you know when your opponent's at the table you're spotting all the balls you're counting up the points and maybe on that off chance you know you're at one end of the table as a player and you've sunk a ball and your opponent's all the way at the other side and you can maybe just lift a hand as the courtesy would be like oh don't worry I, I'll get this one or something like that mm -hmm. So. It's 
looks like we're having a bit of an issue with the bracket. We'll get a J on that. Hello, Aaron and Harry. Marianne McConnell, mm, Aaron great Moss. female Canadian player, was playing a couple weeks ago at the U.S. Open at Hawks Billiards, the women's tournament. We actually have one woman in this tournament, Frances Chow, coming yes, all the way indeed. from Seattle. So, But this is only open to American citizens and I think green card holders. Yeah, they just opened it up to green card holders this year, I think. So. Uh, Ooh, good shot there from Steven. This is going to be a pretty good break. I think he's already on 24. Unfortunately, we don't have the current break total being uh, counted, but I think later in the tournament we're going to get uh, the more advanced scorekeeper and a dedicated scorekeeper um, on the main match table, hopefully. But um, so far, group stage action, just going to be keeping track via the players at the table. I believe Steven is now probably on 32. Looks like he's in amongst the balls pretty well, too. So this could be pretty dangerous. Well, if there's anyone in the, the neighborhood of San Gabriel that's listening, that loves this game so much, I will give you the best seat in the house right beside a table. And you know what? The only thing I ask for you is to keep score. <laughs> is that so? <laughs> um, it's sort of like if we, you know, we're, we're growing... Definitely in America and definitely regrowing in Canada. Things are looking really promising in North America. We're getting kudos from over in England. But we do still need some great people to help out behind the scenes just to keep the machine going. As I say, you know, any volunteers or maybe we can give you a little stipends. Being a scorekeeper is a, a great gig to have if you love the game because you can't really have an obstructed view. You, you've got a job to do, and you've got the best seat in the house. Mm -hmm. true, very true, very true. Yeah, Alex did have potential to get in it and Steven is doing what he needs to do and punishing him right here. He's being uh, Steven's home turf. He does maybe have a little advantage, knows all the little nuances as much as we always try to get these tables top-notch conditions. Sometimes over time they just get their own little characteristics, but a good player will always adapt to any table. Mm -hmm. That's how it always goes. I think uh, there's some famous there's some famous pool uh, quotes out there. I forget where they come from, but um, certain players would claim, you know, give me give me twenty some odd hours on a table, and I'll be able to you know be anybody in the world kind of thing, or I'll be able to adapt faster than anyone on on any any table, any condition, bumpy, whatever it might be. So definitely mm -hmm. take some time to get used to tables, and I think Stephen has definitely put in the hours, being that it is his club. So. Um, He's looking pretty good in this one. Yeah, great, great shot into the middle pocket there. I think uh, these are a little bit more akin to, I guess, what you would call club tables a bit. Uh, they've got 68 11 cloth on them, so they're a little bit, a um, little bit thicker cloth, maybe a little bit slower than you might uh, might expect compared to what the pros are playing on. There was a really good video from, uh, I think it was. Uh, Gosh, uh, Neil Robertson and Joe Perry, I think, they put a video up on YouTube kind of explaining the nuances and differences between um, the two types of tables, you know, a club table versus a professional table. Um, so this is a little bit more along the terms of like a club table uh, type, but still they play really nice. They just got recently felted from uh, Simon Barker, so new cloth, new table, playing with the brand new 1G balls too. They haven't been played on Except for this moment right now in this tournament. He's been saving them, so. Looking pretty good. And a 53 break from Steven. So. Very nice, but uh, didn't seal the frame there, so. Let's see if Alan, Alex can rebound. Tough little plant here. You, know, you always want it with plant shots. You want those two balls glued together, so a little bit of space between them makes it a bit more difficult. Oh, nice shot. That's why he's on the table and I am not. <laughs> Grand, yeah, good point. 
So balls are open here for at least a couple of reds are available. Not easy pots, you, could say, you would say, but yeah, you can play for this red to the left uh, corner past the black, or you can play right red into the green pocket. It's got some options. Uh, I think it's going to be a little slow on this. And I think that's that's going to be the difference right there. That example of that shot, he's been playing on the number 10, or sorry, the super fine cloth over at Ox recently. Um, Alex has, and uh, that shot he would have been bang on, high on the black, on that red. So he came up a little bit short, just I think he's going to take a little bit of time to adapt to the speed of the cloth, for sure. Otherwise he would have had a nice shot on that red. Into oh. the corner. Oh, where's his red going to go? Almost I think got away with it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's available though. Yeah, that's uh that's close. was able to actually just uh inspect the tables last night and you know the one big difference when you put your hand on these tables, it's not warm like those tables at Ox that oh, probably Alex true. is used to. Mm -hmm. So with that those heated tables, as mm -hmm. you were alluding to, I think he would have just got a few more rotations and would have been just plumb on that next red. Yeah, they play a little quicker that way, huh? And then the cushions also play a little different. Makes a lot of sense. But uh, a last great setup here at Embassy Billiards. They got nine tables in the room. It's pretty sweet. We'll have to do a little pan shot of the room after this frame. But, uh, yeah, great setup. Yeah, definitely really nice to see, you know. Obviously, when you think of California, you don't, you don't think of uh, snooker, that's for sure. You think of movies and surfing and all that good stuff. And actually, uh, my good man in the booth right here, Christian Youngers, is actually a Bruin. So this is his old turf. UCLA is just down the road, his yes old sir. alma mater. Yes, sir. He's nice on this blue to open up these reds, too, Stephen. This could be possibility of end of frame if he had opened these up nicely. Oh, he got one red out, but is the blue going to block? No, nope, pot is on. Yeah, just so all of you that are viewing, you can kind of see here's a nice little wide shot. And you might have just seen a bit of us there in the corner there, so we're quite a distance away from our TV table. Yeah, looking, looking good here at Embassy, though. A lot, a lot mm -hmm. of players ready to go. Yesterday was a lot of fun folks staying, meeting from all over the country, coming coming to play in this event. A lot of a lot of people that have been here um, multiple years in, in a row that have been coming here. Um, also, a lot of new faces. This is, I think, one of the bigger fields that U.S. Uh, Nationals has, has ever had. Might be, I think, a record setter at 64 players, something like that. True. Great to see. Like, there's just more and more. It seems like every kind of tournament that we get involved, the, the numbers get bigger. There's actually even waiting lists for people to get on. So mm -hmm. that's a, a real positive thing to see. And maybe you're right, Marianne. There could be a West Coast swing of some great snooker tournaments. Yeah, it's definitely a very nice and welcoming omen atmosphere at Embassy. A nice uh, entrance to a beautiful desk and great staff really helping you out with whichever you need. And uh, there's a few, few choices around that we'll probably have to sample as the weekend goes on. Stephen just took that last red in color. He's now in the Snooker's required stage, so starting his campaign off correctly by getting the first frame. Although the pink is in a, a spot for Snooker's if Alex can get back to the table. Yeah, with one red situation, I think Alex is going to play this because it's only only one Snooker, or I guess sno uh, one free ball really required, right? If... Uh, Oh no, he's on multiple now. Sorry, I, I, I missed the score. So, 
Yeah, that's the one. Tricky, that's why we're calling it for volunteers. Yeah, two or three. I think it depends. They're, they're discussing it now, I think. But there comes a point, I think, where uh, once enough snookers are acquired, it is automatic end of, end of frame, from what I understand. So, I believe so. We will get back to you on that ruling, ladies and gentlemen. I think it is a if a player needs more than four snookers to win, there's a concession. Mm -hmm. So, well, I think in the meantime we'll tune over to our second match table. We've got uh, oh, sorry, wrong one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just oh, I think they're maybe just checking in on that rule as we speak, and we're just jumping over to actually a match between. CCU has been a Seattle Snooker Open champion going against Patrick Gigi. Now some people might, who know the snooker world, might just kind of twig a little bit and go, wait a minute, Patrick Gigi, he's quite important and high up there with Snooker Canada. And you are not mistaken, but he actually had spent some time in America and I believe he is a dual citizen. So, dual citizenship are allowed to play in this tournament. Just making sure at least one of that citizenship is American. Yeah, in our featured match, it looks like Alan or Alex is two snookers. So, so there's going to be a concession there. So, Stephen will take that first frame. Yes, Dave Pierce, or Priest, this is uh, just amateurs. There's no professionals in it. But there could be, right? Is there a rule against professionals or no? That's a good question, actually. That's, uh, that's, uh I don't know, because it, it, it may or may not be a path. It is a path to uh, the Pan American, which is a mm -hmm. tour card uh, spot, so... Yeah, I believe uh, for the PAPSA championship that's coming up at the end of October, slated to be in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, mm -hmm. the winner of this tournament does get, uh, I believe, a paid entry into that tournament. And you are correct there, Christian, if you win that PAPSA tournament, you get a two-year card, as the American player Ahmad Ali did last October in Toronto, Canada. Mm -hmm. And now he's over in the U.K., battling it out with uh, the heavyweights, shall we say, all the pros. So, Yes, sir. Uh, Amit Karki asking, uh, why is streaming not available in USSA and or Cloud Snooker? I believe this main live stream we are just uh, streaming independent of the Cloud Snooker live stream. We have yet to figure out how to integrate it. Um, but uh, from my understanding, Ajaya, I believe, will be trying to set up a few matches on the side tables with uh, some smaller cameras that are will be visible via... Um, the cloud snooker from what I understand but uh, stay tuned on that I'm not exactly sure um, what that's going to look like yeah it's it's day one of the 2023 U.S. National Snooker Championship so a few kinks and stuff that we're just ironing out sometimes there's not we didn't get in uh, you know, we got in yesterday and there's a lot of stuff going on and there's not a, a lot of help behind the scenes sometimes A little bit more of a traditional frame here, playing some safeties off the uh, off the bat, but a long pot opportunity for Steven. Is he going to take this on? You think? Try to screw this back up in the bulk. Maybe he might be Ooh. able to run through a little bit and have that black into the top right corner. He's thinking about it though. I don't know. I think he's changing his mind. The cross double is on too, where he just uh, send that red cross double into the bunch and play the cue ball up and down. But the the double kiss is on. He's going to have to use a little bit of side to flick this around the red and off the, off the cushion. Oh, wow. That might actually have been... Oh, is the uh -oh. red coming to be friends with that? Yeah, so this is going to be dangerous. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was about to say that it uh, could have been better for him to go. Could have been better for him to go in off on that. Uh, I was saying. 
Um, yeah, sorry. Um, oh, no, Alex. Yikes. So, a little bit of a back and forth here in the safeties. But, yeah, I, I was saying if, if that red didn't... Uh, didn't lay up into the pocket it might have been better for um steven if he had actually that he did go in off so he doesn't leave you know an easy pot down table um but alex newstead i think just slightly slightly misjudging that shot that's another thing of kind of the the club tables that angle is definitely possible for the in off i think he just needed a bit more on that shot he would have avoided it he could have definitely put the put the cue ball somewhere between the green and brown, for example, on the D and create a little bit more angle. I think that was uh, totally totally valid. <laughs> In the old four point safety says Marianne McConnell. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get at. So he's got to be careful with this. You know, he probably can hit a red, but just where does he leave his cue ball? Doesn't want to leave an opportunity for... Oh, he hit the dreaded pink. Uh-oh. Steven put replace the balls here? Because, yeah, okay, he's going to take it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tricky tricky replace there without a, without a referee, right? Yeah, quite a tricky ordeal for a referee, but when we don't have a referee, we do have a roving referee, obviously, in the room if there's any real issues that need to happen. And in this tournament, they are playing four attempts on foul and miss in the round robin. I think once we get into the knockout phase, that will be uh, changed to, obviously, unlimited uh, putbacks until there is a snooker required stage. Mm, interesting shot there. A little bit of a change in technique. Uh, I think he, being so close to the ball, just kind of pushed the cue forward. Very, very short backswing kind of like a little trick you can do to just keep your straightness intact. I think a lot of players will kind of take that kind of stroke as well uh, when under pressure as well because uh, usually doesn't really require as much movement in the swing and really you're just focusing on potting the ball and your position's kind of automatic. Yeah, folks asking, we are at Embassy Billiards in San Gabriel, California. LA area, if you're familiar, kind of near Pasadena, Baldwin Park area. Looks like he's on this red. He's going to play one cushion forward. Always oh, playing up for blue. Yeah, not a bad shot. If he gets on it, I think he's on the friendly side. Yeah, just trying to actually take a look at the live table, but our good friend Tommy Collins, all the way from Motor City, has taken his shots. And now our table that we're close to, we've got another player in our vantage point, but I think he can just kind of roll through it, and he's got that uh, red in the open to the left side. Ooh, it's going to be hampered. Yeah. The yellow's going to get in the way, but... When you're a U.S. national champion. Yeah, I think Thanks. end of break probably here. <coughs> mm, he's also left kind of a weird hampered shot, so... Smart play from Steven. Putting the pressure on Alex. They are playing a best of three, I believe, right? In these, uh, that knockout? is correct. Colin Joseph asking, is this the only table live? Um, yeah, this is the current only live table we're showing. <coughs> but I believe uh, we will we will be panning over to other tables in the intermediate or as matches uh, roll in and roll out. Uh, we may have um, opportunity to set up um, some smaller side cameras, which will be viewable <coughs> on, uh, on Cloud Snooker, but uh, not 100% uh, not up to date on that yet so stay tuned for that but colin if you want to make a healthy uh, financial contribution <laughs> to uh the uh, ox stream because that's what we're running under we're running on uh, under ox billiard stream 
Maybe we can uh, set up more cameras, more commentary booths, and then that's the idea, obviously, in the future that people could kind of have their own choice of where they want to, who they want to watch. But we definitely talk with uh, the tournament director and just source out which probably would be uh, the best match. You know, getting some more of the higher seeding players on the TV table. Whereas, you know, a good one to obviously kick off the tournament is having a defending champion. And Lee Wah should be, uh, should probably, I wouldn't be surprised seeing him on the TV table at some point oh throughout yeah. the weekend. Yeah, I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll see glimpses of him. He was in, a, in an awesome match last year against uh, Tom Tan, I believe. Him and Tom played a pretty good match at Ox last year, and I think Lee Wah took it pretty decidedly from what I remember. He's taken out the right side of the table, Alex has for Steven, so just might be a potential of cross double on that one lower red of the two on the left side. Mm, he's playing oh. the higher one. It's going to run into the blue. So mid range time, right? Yeah, that pink might block the path of that red that's just to the right of the blue. And obviously, that's a tricky cut right there on that red long pot too, so I don't envision Alex taking that on. Oh, this red is available. Yeah, I could've come. Hmm? We got some more David Brock fans in the, uh, <laughs> in the room. Yeah. Very cool. Maybe he's the most famous DB. <laughs> you know, I thought David Bowie over in uh, England was pretty popular, mm -hmm. but unfortunately he's passed away, so <coughs> Mr. Brock has taken the baton. Mm, nice spot there from Steven. Fortunate bump on the blue, and he's going to be straight in on it roughly into the. Looks like the yellow pocket. A little bit trickier with the rest. Might be playing the red at the top of the bunch into the corner. This is risky. Mm -hmm. yeah, I played it with a lot of draw so he didn't stick around. Because there's a lot of danger on that shot and just didn't really see a easy safety for him. Yeah, he has opened up all the balls now though, so if Alex is gonna make a make an impact on this match, it's a must win frame for him, so Gonna have to score against Steven for sure to win this frame. Problem with the black not being on the spot. Pink is somewhat available and blue is up there, so if he's a little bit off angle, I imagine he's gonna go forward two cushions. Or just one. Nice. This is a position that's workable. There's a red available if he just rolls this forward. Play with the rest shot most likely. And then try to get the pink back on its spot, if possible. Oh no, Alex. I think that's a little bit of nerves there. He's on the main match table. He's playing the defending champion. Don't see him yeah. miss those often. First match of the tournament, you're not really, you know, mm -hmm. warmed up. Your back's against it because you've already lost the first frame, so... Ooh, it's going to be a little thick. So Steven giving a chance back. He's uh, not able to punish 
Alex on that mist blew off the spot, so can Alex get his composure back and punish Steven for this miss here? That's a good, good pot, but then again, a little bit short again. I think he wanted to come another few rotations on the cue ball. Just so you could cue at this without the rest for the pink into the corner. Got oh. Chuck in the chat. Ah, our good friend from Motown out there in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, we're seeing Yo Snooker is on the rise and growing really well in the U.S. Hopefully, Chuck, you can stir some people in uh, the state of Michigan and maybe the U.S. Nationals could uh, head to that state someday. Spent a little time in, in Detroit. And, uh, really enjoyed my time there. Lots of great uh, pitcher taking places. The old uh, train station is quite <coughs> a sight to see. I don't mm. know if you've ever seen it, Christian, but. Uh, no, I've actually never been to Detroit. Obviously, the trains don't run from it anymore. You know, obviously, the city got hit hard, obviously, as we all know. Mm -hmm. But uh, still, there's some beautiful architecture that uh, is there. about Alex he doesn't really a lot of players you know the cue is going through the cleft of their chin and Alex has a little bit of distance there mm -hmm. yeah he comes from a bit more of a pool background um, but I think he is from the UK originally so I believe he did grow up with snooker but yeah something about his stance is a little bit non-conventional you can kind of see he's a little bit higher up on the cue almost almost like a straight pool stroke you could say or like a three cushion type uh, stance or stroke where you're, you're kind of higher up uh, off the balls gives you a little bit different perspective um, but uh, he does well at it um, even even on this elevated shot he's not even getting to his chin yeah obviously there's many YouTube videos many coaches out there to learn like the proper technique but if you're doing the business and you're comfortable Mm-hmm. And if it ain't broke, why fix it? Right. So. Ooh, tough pot. Tough pot there. <coughs> yeah, he's left a double there for Steven into the right middle pocket. He's just waiting for their CCU. Your right side of your screen, just waiting for CC to take his shot. Oh, made the double. Nice shot. Good angle on this brown to come down. For which part, the black is kind of tied up. Yeah, if there was a red more available, he might take the blue into the yellow pocket and play one cushion, but... I think you're right. Take the brown. Play this right half of the table. All reds available into the left corner pocket, it looks like. Ooh. Unconventional miss there. It was a little steep. But he was a favorite to make it. Pretty sure. Yeah. He has just opened the door and even put down the welcome mat for Alexander <coughs> there. Let's see. Well, there's no easy shot ever in this game, but if I'd have to say that's a 9 out of 10 at least for Alex to get going. Mm -hmm. And just trailing by 13, plenty of points on the table. He could come back and hopefully uh, tie up this match, but a lot of work to be done in ahead of him. Mm, got some more action on that. Is he going to get past the pink? Yeah, he's going to be good on it. <laughs> little hand wave there, a little fortunate, but... Uh I think that's another thing about these club tables that's a little different is that uh, even though they're a little slower, the cloth being thicker, they do play, they have more reaction, basically. So when you put the spin on the ball, it really zips away from you a little bit faster, maybe than kind of a glassier, smoother type of cloth, like Super Fine or Number 10. And uh, as evidence there, he didn't seem like you put that much of a stroke on it, but that ball zipped away and just managed to get past the pink. Alex is not out of this frame yet. He's got another available red. 
And then he's probably going to have to play some sort of breakout or safety shot. But he needs these points to stay with Steven in the score. Yeah, another example of coming up a little bit short maybe, but with this angle he at least has a line maybe to run into the black. I think he wanted yeah. to be a little bit farther to the right though. True, I think that would have been you know the ideal angle to develop the black. So just a little too high and having to use the rests. Although with these 6x12 tables, as many pool players will scowl at the rest, thinking it's the worst thing known to the game, but you have to embrace it in the game of snooker, because unless you're you know, coming in LeBron James over there, one of the Lakers playing this game, you're not going to reach every uh, corner of this table. Yeah, that's for sure. It would actually be really fun to see a very, very tall human. Wow, what a pot there. It would be interesting. We are in La La Land. Yeah. Uh, it is the off season for the Lakers and the Clippers. Yeah, can you imagine like a seven foot <laughs> human playing on a snooker table? They they probably wingspan makes it looks like a, make it look like a bar box pool table or something. Yeah. Well, there is there is a gentleman playing this tournament. I didn't get to meet him. I just saw him from far last night, and uh, he's definitely a man that just needs to uh, use the rest a lot because he's not a tall drink of water. Raymond Fong. Oh, Raymond in the chat hello, on hello. Facebook. Yeah, what's up, Raymond? Yeah, what's going on? Runner-up last year's tournament. Oh, he's not there. Oh, I hope you're feeling better. It just looks like he has a little bit of a, a stomach flu. No, I think he's just uh, really wants to be here. I know uh, <laughs> he's got some family commitments, I think, so unfortunately unable to join us. But runner-up last year. We definitely miss you, Raymond. Oh yeah, managed to avoid the knuckle there. So good shot from Steven. He's gonna get behind these bold colors. That was the key on that double. He went went thinner and went two cushions, and he had to miss that uh, knuckle. Otherwise, it would have stayed down table. So really nice shot here. If this red on the left to the left of the pink is covered. Yep, four <coughs> points in it. Second frame. It's a best of three round robin match. The first day of this 2023 United States National Snooker Championship. Well, yes, Chuck Tepchai Unu is coming to Embassy Billiards. And I believe around Christmas time, December, so uh, definitely uh, keep your eye out for that. I'm pretty sure they'll be posting a lot on the United States Snooker Association webpage. Yeah, reach out to Steven for that one. I think he's going to be organizing that here at Embassy, mm -hmm. if you're interested. <coughs> Smart shot here from Steven, noticing that the pink is in a perfect spot for covering these two reds by the black. So really just playing the roll-up safety. Looks like Alex is going to get at this, though. Must be an edge. There's always an edge, they say. Did well to cover, I think, everything. So this is a pretty decent snooker here from Alex. Yeah, <laughs> Alex is just having a fine little smile, but both players just taking a look just in case there needs to be a respot. Yeah, he's tight to the cushion here, so... It's like probably... Gonna go one cushion at this red. <laughs> Taking his time, deciding what he wants to do. I always love the snooker facial ex uh, expressions. Yeah, good job, good contact. Although he may not like his next shot at the table if uh, if Alex is able to control the red off of this safety. Be able to put him back into bulk. This red and green, or sorry, this green and yellow make a nice little wall here. But it looks like he's going to get on the ground. <sighs> Just millimeters away from brilliance. 
Uh, maybe he's got it, actually. Yeah, I think... It's tough from that there. last angle, but I think you can see right there that... Oh, sorry. Yeah, he's going to have to go two cushions behind. friend Buck Buck Moose joining us. It's always great to see familiar faces in the room in these tournaments and also hear from all the familiar chatters out there on the stream. It's great when you guys tune in and uh, we appreciate your viewership. Um, always do let us know if you ever have a question. I know there's some seasoned vets on the stream but there's some new uh, new faces and they might not uh, completely understand the game so you can always fire us a question we'll do our best to answer but there's also some great knowledgeable people in the stream as well and there's also a good long pot there by Steven and we really do appreciate that viewership because I haven't seen uh, it's early in the tournament, haven't seen a century, but we got a century of viewership, so that's good to see, isn't it, Christian? Yeah, we broke a century on the, on the uh, collective viewers. I think uh, so far YouTube is leading the way with 80 viewers, so yeah, go ahead, like and subscribe, share the stream out to folks. We are going to be live probably most of the day, probably until at least uh, into the evening time today, but uh, Embassy will be opened later on tonight, so we won't be open, we won't be live streaming until the late hours in the morning, but uh, at least into the evening here in the PST. Yeah, it's a, a roll-on, roll-off kind of philosophy. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you know a match is done, another one will get on. And the last kind of scheduled batches of matches are 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So lots of stuff to go, and then we'll be starting again at around 9 a.m. I think there's just a few like kinks that they had to work out, obviously, on day one. Oh, oh no, Alex. That might be the red that seals his fate in this one. Oh, looks like just a <coughs> clarification question on the other team table, I believe. I think it's the same. So this is kind of, this could be the tough part for Steven. Here, yep. as he's kind of coming in acting pseudo tournament director, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he's also a player. Yeah, I think it was the same situation though, where if uh, I think if you need a certain amount of snookers in the second match to, uh, to oh. tie, then you may or may not have the option to keep playing. I believe since it is the round robin stage, they're trying to get the matches going as quickly as they can. Mm -hmm. And uh, Buck Buck Moose, I will reach out to Ajay when we have a break as he's concerned about the United States Snooker Association Facebook page. It's just uh, actually got some uh, unsavory adverts going on, so hopefully we can clean those up and uh, make it a bit more family oriented, which I think. I that's think somebody else has control of it. That's <laughs> what happened. Uh, and that's what we need to do. Obviously, these these billiard games, definitely in North America, had uh, a bad taste to it. Obviously, the, you know some people obviously enjoyed the dark atmosphere and the shady characters and the smoke in the room and all that stuff. But now I think we just gotta jump away with that. Obviously, you know you can't smoke in rooms anymore. Um, but talking to some long-term people, they said like it wasn't like as bad as it was, but. Sometimes we've got to look out if we do want to get youngsters into it. You know, do you want to drop, if you're a mom or a dad, do you want to drop off uh, your kids into an atmosphere that might not be kosher to that? So I think Ox is doing it. I think they do it here at Embassy. I know in Vancouver mm -hmm. there's a few clubs that are like, bring the whole family down. Let's have, uh, <coughs> you know, mom and dad and the youngsters. Everyone can enjoy this great game of snooker. Yeah. In short, I think the Facebook page was hacked. So <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yes, I don't think that anything of that was done on purpose. No. So uh, thanks for bringing that to our attention, Buck Buck Moose. 
Ooh, double two cushion escape here from Alex. And oh wow. I think he missed it just barely. I think it's gonna get put back. Wow. Tough miss there. Good snooker for Steven, but uh, quite, quite an attempt from Alex. Almost escaped there. This one looks a little bit more promising. Yep. Oh, Ooh. same line again. Yeah, he came actually a little bit shorter this time, maybe. Just has to just take a millimeter of adjustment. He should be there because he's not missing mm -hmm. it by much. Yeah, the speed is right. He just needs to barely change the line of aim. It's always tough too because these these kind of two cushion, three cushion escapes they tend to auto correct for you. So the the same line will sometimes come out multiple multiple times. He did it again. <laughs> I think that's three attempts. I believe that is the maximum that we're playing with now. I believe it's four. Is it no, four attempts? Sorry to correct you, Christian, but I think I've heard four. Oh, okay. So but three respots, four attempts? Yes. It might be that snookers are now required. That's but another uh, thing as well. Uh, no, yeah, it looks like three attempts because uh, that is true, 35 yeah. is on. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, hopefully we'll just talk to our, our good friend Alan Morris. Maybe we can still get the clarification there. Because there will be obviously a, a little short break when this match concludes. As we've got to just turn over the table and uh, update the score for our, our next two oppon opponents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Peter's saying it slides off the cushions, needs a bit more pace. Yeah, a little bit more pace would probably help shorten the line a bit. Which looks like it was coming long ever so slightly. Another good snooker here from Steven. Putting the pressure on Alex. Yeah, I think this is a pretty close frame over here, though. CCU and Patrick Gigi are in a close one on the colors. Yeah, their first frame. So we'll have to tune into yeah. that match, I think, after this end of this frame. Wow, he missed the red both ways. Looks like Steven's going to take this on. 35 in it. Takes the cross double here. Get his cue ball back into the ball hand. Does have a commanding 28 point lead. I think, though, with black, this would be his black off of this red would be frame ball, so he might be trying to kill the frame off here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or pink. Would pink put him in? Pink would maybe require. No, yeah, that's uh, 27. Yeah, I think that was his frame ball, right? Mm -hmm. 61 yeah, you are at correct. best. Yeah, so that was his frame ball, so... Definitely would go for it there to kill off the frame and win this best of three if he can. Snookers will be required for Alex. Although only one snooker required, so 27 puts Alex at uh, 61, I believe. Yeah, being Taeyang, you bring up a good point about uh, ball replacement and fouling a miss and stuff like that. Uh, there is that idea, you know, it does kind of bring the game to a halt replacing the balls and obviously some of the newer players might not really know what is going on mm -hmm. but we're trying to get uh, you know on par with you know how the professional side does it 
Yeah. I think uh, even better than removing ball and replace rule would be just having referees, more referees available and, and practicing and learning the game, et cetera, because I think what really speeds up the game is a referee for sure if you, if you mm -hmm. really want to get things rolling because even, even the foul and the miss rule with referee is miles you know, quicker because the referee is already prepared, ready to go. Usually mark stuff ahead of time as well as um, uh, if uh, if you're ball spotting constantly, you're following the player around the table. It can be a lot quicker of a match in general if you have someone just dedicated to only spotting balls. And most of the time, when like uh, it's a foul and a miss, the cue ball is the more important thing. Like mm -hmm. some balls might be run into, but it's definitely of importance of putting the cue ball back. And founded that with those paired on the blue cue ball markers mm -hmm. they have a little notch in the middle and if we could get more of those in the room and a white tailor's pencil so like if a player is in a snooker they could come down and mark the mm -hmm. spot of where the white is wish that that tailor pencil at least just like a little bit of mark on the table that could be brushed away with the hand very easily and i think that would kind of help yeah, well yeah. speed up things a little bit a good snooker here from alex steven's gonna have to go one or two cushions around looks like Going two cushions to escape. Got the escape. We got to tune in here, though. CC here on this black ball game. Looks like CC managed to pot both pink and yellow to make it a black ball game. So, really close one on our table, too. We're going to be checking in on momentarily as this frame proceeds. Yeah, Chuck. Uh Maybe we might have a, a Jay Prothocker, head of USSA, in the booth, and maybe I can uh, ask him about that. What his uh, his plans are with that organization about training referees and what are their requirements? Mm, another good snooker here. Obviously, goes without saying you need to know all the rules mm -hmm. and and be firm with your rules. Firm and fair is always a good thing. CC has a pot here, attempt on the black, misses it on the thick side, and it's going to leave something for Patrick. Sorry, I keep tuning back in to there on the last black ball for the first frame. Could be pivotal in deciding the outcome of that match. Uh, yeah, I don't know that there's currently any uh, specific requirements um, for refereeing at, at the USSA events. Um, I believe they only run the U.S. Nationals right now. Um, but after speaking to Ajaya earlier, he did mention he was planning to have a referee guaranteed for at least the stream table uh, from the quarterfinals onward. So I believe that'll be day three action. Um. Mm -hmm. escape here from Steven. Pretty important. The only one snooker needed. It is true, Richard. The, the standard is just not on the level of the, the pro scene right now, so sometimes you do see matches get bogged down. Oh, Patrick. Oh, Patrick. Oh, no. Patrick Gigi fouling on the black. And that's end of frame. Wow, what a big moment in that match. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just had to catch that on the stream. Big, big mistake there to go in off of the black. CC takes the first one on our second match table. Does need at least just one snooker. He's taking that pot. Maybe thinks the brown is easier to play snooker on behind the blue. The blue's in a good spot for real tough snooker. I think as well, like if we want to talk about kind of advertising and uh, say quote unquote selling the sport, 
to uh, maybe a North American audience where you know attentions aren't as long as some others, uh, the shootout tournament could be something that we could bring into play mm -hmm. where it's mm -hmm. a 10 minute frame, players are on the shot clock, done a few of them in the Vancouver area and people have been quite excited with it. Yeah, great pot there by Steven. <laughs> Yeah, sorry you, about could, that. you could hear the <laughs> excitement there in Christian's voice. Uh, Kiwa looked like it was going in off for a second. Would have been a big moment. But and probably not two snookers, at least. Yeah, 10 point difference, two blues, the tie. Mm -hmm. Or a blue and a pink, and ooh, is gonna roll up. Is he gonna get behind the black though? Wow, 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 he got there. Yeah, he's he on. Did. Snooker is on. piping in about watching the US Open. I apologize. Just looks like your name is in Thai and I, I don't speak a lot of Thai, but yes, you do make a good point that the, the, the prize money was rather low for those top class players. Uh, and that's just a, a problem over there. A lot of sponsorship money does go to the pros, but it doesn't come down the pipe to the women's circuit. And as much as the pro scene is wanting to help out amateur organizations, and we're just slowly getting there. We all got to start somewhere. You know, as Nietzsche said, you must uh, learn to walk before you can run. You can't fly into flying. Mm. Yeah, but we're trying our best. I think it was definitely a step up on uh, the prize money from last year, so it's got to keep improving. Shout out to our sponsors as well, Wine Cellars. That was a great event. Did he get a free ball here? Is this blue potable? No chance for a respot. But if this blue pots, then Alex does have a chance maybe to pot the black. Pink as his second 10 point. He's taking on this pink it looks like. Or is the blue on? Mm -hmm. I didn't get the year that, uh, talking to Patrick Geeky, he, he played in this tournament a few years back, and he was letting me know just before we started today that when he last played in the tournament, there was 27 players in it, mm -hmm. and now there's 64, and I think there were some on a waiting list as well. So you can see that the interest is growing there, which is great to see. Oh, definitely, yeah. Last year, I think we had 34 players, I believe, 32, something like that. Um over at Ox with four tables and now roughly double that and double the tables so pretty good uh and getting the streams up like it just uh gets people aware and they can see what the game of snooker is and stuff like that so mm -hmm. that's why we're here oh he's playing the roll up on the pink and he just overran it I think his line was a little bit thin as well but uh, did well not to leave the blue into the corner pocket. Yeah, David Brock was shot indeed. That black was tight to the cushion. Sorry, the cue ball was tight to the black. It's still in a spot for really devilish snooker, but just the speed has to be so precise. You normally like to have black another ball's width away or so from, from the cushion just to... Uh, little bit more wiggle room to get in behind it but mm, it's a cross double on oh it's gonna settle well he's a little fortunate that that blacks in the way but yeah this is only this hope shouldn't be a problem for Steven so Steven should be getting on a match win in his first match of this 2023 United States National Snooker Championship yep I think that blue seals it for sure. 
Yeah, just having a glance at the scoreboard. I don't think Alex is going to come back to the table. There's 26 in, in it and then 13 on the table. Interesting. This last the last frame, there was a less, lesser than a point differential, and there was a concession. But he's left this out. Yeah, this is very much going to be Stevens' frame. With or without this fluke. Yeah, David Brock saying if it wasn't for one or two misses, Alex might have won this frame. Yeah, I agree. I think he had a chance he was leading at one point as well. So I think just a little bit of an adjustment. But uh, he's playing for the snookers. Yeah, where the black is right now, you just have to be extremely precise. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was off the cushion, you have a bit more wiggle room. But definitely if he does get the snooker, Alex, it's going to be great one but Steven just has to control his white ball here this is the thing he doesn't want to <laughs> he's doing a stop shot on every shot just doesn't want to go in off or anything crazy like that that'd be the only way Alex gets back in this I think yep this is going to be another pot opportunity this is somewhere where I think the, the education needs to happen uh, in North America is obviously yes nobody likes to lose but it is kind of a, a herculean feat that alex needs is to take this frame and push us to a decider so i think almost it's time to just lick your wounds he might have angle hooked him maybe oh it looks close it's definitely tough to say but uh, no steven's coming down pretty quick Oh, this might go in. Oof. Yeah, I think what in order in order to actually get the snooker, I think I think David Brock, you're right, getting the pink over next to the black, trying to open it up so it has more space to play. Oh, I think this is gonna surely be it here. Yeah, hook, line, and sinker, this should be it. Nice. There it is, that should be handshakes there. So Stephen Wong does a good, takes his first match with a win. That's a good one there, but Alex not out of it. Definitely a strong player. Tough match he had against the defending champion. And we're going to just step aside for a few moments until we get uh, the next match set up on our feature table. But keep the stream going. Keep it on there. Uh, feel free to get a cup of coffee. It's early in the morning on the West Coast, but maybe some lunch on the East Coast. But thanks for tuning in, and we'll be right back. David Burney and Christian Youngers. Stay tuned, everybody.
Alright folks, hopefully you were able to get the nice uh, cool drink. We're just going to jump into this match on our other TV table while our, our featured match gets set up. It's uh, CCU from uh, the Seattle, Washington area taking on Patrick Gigi, who is coming to us from Montreal, Canada, but is a dual citizen, so he is more than welcome to play in this great tournament. So CC was able to take the first frame on actually an in-off black that Patrick Gigi had. And he's looking strong in the second frame. Their quick matches here in the round robin phases. They're best of threes and uh, they play to a winner. So a maximum of three frames, but it could be two. And it's David Burney in the booth. And glad you all are tuning in wherever you are. there, so let's just try and get that back. Kind of had a little hiccup with our uh, scoreboard on this other TV table. But it looks like uh, CC kind of ran away with that. Just broke down just before he got into the colors. So obviously he has a commanding 82 to 14 uh, frame win there. So that match is going to come to a conclusion there with CCU taking a 2 to nothing advantage. And. Uh, yeah, we'll have a little uh, pause here as uh, the two players on our featured TV table are just getting warmed up a little bit. So stand by, feel free to grab a cold drink, and we'll be right back with some great action from Embassy Billiards in San Gabriel, California. It's the 2023 United States National Snooker Championship. See you soon.
And we're back here. Great matchup coming up here. Their roll on, roll off kind of philosophy. When tables become available, we get you the great snooker action here. So this is looking to be a good match here. Well seated player. Actually, the sixth, sixth ranked seated player in this uh, U.S. National Snooker Championship, Jackie Wee, taking on Hitish Da Upilia. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. I have not met Hitish. Actually, this is the first time I've seen him. So, Jackie breaking off, and we're underway. Yeah, we've got been getting some lots of great comments in the chat world. Some good questions. And definitely always let us know where you're tuning in from. This might be able to see those two reds to the pink that are kind of on top of each other. Might be able to clip and find a gap. That's it. It just... I don't want to run a little bit more. Just seeing if maybe Jackie has the angle. As I think Kittish probably wanted that a little bit harder to get back into bulk. Wow. Stellar. It was just tricky from this camera angle, and definitely they are on the far end of the room. We're quite a distance, so sometimes it's going to be tough for us to see the angle, but... Luke there on the blue for Jackie. Good to see as well people putting their support for their various players here. I think he's got a pathway for this. I can put it electing for the blue. Fluke the blue to keep this uh, frame going. Let's see what he can do with this. They're both of these players' first match of the tournament, so Jackie is seeming to be coming out all guns blazing, so already had two blues, so he's got a twelve point advantage right now. Reds are really nicely spaced out. Just that one red over there, I guess, is blocking his path for that pink. This is just a bit unfortunate. Ooh, this might be a costly miss for Jackie. Players are keeping their score, and through Cloud Snooker, they have uh, iPads at actually all the tables. So, but unfortunately, there's not a scorekeeper at these iPads. It's the players that are doing it, so their score will be updating kind of as the break finishes. So, unfortunately, we won't have the uh, scoring as it goes along. But hopefully, as the tournament progresses, we'll get more and more uh, volunteers to come in to help us out. Ben, all the information Ben Watson, that is, is asking about where the, is the schedule for the matches on the stream. All the matches are up on cloudsnooker.com, and you just look at the U.S. National tab there. You should be able to find it with a little bit of searching. 
the thing is right now we don't know exactly who is going to be on the stream because in these early stages it's a roll on roll off kind of mentality so soon as this match is finished another match will come on and the great team at ussa are doing their best to get some top-notch players on there and we want to give you the best action there but uh, they are watching the stream yeah, USSA. So uh, maybe you can put in a vote. We'll leave it up to you uh, streamers out there. If you had a, a player in mind that you would like to see on the stream, maybe you can voice that opinion. And maybe your wish will be granted. running a little bit more. It's that pesky little red there. Uh, that pink could be lovely. That would have been a shot of safe there for Hitish. But that red's in the way. Could have taken the pink into that top left. Natural angles kind of maybe take him two cushions back into bulk. So it's kind of shot to nothing. And unfortunately right now it looks like he's pretty straight on. This yellow there might be a touch of angle, but it's going to be tough for him to get back into bulk. Yeah, I needed to screw back a little bit more. This first time I've seen Hittish, I'd say he's probably definitely got the experience. Looks like he's been around the game for quite a while. Um, but Jackie is uh, definitely a, a young, great player there. Thank you, Mr. Michael Dominguez, who's tuning in. He's the... Uh, Owner of Ox Billiards, a great club. If you're ever down in the Seattle area, doing wonderful things to really uh, push this great game of snooker in America. He's asking how the weather is. Well, the weather never really changes in a snooker room. And, you know, maybe at about 10 o'clock at night when we finally go outside, <laughs> we'll be able to see. But it, it's La La Land. It's L.A. So it's always, you know, 72 degrees, shall we say. But it's nice and comfortable in the room. It's not too hot, not too cold. It's actually really ideal snooker conditions in here. With all these players are looking top-notch, dressed to the nines, looking very professional. As they are quite strict about the dress code here. And uh, obviously some people might be wondering where the bow ties are. And they've eased the bow tie policy until... Uh, we get into the knockout phase, that's when you'll start seeing the more fancy bow ties on these players. So, yeah, we're missing you, Mike. Wish you could have made the trip down, but we know you're a busy man. Sally, I'll uh, see what we can do about Sam McGrath. Our little scoreboard system here. I'm just not sure why our scoreboard has kind of gone a little defunct there. So I'm going to do my best to hopefully get that back up for you. You can check all the scores on Cloud Snooker. Dot com. Yeah, for 
actually Christian our, our tech was he just had to step aside for a quick little bit I don't know something has happened with our scoreboard so hopefully when he can get back he can uh, make things work there but uh, I can tell you right now it is 14 to 13 for Jackie in the first frame Yeah, I think you'll see uh, Matt about Snooker is commenting on the Danish tour. Obviously, when the Danish Masters go, uh, proper evening attire and bow ties are required in the dress code, but in some regular ranking events, that dress code is eased a little bit. booth here. Some things are not responding. Yeah, feel free to type up in the stream. Hopefully you can, uh, sure if you can see the stream, if you can, let me know. If you can hear me as well, that would be greatly appreciated. Just kind of having some glitches here. And my great streaming producer just had to step aside to uh, make sure that he was well fed. Um, and this, uh, Thank you, David Brock. Much appreciated. Yeah, something's going on with our little uh, scoreboarding thing here. Thanks, guys. Uh, much appreciated uh, your feedback as there's something just going on in control center here. And hopefully when Christian comes back, we can uh, write that scoreboard. Obviously, I can see the uh, with the many windows we have that Jackie Wee does have a 37-3 to advantage in this first frame. It's nice to see we have made some leaps and bounds as some people who maybe turned into my first event ever that I did way back in 2016 in Montreal. We were in a, a small room, couldn't see the table, and actually I had to have post-it notes brought to me for an updated scoring. AA688-4888. Lots of eights in there. Uh, not exactly sure what the prize money is right now, but that's something we can definitely research and probably be able to find out for you. So feel free to keep tuning in all weekend long.
Hittish has been making a nice uh, little break here. Crawling his way back into this first frame. TK is asking usually how many reds can you line up vertically below the black when you're doing a lineup practice. That's definitely up to the individual. And I think most of the time you'll probably see three. Uh, some do two. Uh, and I'd say uh, over three if you're putting four. I don't even think you could. Five would just be, I think, just ridiculous. Um, might be able to get away with four, but definitely three is probably the the highest that you can do there. Just a little pacey, but a very decent shot, taking, you know, four reds out of play. Jackie with a 37 to 19 advantage in this first frame. There's 67 points on the table, so uh, this one isn't over just yet. Asking about trying to pot that and hit this definitely went for it, but uh, with my caliber, I don't think I would have just traveling down. I think I would have taken a, a thin uh, slice at that red and, and maybe a double and bringing his cue ball back into bulk. Wow. Very nice shot there. Just kind of putting a little bit of mark down there, just so they know for the respot. Sometimes I'm surprised that they don't uh, put maybe a little coin. Sometimes I know that sometimes comes out in tournaments. We're at Embassy Billiards in San Gabriel, California, for the 2023 United States National Snooker Championship. David Burney is in the booth, and sorry, our scoreboard has been a, a bit funny. Obviously, it's day one, so, you know, lots of uh, kinks need to be worked out, and uh, as the day's getting uh, on, there's more and more people kind of coming in and checking out the great uh, snooker action. off this and come two cushions into bulk. AA with a man with or a person with a lot of eights. Uh, this place for four days. We'll be finishing concluding on Labor Day Monday, September 4th. And this is the round robin. We actually have 16 groups because there's 64 players. 
So four players per group. The top two in each group move on, and then we'll have a 32 single elimination knockout style kind of tournament leading down to the finals on Monday. Maybe early evening or late afternoon. Um, yeah, 64 strong players, which is great to see. Even had some players on the waiting list. So it's great to see for uh, snooker in America. You know, these tournaments just keep growing in entrance. But obviously what we would love as well is some great people to help us out behind the scenes so we can continue to give you great uh, pictures and sounds and obviously have that uh, scoreboard kind of fixed up. So there's a lot of things spilling here at Command Center and uh, just waiting for Christian to return to hopefully work his magic. thin there for Jackie. But fortunate enough with the thin cut. He did cannon into that brown. So thin cut if he didn't cannon into the bulk he'd be sending his cue ball down table and might have left one of these reds open for Hittish. You can definitely put a vote in. Uh, you know, our friends at the United States Snooker Association are uh, have the stream on their computers, so they could be watching what's going on in the chat room. So if people are voting strongly for some players, they might uh, schedule that up. in the chat room this afternoon is there any rookies amateur or pro players in this field uh, there isn't any professionals uh, there are a lot of amateurs and I think there's a few maybe that are playing in their first tournament there are some new faces as I was uh, involved in the tournament last year at Ox so some film mirror faces some new faces, which is always great to see. So there's a good range, good bunch of talents. And I think you're going to see some really uh, strong players. This frame is kind of Got a little bit uh, sour a bit. I think they definitely have their eyes on Dharma because he is quite a, a exciting player to watch, that's for sure. So they, they, we could possibly get him a little later on today. So I'll pass along uh, your wishes to see Dharma on the stream. Jackie had come out of this frame, guns a-blazing. It's just kind of 
cooled down just a little bit. And Hittish just kind of crawled back a little bit. Jackie in the lead, 37 to 19. It's the first frame, it's best of three. Now this is the first match for both these players, so both of them wanting to get uh, the first match win, and that was a nice... Nice red there. Looks like Jackie's going to his other hand there, and unfortunately TK Raymond is not in this tournament. Uh, he just had some issues that uh, he couldn't make it out, but uh, I know he's tuning in to the stream from time to time, so wish him all the best, and he definitely is sorely missed in this tournament as he was last year's runner-up. Dish is a bit in a bit of bother here. I think Sargon Isaac has definitely been uh, talked about a lot in the room, and they're wanting to get him on the stream. So definitely keep it tuned in. TK Dad, how to check with that? Um, with our friends at the USSA, if Ahmad Ali, he is uh, the American that's now playing on the Pro Tour. You know, he might be busy actually over in, in Britain trying to qualify for the British Open. Long misread there for Jackie, so Hittish has a. Uh, Potential to get in here. I think this red does go by the green. It's 44 to 19. Jackie in front. This first frame. It's kind of almost the the old versus young here. We have battle. Yes, you are correct, TK, that Ali, Ali is, uh, he's got a two-year card. So he, he's just, this season is his first year on it, so he'll be there for a couple more years.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just, uh, Christian Youngers, our great uh, technical producer, is back here in the booth. So, uh, yeah, we have a bit of a hiccup. Obviously, obviously, you can hear us, you can see it, uh, but our scoreboard is a bit of issue. So we are, at the end of this frame, just going to quickly reboot our system, and we'll be back online. As I told you, it's day one. we got to work out all these kinks. We want to get the, the great pictures and sound for all you. So when this one comes to a conclusion, we're just going to... Refresh everything, so be patient. Stay out there on the stream, and we'll be back up. Jackie Wee already has a 48 to 20 lead in this first frame. I think Jason Statham is here. Uh, that gentleman does. You know, there's a lot of people that look like other people. But unfortunately, I don't think Jason Statham is an American citizen. So and Jack is doing a nice job to clean up and take this first frame. Definitely an exciting player. Gets on with it. So, looking very promising for Jackie to take this first frame. And as I said, we will just be quickly rebooting the stream because there's a little glitch of the scoreboard that uh, somehow the, the gremlins came into our commentary booth and had a little fun with things. So, they're just having a little talk at the scoreboard. It's There's 47 in it and 25. So that's that's uh, that's an an eternity of uh, snookers there that Hitish needs. So it looks like there's going to be a little bit of concession. So let's just quickly uh, stand by. And we'll be right back. We're going to boot up, reboot the stream. So have patience, everybody, and we'll be right back. And we're back, everybody. Uh, hopefully you had nice patience there. Splash page of uh, our sponsorship right there. Hit this. We'll be ready to break off here in frame two. Christian Youngers is back in the booth. He joins me, David Burney, here at the 2023 United States National Snooker Championship in San Gabriel, California at yes, the sir. Embassy Billiards Club. Let's go, let's go. So we're back up again. Go ahead and share the page to all your friends, etc. Like and subscribe. <coughs> Get it out to people. I think it'll be uh, good to go. Yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, day one, you know, Christian and I are in a new environment and sometimes we don't get a a lot of time to just suss out everything and see every problem so sometimes they do come about but hopefully uh, after day one we can uh, get all that fixed up for all you lovely people out there that are tuning in and enjoying this great snooker action yeah it looks like we're back live on all channels I think we didn't really use our yeah YouTube is all there again I think uh, Facebook folks are going to have to reshare so uh, go share and get all the people back on Facebook because it is a new post, I believe. But on YouTube, it just keeps the, the live channel going. So I think everybody's back on track. Mad about snooker. Love the cam quality. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's a pretty sweet camera setup. Ooh, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. I think he had a little bit of thinking of the black ball a little bit too soon there. It's great to think about it a little in your pre-shot routine of thinking where you're going to place the cue ball after your red. 
but when it gets down to business, you got to just step away and concentrate on the ball in front of you. So I'm going to try to scope out the room and see if we can get somebody, one of these players in the booth and come do a little color commentary uh, with you, Dave. Maybe that'll work out well. We'll see who's available. Maybe somebody can come and talk through this frame, but it looks like everything's firing on all cylinders once again. We're good to go. Thanks everyone for refreshing. Share the stream out, like and subscribe. Yeah, we're good to go. TK, I think that goes down to preference obviously um, personally myself I do like an ash cue just because it has the chevrons helps me for alignment where maple uh, doesn't have that set chevrons has a smooth kind of feel to it uh, and as well I like my three quarter uh, but some people like one piece because the, the deflection isn't as strong yeah I think it's a lot of its preference a lot of its deflection like you said feral also matters a lot for deflection mm-hmm Okay, looks like we got a we have a candidate coming into the booth with us. That'll be fun. Sir Ramil of House Azamat, I believe. Mm hmm. And our scoreboard has gone down again. It just really kind of gets funky sometimes. Yeah, I think we're having a lot of transition of matches right now, so it's probably the reason. So hopefully we can get that up for you soon as well but uh, all the updates and all the scores are on cloudsnooker.com Leave an easy starter here for Jackie. But early on in this second frame, Hitish definitely needs uh, to get this one. Aaron CC actually won his uh, first match over Patrick Gigi. So hopefully maybe we can get him on the TV table some point soon. treat coming up for everybody our good friend uh, from the Arizona the land of the rising sun we have Romil Asmit who is the owner and operator of a fantastic academy down in Arizona there's Romil right there so uh, hey everyone anyone's out in Arizona if they have any questions for Romil uh, he's there, and he can answer him about his wonderful club. So welcome to the booth, Ramil. Thank you, sir. Good to be here. So have you got your teeth wet? Have you gotten into a match yet, or are you still waiting to play? Yeah, I played the first match, 1-2-0, um, but it wasn't really convincing a uh, uh, match. Hi, Dave. Dave is a great guy. Been to, uh, to my club. He's a... F He's a mate with uh, Darren Taylor. Daniel Candy. Hey. And so these two players, Jackie and Hittish, do you know uh, both these players? Or? I know. Oh, no, I know uh, Jackie uh, pretty well. Um, he was an Ox last year, if you remember that. Mm -hmm. He actually beat the... Uh, the the champion Ahmed Ali he beat him in the group stages and how are you finding the how are you finding embassy have you been here before 
Yeah, I used to come and practice here because this was the uh, the closest place that uh, I could come and practice from Arizona. They actually reduced the tables. They used to have uh, 12 tables, snooker tables. Wow. They reduced it to, uh, to nine. <coughs> and uh, yeah, they actually sold around, I think nine snooker tables, they sold them out. They had them. So this place actually, uh, one time was all snooker tables. Hmm. Very interesting. You don't see that too much in America. No, absolutely not. And uh, my opinion, this is the uh, the best club to play tournaments at. As mm -hmm. you can see, forty eight matches in a in a day. You know, ending at starting from nine a.m., ending at, at five p.m. I think that's um, you, you won't you won't see that anywhere else. <laughs> no <laughs> way. No way. Forty eight matches. I think maybe in the olden days, I think it was set up in, in Blackpool in England when they had like just immense amount of events and multiple, multiple tables over there in England. But right. over there, it's uh, pretty much part of the religion, whereas uh, here in North America, we're just kind of continuing to grow up the game. And it's great to see we're getting a lot of good numbers in the tournaments as the years progress. Yeah, definitely the uh, the best tournament uh and the biggest tournament so far in the U.S. with 64 players. Um, I'm, I'm just really happy that uh, um, we are at this stage right now in the U.S. that we have 64 players um, playing at the Nationals. But yeah, returning to, to talking about the club. Um, not only Steven, but the previous owner um, that we call Uncle Paul, they really taken pride in, in the table and clean them and taking care of the tables. Um, and uh, when you come in after year, the conditions are still the same on the cloth. I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I know Steven spent a lot of, lot of money for uh, this year uh, competition and uh we are we, we're definitely lucky having this place definitely lucky and yeah this is the first time i've been here it's a very nice place like the outside yeah. is very inviting and then we come in and there's a nice lounge area yeah. wonderful staff behind yeah. us ready to greet you yeah. and see what you need and definitely been impressed and they yeah. do also have uh, you know some pool and some chinese eight ball tables so right so yeah, if you guys in the area in California, this is the place to come and play snooker. Hands down, the you know my opinion it is the best place in the U.S. to come and play snooker because not only they provide the, the, the tables, but they have a huge amount of quality players here that you can come and play and challenge them. <coughs> Where in a lot of other clubs, um, they do have the tables, they do have everything, but they don't have. Um, you know any strong players that you can mm -hmm. you can challenge and you can play with them. Now, would you say that your place in Arizona is it more of an academy or a club or a bit of both? Or you know, I called it academy for a reason that uh, because we're not really serving food there, we're not serving any drink. Uh, it's basically just come in, play snooker, and uh, and, and and that's it. So uh, that's the really reason I'm calling it academy, but. People are using it as a, as a, uh, you know, more like a club basically. Because if it's academy, then I need to have a, a full-time staff uh, a coach there. That, <laughs> yeah. So, no. But yeah, in, in my club, we have, uh, including me and Darren, uh, uh, we do coaching, uh, provide coaching classes. How did you get into this game of snooker, Emil? Um, I think it was just my, my 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 dad and my uncle used to go to snooker hall and play, and I just want you know they dragged me with them, I guess. And uh, I was twelve, and I just got hooked to it. Was this in America? This is back in Denmark. Denmark. Okay. Denmark. Yeah. Back in Denmark, that's where I started playing. 
question. Yes, we had someone tuning in uh, talking about the Danish Masters and really appreciative of uh, the dress code that we have because the Masters, they have the full evening attire with bow ties, but then some of their ranking events, they ease it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I can see Safe is here too. Hey, Safe. Safe actually was uh, in this tournament, um, not the nationals, but like five years ago, there was a, again, another big event Stephen uh, hosted, and that turnaround on that was also really great. Oh, yeah, we're just in a luxury here having eight tables. He actually has nine tables. I'm not sure if they're using the ninth table for the tournament, maybe just kind of a, a practice table as it's often its own private room yeah 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 <coughs> daniel candy you're right your first match was against me i remember daniel was a upcoming player which now he's a yeah i'm glad i'm not going to play him in this <laughs> tournament he's a maximum player and uh he has uh yeah, he uh, his level is definitely a different level right now back in Denmark. I I hope that he could uh, turn pro, but if that's that's another thing. Yeah, Aaron, I know Misty. She's uh, one of our members. Let's go back to the game with Jackie. <coughs> yes, and I just heard an update, Ramil, that actually you're going to be featured on the TV table. That's going to be our next match. You're going to be going against Raymond McCarthy. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> nice. We have a long red <coughs> pot. You can probably play for a shot for nothing and draw it back to the ball caller. Well, Aaron, I actually have a... I also have Milton, which you're saying, but I also have... Uh, Misty as a member so <laughs> definitely a match of contrast uh it just definitely takes his time to look at every shot, and Jackie just seems to get down and get on with the business. Yeah, Jackie is a, a definitely a, f a fast-paced player. Changing the left hand. Didn't hit that really well. Still has a chance chance for the corner. I don't know if it was on purpose to draw it back out. Got the blue. Yeah, it could do well with getting the pink back on its spot and the blue as the blacks really tied yeah. up there on the left pretty a messy game right now and I know be, you know being Jackie I, I don't think that's in his favor 
mm -hmm. frame being like that because he likes to do, uh, you know, get on with it with brakes and all that. Out of these nine tables, uh, I think the three or four tables of them are still block. And they're uh, definitely more tougher to play on than the rest of them. Well, there's one good outcome out of that shot. The blue is out. <laughs> When we practiced yesterday, that was a great shot. <coughs> we were practicing yesterday. Every time a color would go off spot, I would put it back on spot. And the guys <laughs> didn't understand why I did that. <laughs> it's like maybe this red by the middle pocket is covering the blue. No, these are all, uh, Daniel, these are all 68, 11, 30 ounce. I don't know why, but this year's, um, you know, every year we put 30, 30 ounce on, on these tables. This year, um, they're running really, really slow, and it feels like you're playing on a 32 ounce. Um, there's nobody who got an answer for it because... Uh, I sold them the roll, so I know <laughs> it's a 30 ounce. <laughs> um, could there be an increase in the smog here in LA? It could be. It could be from all. Uh, uh, I think humidity has a mm -hmm. lot to do with it. You know, if it's not dry enough, the cloth could run uh, on the slower side. Thank you, Dave, for uh, doing what you do for us commentating. That's, uh, that's really, really nice of you. That's definitely something that uh, we definitely didn't have that before, before you came on board. So thank you so much for your hard work. All right. Let me reach into my wallet. I'll have to do that. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Ramil. Lots of good fun, and I think that's you know what this game needs as well. It's just the the, the exposure, like we're, you know leaps and bounds with the the streams and stuff, and then people could actually see it and get inspired to yeah, pick up yeah, a cue. Yeah. <coughs> I think it was Christian who came and installed the cameras, right? A couple of days before. Correct. That's really really uh, nice of him as well, giving us this opportunity that we can stream it worldwide. Yeah, there's a lot of great feedback that was happening uh, in England after the U.S. Open, the women's event that happened a couple of weeks at weekends ago at Ox. Yeah, that 
That was a great turnaround as well, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. One thing that, um, you know, that's a little bit annoying, if, uh, same thing in my own club as well with the LEDs, is that um, when you play the table next to it, you know, um, it's hitting your eyesight. Okay. Uh, that's the only bad thing about LEDs. Mm -hmm. If you go to... Um, place like Hong Kong for example their lighting is as large as these ones right here but um, they have reflectors on it okay so it doesn't pass that table to the next table great which is absolutely a, I think it's, it's a, this is the way to go mm -hmm. you know because just by sitting here Dave you can see like those lights hitting you right in your eyesight right imagine you go to the shot unless you can block it off like other players can do i can't you know i can't even play a regular game instead of you know just blocking off different stuff but um yeah i kind of like get used to in my club as well my tables are a little bit more closer than these and uh when you when i turn on all four lights it's like an airport You know, usually when you're uh, in stroke and you're just, you know, the pockets are looking like the size of buckets and you're just fluid and potting yeah. well. If someone asks you about the lights, you might be, oh, what a fluke there. But you might be like, what lights? Right. If you're not playing well, the first thing you're going to argue is like, who put these lights in? The tip, the cue, <laughs> the cloth, table, earthquake. Yeah. Jet lag. <laughs> We've seen them all. <laughs> Now Jackie did that just to get the black out. He didn't even bother to go for any color. It definitely has a great toll on uh, on the fast-paced players when they play slower players. Um, you know, they um, it does sometimes do affect their play. Yeah, I think a lot of these players, you know, are not familiar with the TV cameras right. and all that stuff. I think talking to Dave Daly actually the other day, he's been on the TV table a few times in some events, and he said pretty much by the third shot he's completely forgot about it. Right. So I think that's a good philosophy to have because you can't get dirty, and then you're thinking yeah. the world is watching you. And right. This is your first time watching Jackie. This is definitely not his, his A game. He is much better than that. Yeah, he's just, uh, as you can see off camera, he's a little upset with himself. Right. You know, heads down. So, you know, it's kind of been a messy frame. It kind of looks like a rugby score, right. actually, on that score line, not as much of a snooker score line. Right. Jack did come out of this match. He was uh, definitely firing on all cylinders. He was looking strong, but this one has just kind of slowed down a little bit.
I know this is the wrong way to commentate this game, but if I was instead of Hitash, I would make sure that black wouldn't come out. And um, I wouldn't put the brown. I wouldn't even go for the brown. I would just try to get the blue on the rail as well. Now, like I said, this is absolutely the wrong way to commentate this, but uh, I think uh, everybody should uh, think about uh, how to win a frame against your opponent. Nope, there's no wrong way or anything like that. You right. know how play the game how you play the game, and yeah. Hitish might kind of look back at this game and just see, and right. maybe he didn't even realize about the right. blue you speak of. Right. Uh, not sure if he's played Jackie. Obviously, he must have seen in the first frame that Jackie's definitely an exciting, quick, yeah. accomplished player. So definitely keeping that black on the rail would have been right. to his advantage because now that it's open, Jackie can really score heavily. Right. <coughs> Being a crucible this year, I mean, everybody was uh, cheering on Luca because he is playing the game the proper way. Uh, he's an attacking player, and that's fun to watch. Where, you know, you play a defensive player, it's you know, it's, it's really a drag to watch. Um, but some people like it. Yeah, it's Like I said, it's all the uh, style that you have, you know. That was a really great safety. And I think that's why we're here, to uh, inform yeah. the, the new public, because sometimes... Yeah. Some people just happen to come pawn snooker, not really know much of the game. Right. Uh, but tune in, and as you see, you know, a big safety right. exchange, which can be right. very exciting for the seasoned snooker fan, right. know what they're trying to do. But a new fan would be like, well, there's six pockets and all these balls. Why isn't nothing going in the pocket? Right, right. <laughs> to say Hitish kind of leans more on the the defensive side where Jack is definitely very aggressive. So is there an Arizona Open Championship? You know, everybody is, uh, you know, telling me to, to host a tournament over there, you know, and, you know, because everybody wants to come in and play there but the problem is um, I'm really limited to, 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 to the spot I mean I do have an opening on the other side of it that I can open it up and make it a lounge area mm -hmm. but the uh, the venue itself we can't ho we can't have like people walking around the tables and all that just not not enough room for that if I do host a tournament I think I can do a host a tournament like 16 players max of 32 players mm -hmm. But it's not a fun place to be if you're not playing, right? Okay. There's not much you can do. There's no, like, unless, I, like I said, if I do with an opening on the other side and make it a lounge area so people can sit and talk and not interfere with the, uh, with the guys in the venue. Yeah, we were supposed to do the uh, Masters mm -hmm. before the COVID hit. And... Yeah, that just didn't take place, unfortunately. I think it's nice that we're rebounding after COVID. Things yeah, are, are looking yeah, up. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, Answer your question, DuPont. Does USA have a professional player? Well, we actually uh, just send that player, Ahmed Ali, to... Uh, to US, he's on this. Uh, he's on the tour right now. Um, I guess you can call it a professional. Yes, once you're on the tour, you're a professional. Um, first player to to make it on the um, pro circuit. Yeah.
Yeah, Daniel, between these uh, Riley, uh, the Riley aristocrat that uh, we're playing on on the match table here, I feel like, uh, I mean, the pockets are all the same because they use the same pocket template. But I feel like uh, star tables, uh, slate, the shelf, as you call it, is a little bit deeper than these. So sp spits the ball out more a star table does and it's not because of the pocket opening it's more because of the uh deepness of the uh of the uh the slate <coughs> and are those the tables that you have at your club do you have the stars or that's Riley's? correct yeah yeah they call them the 101 table model 101 which is the uh, tv tables and also uh yeah, i have number 10 cloth okay. um on my venue How is the scene in Arizona? Do you have a lot of players out there? <coughs> I got um, 100 and things like 113 members now. Right. But it's not like, uh, you know, those everyday members that you see in, in, in the club. I probably got like 20 of those or 25 of those. Like, uh, you know, they come more frequently. Um Arizona is a it's a uh, it's a it's a weird weird state. I can't tell you how weird that state is. <laughs> um, people are so spread out, so spread out. Yeah. I mean, you can't go get grab a milk if you're not thirty minutes in in, in the way. You know, it's just it's wow. <laughs> just weird to tell that to you know to a Southern Californian night. or or <laughs> people from Europe, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, I want to go see my mom while you're 30 minutes on the highway. I'm going to go, you know, there it's 30 minutes. So there's a lot of people who want to come and play every day, but they're so spread out and they just don't bother driving the 40 minutes, 30 minutes. Yeah, since we're in Southern California, just close to Los Angeles and Hollywood. You had a little speck of Hollywood that came to your club, right? Yeah, that was a uh, yeah, that was a big, big, big surprise. <laughs> we had uh, Keanu Reeves walking into the uh, the spot. That was pretty. Uh, yeah, that was great. So were you just kind of brushing a table, and all of a sudden, some gentleman came in and. Well, no, it was it wasn't really like that. Uh, um, But uh, yeah, five guys walked in and Keanu was one of them. And uh, he played about uh, 30 minutes, I'll say, on, on the table. He's originally from Canada, so um, he loves snooker. And I was thinking, you know, if he had what he could do as John Wick with two chopsticks or whatever it was, <laughs> what can he do with the snooker cue? <laughs> and? Well... Oh. We never got to find out. I didn't answer him. I didn't really uh, made him mad. So, <laughs> but how is he? I didn't. I didn't smash his car. So, <laughs> <laughs> is he a good shot? You know, he's a l regular. I would say. Yeah. Uh, you know, but he. Uh, what surprises me, he had the snooker stand. You okay. Know. You know, once you. Once you're a snooker player, I guess that stand never, you know, fade away. That's. For sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I still have YouTube video of it. He made some uh, good shots. Great. That's a good safety. <laughs> and really, you know, on paper, Jackie is much, much better player. Uh, obviously, he practice every day. Hitachi, I don't know him that well. I don't know if he practices, if he has a snooker table, um, where he's at. Do you know? I do not know. This is the first time I've ever seen Hitesh. So. <coughs> uh. But at the end of the day, it does not matter how you win it. You just have to win it. So, whatever it takes. And right now, Hitesh is definitely doing... Um, what he thinks is the right way to, to do it and 
as you can see on the screen, um, he is leading. Yeah, 10 point advantage, but still 35 on the table. It's interesting going back to that point. I remember hearing once that Stephen Hendry, uh, seven time world champion, was playing a match at the Crucible, I think, in 2012, and he had a maximum. One of the greatest feats you can ever have in wow. snooker. You know, 15 reds with 15 blacks and all the colors to maximize the points of 147. Wow. But after the fact, he lost the match. And people are like, oh, you had a 147. He's like, well, okay, but didn't I didn't win, win the me match. A match yeah. <laughs> didn't win me a match, right. This looks good for Jackie. Yeah, now, Jackie, instead of thinking that, you know, I need to pot and clear table because that's all, you know, uh, a player will think about when it comes to the uh, last red is to just, you know, I want to clear the table. And you always think about, you know, the green, the brown. I think he should just uh, take it as it comes mm -hmm. and uh, play good safety and uh, have Hitash to, uh, you know, um, mess up. And then take one ball at a time because this frame you just can't be better. I mean, it doesn't matter what Jackie will do at this frame. Even if he clears up, it's still a failure for him this frame because he's played um, not to the standard, not to his standard at least. So he need just need to. Yeah, sometimes you got to, you know, those tough it. frames you got to win if you can win those. Right. Those are the best ones. The worst is that uh, you lose that, you know, tough battle. Yeah, a little uncharacteristic of Jackie here. That uh, I thought that was going to be an easy starter for him to get going. Yeah, definitely. He touched got got to under his skin. I think the way that he plays, uh, the way the game has turned. Um, so, what are you playing here, Emil? Just put a red in. You got eleven point advantage. After this um, color, it's going to be a yellow. I mean, green is safe. Brown is safe. So I wouldn't put black safe or whatever. I would really, really go for the black, you know, and uh, put all my effort into just putting it. Um, I would go with the firm shot, so I don't leave it by the pocket. Um, but if you get that, if you get that, now he's seventeen points ahead with 27 on the table <coughs> so when you move the rest like that Dave you definitely want to get up and recomposure and then go back to the shot again mm -hmm. <coughs> so crucial that you do that that was a great shot great great shot especially with that pace that he did See, all of a sudden, 17 points. I mean, if it was a practice match, you know, uh, that's nothing. But at this point where Jackie's been struggling so much, those 17 points, it's, uh, it's huge. And like I've been saying to my club members as well, because, the, you know, a lot of them are their first time playing a tournament. Um, it's that best out of three everybody has a chance to to win mm -hmm. it's only best of three right i mean if all the good players here would make 80 70 breaks in every frame we wouldn't be here right now we would be in england playing <laughs> for the pro circuit right that's true uh yeah all amateurs are lacking the consistency that's 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 what why we're still amateurs <coughs> But you know, amateurs do it for the love where professionals get right, paid. Right, right, <laughs> exactly. 
Wow, that was a great shot. You see how Jackie has the cue action of a pull player. Mm -hmm. This could be a good steal. I was amazed that he could putt that ball after all that movement in his body. visit but still anyone's frame Jackie if he can yeah. take this one he'll win the match hit is trying to force a decider McCarthy, have you played this uh, gentleman? Do you know this gentleman? No, I do not know him, no. Which is a good thing. Mm hmm. New faces to the circuit, that's all we want. Oh, what wow. a pot. What a pot. <laughs> so. What is it, 18 on the table, 18? 18 on the table. And 18 behind. Ball. 17 behind, so he needs this blue. So this frame ball. 17, right, he can still make it, yeah. Jackie doesn't need a, not gonna be a respawn. Lucky there. Yeah, if I were Jackie, I would just uh, give up this frame, um, go to the next frame because nothing good will come out of this. And there's no miss here. Or is there? There's sh this actually. He needs snooker, so. After, they should be coming down, because I think, yeah, the result of that shot. You know. It's one thing as much as it's nice seeing new faces. We also like to see some uh, faces behind the cameras as well, helping out the refereeing and scorekeeping. And I think they're having a chat about it now. just be a kind of a, a sounding board so everything is on the up and up. Twenty two minute and eighteen on the table, so Jackie does need just one snooker, but I think you're kinda right there, Romeo. Maybe just lick your wounds. You know, you're st still another frame to play. Come back fresh. Yeah, I wouldn't even bother playing snooker here. I would just go for the next frame. And yeah, we've seen it a little early on where some there has been some large leads in the latter part of frames and pretty much everyone in the booth and on this stream are like, I think there should be a concession there. But hopefully as we get more and more events, the education comes to the players. <coughs> Did he get him the snooker? Looks like it. Mm -hmm.
It's an unfortunate part that uh, Jackie does need snookers here, so usually when so he touches from California. So if he's from Cali, I guess he's from uh, the Bay Area. So I guess he uh, practices at the at the JS place. Yeah, and Hitchish just needs to, when he is in the snooker, just needs to hit that blue ball. Doesn't really have to worry about where it ends up because as long as he makes a good contact, Jackie will still need to lay snookers to, if he wants to get this frame. He's got a possibility to get behind the black here off the blue. Read a double kiss, but that uh, mm. turned out all right. Dave, what do you play? You play snooker, or you play pool, or I play snooker. Oh, you do. Okay. I do. <coughs> I don't play it that well. You know, my high break might be minus five. Okay, that's <laughs> definitely. Uh, <laughs> A challenging break right there. <laughs> Room for improvement. <laughs> <coughs> no, we've got a, a good scene going back in Vancouver, up in Canada. So, lots of great players, and hopefully, uh, as I said, you know, COVID did put a damper on a lot of events. But talking to uh, the higher ups, like Ajaya and Alan, they're wanting to have potentially some. U.S. Open events, where it's right. open to uh, Canadians, <coughs> Canadians, Mexicans, Brazilians. I hope that, um, isn't that happening here in Knox in December, or that's not something uh, in concrete? I haven't seen anything, so uh, I'm pretty sure we'll definitely be hearing about that. Are you going down to the PAPSO event in Brazil? I'm not, no. Uh, if I do that, that's definitely calling for a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, uh, yeah, I had way, m way too many traveling this year. And, uh, <coughs> yeah, you can call me. Yeah, I'm probably not a man enough to go there. Ladies and gentlemen, I think Ramil is selling himself a little bit short. I was hoping he was going to be my bodyguard, but... Uh, nope. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> when we come off the commentating, then I will say yes. But <laughs> you never know. Wife might be hearing all this, so... Peter Singh's tuning in on the stream, and they have actually eight snooker tables in kind of the, the general area, followed by, looks like, at about ten uh, eight-ball tables, and then they have four Chinese eight-ball tables, and then in a private room they have one snooker table. So definitely a lot of space down here. Here they have a restaurant beside, haven't checked that out, but maybe for lunch. Could be a, a tasty idea. Yeah, this is a great, great setup to play tournaments. I mean, it's everyone's dream to to come and play a tournament and then uh, each day ends at 5 p.m. and then you can go enjoy you know dinner and uh, come back again and uh, practice with the guys nothing is worse than uh, a tournament goes over midnight you know yeah that really day. affects the standard you know yeah it does it does 
So it is nice that we're seeing a yeah. few more places that are getting a lot yeah. of tables. Yeah. Yeah, I really wish that uh, Stephen gets uh, something out of this, what he's doing for the game and all that. So we can come back again here and play. I don't think any player will be against playing here again next year or any year or any tournament being here. Um, <coughs> Yeah, I think our, our good friends over in England are, have been tuning in. So I know, uh, you know, they give, give great reviews of Ox when we have tournaments there. So I'm pretty sure they'll be turning into uh, our tournaments during the weekend. Right. And they should be able to see that this is quite a a nice, warm feeling club. Right. I must admit, you definitely feel at home here. Jackie just needs the one snooker, but... It's <coughs> definitely been a scrappy kind of match, actually. No one's really got uh, really fluid. No, this is a frame that just needs to uh, be over with. <laughs> yeah, for sure. said best piece of advice he gave me just have patience yeah, that's situation. all it takes in this game right mm -hmm. your opportunity will come right and we'll see if that can happen for Jackie or we'll hit it extinguish it long pink to take the frame see for he touch this is just you know you just really need to roll it by the pocket that's all he needs to do why give Jackie extra chances to play him a snooker? Like that ball, he sure. literally have to just roll it to the pocket. Yes, I have to agree with you there, sir. The further distance there is between the ball and where he needs to put lay him a snooker is going to be, you know, be more difficult. Here we just roll it up and down the table again, take it as close as possible to the pocket. This is only will advantage Jackie. Mm -hmm. Day one of the 2023 United States National Snooker Championship. We're at Embassy Billiards in St. Gabriel, 
California. David Bernie is in the booth. I've got a special guest here, Romil Azmitz, correct? That is correct, yeah. All right. You <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> I nailed it. <laughs> Better than how my mom says it. <laughs> and actually, Romil will be on the TV table after the conclusion of this match going against Raymond McCarthy. Stay tuned, and it's all free. That's true. <laughs> I have never mentioned that. You make a good point. This is always free to watch. We aren't charging any pay-per-view. And as well, it's free to watch in person. If you're in the San Gabriel, Los Angeles area, feel free to come by and visit us. Say hello. Oh. And you might be able to get an autograph from Ramil if you're lucky if you come down. Hurry up, come down. It's your only chance. Will not be offered twice. <laughs> so just millimeters away from leaving Hitish in a bit of trouble. I think you commented that correctly, Romil, there, that uh, as it goes going on longer and longer, it's just going to help Jackie. Yeah, for sure. Sargon, don't ask pricing. You can't afford it, you know it. Yeah, here's a chance for it to, sh to just, just roll that pink to the top right corner. I hear Sargon's quite a, a good player as well, so maybe he can be autographing some programs for uh, the fans that come in. Saragon is a great player. He's uh, used to play in uh, <coughs> in Nottingham in the UK for Michael Holt. And I uh, used to play tournaments where Judd Trump was there and uh, he tried it all. His Q action is probably one of the best Q action in this tournament. Lovely to see. You owe me dinner, Sargon. <laughs> He's put that black a little closer to the cushion. That's just going to help Jackie a little bit more. <coughs> yeah, there you go. Ah. You, know, you should really take advantage of that chance that he had. Because mm -hmm. even if you over screw the white, it will come even closer to the black. And... Even if it hits the black, it will hit the black, you know, full ball, so it'll still be a snooker, so. Just roll it to the pocket. <laughs> Good thing the table is slow. Or is that pink would be right by the middle of the pocket. I guess you heard me. Yeah. Double mm. click was always there. Should have come from the back. And if you have that shot, if you want to practice that shot and then you know in your club doesn't matter what you do with the white ball doesn't matter how much 
side you put on it, it will still double click, double hit. Here you can stun it across. It's the chance. Let's see if you take advantage of it. No, he should have gone on from the other side. Because when you do stunt, when you go f so far away from, from it, it will take the effect from the white ball. student there I think he's just got to roll that pink yeah I mean I think the other guys are just finished their matches maybe he got a double I think he has. I think he has a double. He just have to stun it. Heart shot. So, yeah, the double is there. He's right in front of me. So I just got the update for Emil. Actually, you're going to be on table two, but that's still part of our TV package. Oh, nice. So we'll be able to see a little bit. But no. Dharma and Hamina against. Dawi Zhao is going to be on our TV table at the conclusion of this match. But Who was that? The other table? <coughs> Dharma Hamnia, the tongue tornado, shall we say. He's got a lot of great Bobby facial reactions when he plays, going against Bobby Dawi. and David, we call him Dawi. Both of them are great players, and uh, definitely both of them are... I, I guess they're playing for first and second place in that group. Yeah, another another shot that he could have just rolled it in but decided to give it a pace well, almost went in wow I think he would do if he potted that ping he would do both of them a favor <laughs> I think so <coughs> uh, yeah Richard I'm not sure exactly what the time of this frame is but I think it's definitely been the longest so far of the tournament is there a trophy for that do you know that, Dave? <laughs> uh, the Fergal O'Brien trophy, maybe? Mm -hmm. Or the Peter Emden trophy? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just really, it just, it's always tough to get in that frame. Like uh, Arsalan Yami, a great player in the Vancouver area. Just echoing in your thoughts, uh, Ramil, if they're telling us to go whisper in Hitish's ear just to roll it in. Roll it. <laughs> table next to it playing against Colleen. 
Kalina has resided in, uh, either originated from uh, Romania, used to play there. Now he uh, lives in Florida, Jacksonville. He actually plays two places. He's a he's a driver, so when he he drives from east coast to west coast, so every three weeks he's at my place, and then he drives to L.A. He plays in Embassy, and then I see him again on his way back. So yeah. I see him twice. <coughs> Andy Howe, I think he, uh, yeah, he plays in uh, New York. That's correct, a little bit more of action actually on our second table is... Uh, this has still been a yeah, that's very a long stalemate here. That's a more exciting match for sure right now because it's 1-1. And he's on a break. <coughs> the other reds are not scared. They're like kind of like a, a bundle. It's a right shot right there. Stun it off the cushion. Come back. Yeah, the way that, that way he long. played it, basically, it's you don't let your stroke out. So if he did play it on the on the rail and come back, it would be more positive shot. Well, it's easier than set. Me sitting here and saying it, but <coughs> I wonder if Jackie might have just got the snooker. Now oh, you can see it full ball. Yeah, I'm just taking a, a look in the room, obviously not looking at the monitor on our table too much. Oh, but yes, you are correct there, Ramil. Almost had it. Now, roll it to the pocket. It's actually pretty impressive that they can play safety on a pink for that long. Yeah, and <laughs> neither player's gone in off. Yeah. Sometimes Jackie just needs to say, okay, there's th I can't lay a snooker here. I'll just have to put pink safety and then just play that and hoping that the next shot, you know, you get a chance. Exactly, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, maybe we'll just stick on this one as there's potential that uh, we might be going to a decider on frame one, but they're battling back and forth over that pink. Mm. And this is a deciding match here with Liwa and Callan. Kalin actually uh, <coughs> is going to participate in uh, Pan Am this year, Brazil. Papsa. Very nice. Yeah, I think we've got uh, actually some Canadians as well going down, so that's good to see. Right. So. What is it limited players to? 32, 36? I think 32. They, 32. Uh, yeah, they were probably hoping for 64, but just uh, I think something's happened that they're just going to think they don't have the capacity, right? Mm hmm But table-wise. So this frame has been going on for an hour and 11 minutes on our table uh, one TV matchup. <coughs> and, uh, it Please don't go for the black. You don't need to. Get <laughs> on with it. <laughs> yes, as you can see, we, we can see the our featured table. That's finally going to conclude. So they're going to a decider there. Finally, after a Herculean battle of probably an hour and 15 minutes, possibly over there. Yeah, Jackie did uh, definitely didn't do himself a favor by 
playing for snooker even though he just needed one um That was a great shot by Kali. After they finish now in five minutes, they and if I have to play on table two that means they're right on time the scheduling yes sir yes sir yes sir and that's what nice about all these tables <laughs> i mean there's one two there's two tables nobody's playing on or well, one table i guess i didn't see him yeah i think matches are scheduled to go out i believe uh dave daly's match is probably starting soon And then, looks like Mark Wilson and Angus Liu. Who's Dave? D okay, Dave Daly's going to play Mustafa. Mustafa, my... Uh, Is he at your club? Yep. Nice. He, uh, Mustafa actually uh, started uh, very recently in the club, and uh, he improved so much. That even other players that came to our club and saw him play, um, I mean, that's just what practice does to you, you know. Mm -hmm. He's been very dedicated, and uh, his only goal was to, you know, beat uh, another player that he used to practice with. And uh, he definitely achieved that in a very, very short time. Five on the table, twenty five behind. It's a thin red, that's for sure. We are just making sure the path is extremely clean. Just need the brown. Yeah, nice. So look at follow through shot, and it should be easily on the yellow. So Chris Collins is going to gonna play for Snooker now. Mm. And the whole mistake came on the brown when he uh, he really should have just rolled it. But instead he stunned it and got the green safety. And he was pretty hampered. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's been said we've got a nickname now. It's Roland Ramil. There How about go. that? We like that? There you go. <laughs> look at that wow. once you roll it your opponent is uh, <coughs> don't have any other option but to put the put the ball <coughs> there you go one less ball on the table 
Yeah, hopefully you're getting uh, some good research here, Romil, because this is a table you'll be on next when this one comes to a conclusion. Balls are situated that Colleen can actually get a snooker from him. It's not a bad table for Colleen. with that double kiss. Now here, now he has, Leo has a chance to lay him a snooker. But once you need, snoo you know, once you're in front, you don't want to play that game. You want to try to roll the balls to the pocket, even though if you miss him. green I don't think he would have been in this predicament All right this could be trouble here you walk up on the black oh I guess in that shot you're really trusting the table, rolling to the green and trying to get behind the black for me. Yeah. Or you, is that the shot you're playing? Or you? No, it's absolutely not. No. Um, especially on a table that is your first match, you don't know how it rolls. Yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty risky. Even if you do lay him a snooker like that, it's an easy hit, but the chance, the risk is bigger than mm -hmm. what you're gonna get out of it. I would only do it if um, you say, okay, it's a, it's a risk, but if you do it, the snooker is so difficult to, to, to hit from him, so... <coughs> Actually, now it's better, the pink going in that cluster right there. Makes it a little bit easier to play snooker. Mike in Rochester, if you want to check out cloudsnooker.com. That's where you can get live updated scoring. So I'm not sure uh, if Vroom Vroom Varun is playing right now. Well, I think it's my match now because Leo just put the green, doubled it. It's nice being here, guys. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. I really appreciate your insight, Romil. There he is. <laughs> Came all the way from Arizona. Amazing yeah. that you actually would drive from Arizona all the way out here. How far away is that? Six hours, not bad. Six hours, okay. So if you guys are six hours away to get my autograph, please hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you hear snooker players of uh, complaining about their commutes, but six hours, that's nothing. And some Cana Canadians talk about me, oh, we're driving so far, you know, I had to drive an hour and a half. But I'm like, do you remember mm. Cliff Thorburn actually had to fly over the Atlantic Ocean? That was his commute when he wow. was playing. <laughs> I mean, I used to come here once a month, you know, to practice. And uh, I did that six-hour drive. 
once a month oh. to play with the guys. Oh. That's a nice snooker there by Callan. So 31 behind. He'll need. Free ball. There's a free ball, but I'll, I'll literally tell him to play again from there, because there's no miss. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, the way he's gonna play it now, huge chance to give six points away. And if you pass it, it will be another free ball. Wow. Great shot there. He must be relieved. <laughs> Definitely for sure. <coughs> Bob will be on our TV table number one. We'll probably be going back to the that table at the conclusion of this match, as that match that table has Jackie <coughs> Wee going <coughs> against Hitish Dolphini. Ah, I believe is his name. Oh, look at that! What a hit. Great hit. They have nine snooker tables by Garrett. Now would he roll it behind the pink? on the table. Deciding frame here in this round robin match. You want to hit two cushions here. If you hit one cushion and goes off of it, he might scratch. Yeah, that's the uh, scary part of playing it. One cushion to it. That's a good hit. It's a good hit by Colleen. Really good. Now if you can't come from the back side, can you see it? Can you go through the black? Wow. Just barely. Wow. Stunt the blue behind the pink. Just let the white stay right there. <coughs> Playing that shot, he came way too far. He's going to force it to go behind the pink, but there's going to be a lot of pace on the pink. So we'll come back. Now... Guess who's gonna lay the snooker now? Santa Claus? Mm, <laughs> don't know. Does he exist? Well, he is wearing white and red. <laughs> yeah, I was just waiting. 
waiting for the adjacent table to take their shot, and Lee Wall will definitely come back to the table. And as uh, Romil's crystal ball says, I think this is going to be tough for Callan. Yeah. Two cushions. Easy escape, but will he leave it or not? That's the question. I uh, just didn't put it. Yeah, because right, right guys, there. that's it for me. Well, uh, thank you for having me, Dave. Thank you very I much, Ramil. I'll see you again uh, Yeah, the, the weekend is young. It's just yeah. day one here at the U.S. Nationals, so good luck in your match against Raymond. And uh, hopefully you can pay us a visit again. Uh, but good luck for you in the tournament. Maybe we won't see you in the booth because you'll be taking away the championship. Oh, that would be nice. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ramil. Take care.
And welcome back, everybody. We just kind of took a little bit of break. Just wanted to set up our second TV table. So if this one kind of gets a little stale, as we kind of saw in the last frame, uh, we can jump to that uh, other table, because that's where Romil and Raymond will be battling. But on this uh, first table, it's a decider between Jack A and Hitesh. Hitesh. Yeah. Jackie Wee and Hitesh. Yeah, should be. It's been a, it's been a long match this one, but uh, Hitesh, battling it out. I think he's uh, definitely the underdog in this one, knowing that uh, I think Jackie Wee is previous what semifinalist last year and. Uh huh. Yeah. Hitesh is definitely grinding down. Jackie, as you can just see, as we see off table or off mm -hmm. camera, that he's just. He's had his hand, had it in his hands more often than not. <laughs> yeah. I would say. It's been a grind, that's for sure, this this match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jackie's used to, like, free-flowing, and we did see it at the beginning of the match. But you know there is actually a penalty for deliberately time-wasting in this. I don't know if many people know that in snooker, mm. but if you are found to d be deliberately wasting time in a frame, mm -hmm. the frame goes to your opponent. Not just a four-point foul. Oh, just frame. automatic. The whole frame. But, however, it has to be under the discretion of the referee. Oh, okay. So yeah. There's no referee watching this match right no, now, right? No, because so. pretty much when players at the table now the opponent is kind of the referee a little bit as they said in the players meeting that if a player has a red on and they've missed it twice mm -hmm. it is up to the opponent to remind the player that if you miss mm -hmm. the red for a third time it's a frame concession yeah 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 makes sense Hopefully we tuned that up a little bit for you, Richard. But yeah, thanks for the, the, the tips. It's always good. Uh, just to let us know if you know the screen doesn't look that great or the Yeah, it's even better. Yeah, perfect. We'll do our best on our end, but uh, I think you can always turn up the T V on your your sets as well, right? No, that's where I think I think we actually need to <laughs> need to be a little louder sometimes. <laughs> It is tough a little bit. Sometimes we do. Uh, we've got a table right in front of us. It's not our TV table. Yeah, we're, so we're we pretty close to the action. We do want to have a little bit of re respect there. But thanks for letting us know about uh, the volume on the mics. We definitely want to get you guys hearing us loud and clear. Yeah, makes sense. So now, looks like Jackie's got a kind of a tough shot into the left middle pocket. Does he take it on, do you think? I don't know if he sells out much if he if he misses it other than the red that he's attempting. So 
You can also shoot up in the corner and play loud. Yeah, like that. Play two cushions, try to get behind the black or get on the black. Ooh, this is going to be not good for Jackie. It's all tied up at 21. Dang, we got some people subbing in the chat. Hit that like button top right. And then he got perfectly on the black, says Bike Garrett. 800 subs. Yes, indeed. Yeah, sub to us on YouTube. Yeah, pretty tough for Jackie. You can... <laughs> there, you can see him on the side. <laughs> He's feeling the grind in this one, right? Yeah, he's he, he's got to know that he'll get his opportunities in this decider, mm -hmm. and hopefully uh, he can find his groove. Well, let's check in on the other table. We got Raymond and Ramil just started, right? That's correct. I think Ramil is what number five seed in the tournament right now. Yes, he is, and he plays out of Arizona, as we found out when he was in the booth, and Raymond mm -hmm. plays here in the Sunshine oh. State. Yeah, was a, what a shot there from Raymond. We'll tune into this one for a bit. I think the other one's going to get down to the colors, most likely. It's a close one. Good potting here to start from Raymond McCarthy. I was talking to him on the side um, before his match started, and we were saying, "Yeah, one of the uh, one of the nice uh, you know kind of thoughts to think about while you're playing this tournament is a lot of these players are beatable. You know, nobody's really crazy out of the pack, um, but it is really nice when you know you're up against a good player like Ramil, for example, um, to get in amongst the balls, get your 20 break." play an intentional safe and just get out of there you take your points and run don't miss an easy pot you know mm -hmm. and uh if you get kind of off to a good start like that you can really put some pressure on some of these players it can get really tough we saw that earlier i think from the first match from stephen wong he had a um his opponent missed a shot and then he went on a 50 break and played a safety or something or played a long pot that was kind of two-way it's yeah i think it's a it's a good start but uh unfortunate miss there for raymond yeah, and the black. Yeah, and as well, going back to that first match we had on the TV table with Steven and Alexander. Steve, or Alex was actually in, and mm -hmm. he's looking like he could make a good dent, but he just broke down on the, the red, and maybe he just got uh, into his head too much and got ahead of the game because there mm -hmm. was two reds open and two blacks. You know, it's All right, so Ramil's first chance at the table, it looks like. First chance. Red is on into the left corner pocket next, probably. I imagine he'll just do a stun shot. He's just checking to see if it's frozen. I believe it is. Now it looks pretty close, but not quite frozen. Yeah, it's always nice when they're tight to the cushion because the old philosophy is hit uh, object ball and cushion at the exact same time. And that's why that shot was just a little bit more difficult for Ramil. Hmm. So, not the sharpest for either player off the bat, but uh, I think we'll definitely see the standard improve as the match goes on. Both players, I think, know each other fairly well. Yeah, folks saying in the chat that uh, Raymond plays out of California, San Francisco area, looks like. Over at a JS club, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, uh, Ramil was telling me he, when I mentioned Raymond McCarthy, he didn't know who I was talking about, but Raymond was in the tournament last year, so yeah. sometimes, you know, you might just, if you're not playing a certain opponent, but you still with see him in the room, you would be like, ah, that guy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I feel like that in this tournament for sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of familiar faces, but don't necessarily remember everyone's name exactly. Because when you meet yeah. thirty some odd people in one 
you know, one day's worth of time, two days worth of, or one weekend, basically, it's not always easy to keep track of all the names. Man, all these balls look gorgeous though out on the table. Fresh set of 1G balls on every single table for this tournament. Pretty cool. Yeah, great looking conditions in here at Embassy Billiards in San Gabriel, California. Mm -hmm. It's the 2023 United States National Snooker Championships. Tish is coming over to table three. I think he's looking for some kind of piece of equipment. But yeah, I don't know if it's an extension or what. Must be one of those either spiders or extensions. A lot of, a lot of equipment needed for the game of snooker, especially for some of these really long distance shots. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, not always easy to supply the same amount of equipment at every table, so... Yeah, that's what it looks like. Looks like he went to go get the spider, so. Kevin Zong, yes, if you go to cloudsnooker.com, that's where you'll find all the information. The brackets, they were actually just in the round robin. It's day number one. No, oh, Ramil. Ramil's not warmed up yet, it looks like. Even though he's on the cushion, he was still, he'd be first to tell you that he should have made that pot. Maybe we just took it for granted or not quite in the zone. We've got him we've got him uh what do you call it, water logged or computer logged over here watching the screens <laughs> on the little on the little monitor. Yeah, it's it's so easy to make shots in the commentary booth. Maybe you got a little <laughs> uh overzealous a little bit. <laughs> you know, these players and even the pro players over in England. Mm -hmm. On the circuit, they make this game look so easy. Oh so yeah. easy. You know, if you're ever uh, in a snooker room or a pool room and you see a snooker table and you're new to it, just try to uh, put your hand on the table as it is a very tough sport. Hey, what's up? Jalapeno over on YouTube. Thanks for the shout-out. Yeah, we'll definitely play when I come back. You know, you know we're up for a rematch, that's for sure. On the stream too, it'll be it'll be fun. Next time, maybe in November or something, we'll see. And will you be back for the Seattle Snooker Open in March? Oh yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, next year, Seattle Open will be a lot of fun. I think we are planning to have uh, more qualifiers for that this year as well. So hopefully, some of the clubs uh, that are here at this event actually might actually. Uh, um, Help host some of the qualifiers for that tournament. Great, should be should be fun. I think uh, we also have the Washington Snooker League starting back up. I think in the fall, which uh, will feed into the Seattle Open in terms of the seated players, um, as well as adding some of the prize money from the Snooker League. Should be a great time. Great, and I think up in Vancouver, Canada, we mm -hmm. are going to definitely be throwing. Uh, Seattle Snooker Open Qualifier. Our friend Richard Parker. Yes, uh, hopefully you can tell with my twang there might be a little Canadiana in there, and I am from the land of maple syrup. Yes, Canada did have a very rich history. You know, go back to the 1983... Australian Open, mm. and in the final four, there were three Canadians and one Welshman. That was Cliff Dorbin, Bill Orbanick, Kirk Stevens, and Doug Mountjoy. Why, why, why? It was a big question. <laughs> um, now, I think some have said that, yeah, nine ball came over, and it was a lot quicker of a game. Obviously, you can get a lot more tables and space and get people playing. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, it just kind of snooker kind of fell in the background a little bit, as this is just like, as we all know, we love this game. It's the premier <sighs> game. And hmm. you are right, uh, Mike, that the 
the hustling was a part uh, over in North America, that's for sure. But I really don't know exactly the real full reason of why it went down. I don't know, maybe the governing bodies might have been in a bit of a transition phase. Mm. Um, there's a lot of work that does go behind the scenes here. Like, I think Christian is doing a fantastic job with this stream, is just making it look effortless. But uh, obviously, yeah, it's you, a lot guys of work. you guys don't see the work that I see him doing throughout. So, yeah, and, and maybe maybe there was just a little lack of interest. I don't know what they were doing because I just, you know, got into the game maybe about, yeah. we got into the game maybe about 10 years ago back into it like I wasn't involved when I was young when I got in the game I remember seeing it and was excited and then it kind of disappeared from the TV screens uh, gotta so be hard to tell you know so that was a, a tough thing I think if, it, if you know now what is there like 20 ESPN channels in America like there's so many sports channels so many venues that you know you could uh, there's more to watch basically. more to watch yeah, yeah good yeah. point because uh, back maybe in the 90s you know, as Cliff and Kirk and and Ooh. Bill, kind of the downfall was go or the slide was going there. Someone on the Canadian sports networks might have made the decision that like this is not getting the numbers, and mm -hmm, it is mm -hmm. a numbers game. It's all dollars oh yeah. and cents. You know, what's going to sell their product? So, I think uh, Jackie is going to be clearing the balls here, and oh I think that's oh going to oh be oh end of oh frame. <laughs> I think he cleared from the last red down to the pink, it looks like. So with the lead, I think it's going to be match over here. So and <laughs> Nice well, spot sure there. Sure wow. Yeah, handshakes all around. So that was more vintage Jackie there. Sorry, that was a little stall there on frame two. And uh, hello, Mr. Godfrey Chan. Godfrey is a, a great uh, help in the scene up in Vancouver. Really loves the game, and we really appreciate all his help. So... Yeah, I think uh, now that we have the internet, I think we have to thank the internet pretty much for you know the continuing growth of snooker in North America because yeah. people are seeing it. You know, some kid might stumble across this, not sure exactly what it is, but Christian and I will do our best to inform people of what the rules. If they have any questions, they are always more than welcome to ask on the stream because we get seasoned vets to rookies yeah. wondering what's the game about. And obviously there's the easy philosophy of red color, red color, but then there's a lot more. Oh, yeah. A lot of pool players, too, here probably watching. So mm -hmm. It's interesting to learn the game. It's a little bit different, points-based versus just uh, money ball-based, like you see 8-ball, 9-ball, etc. Mm -hmm. But it uh, looks like uh, somebody was asking earlier, is um, is Dharma Him Himnani playing now? Uh, he's actually up next on our main match table. So now that that match has ended with Jackie Wee and Hitesh, I believe Dharma is going to be up next. So we'll tune in over to that table. For now, we got number number five seed Ramil versus Raymond. There's no player to snooze at for sure. I think Raymond made it to the to the quarter. He made it out of the groups last year, maybe to the quarterfinals. I don't quite remember. Mm -hmm. Kind of a back and forth frame this one with Ramil and Raymond, right? Yeah, a few mistakes here and there. Good little sparring match to start things out. Each having a few blows that they're hitting there. <laughs> and you know, I, th I think sometimes just things go in cycles. Like, who would have thought uh, that there would have been such a huge boom in the 80s for the game of snooker in the UK? It was the it thing to do. Mm hmm. Who knows, maybe we're in a resurgence here as I think over 100 countries play snooker. Uh, the viewing figures, as one of our friends says, uh, are massive globally. Obviously, maybe not in the UK as strong as they used to be. Um, and I th the big thing, the huge thing, I think, for this game is going to be getting into the Olympics. If we can get into oh the Olympics yeah. and be on a global scene, mm -hmm. then be seeing it on national networks, and it, it just only you know could do wonders. 
hopefully they can get as well back a World Cup mm -hmm. and give good exposure to that uh, because I know you and I, Christian, in our native countries, me in Canada, you in America, we have discussed about like, well, we need to like somewhat get together a team yeah. from these countries. And you know, once you see a fellow country person performing, you get kind of inspired. No, for sure. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest things is I think snooker, at least historically, has been very heavily only under a few countries, really. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that's why, you know, it's shied away from the Olympics. But I think as more and more countries adopt it and we see more and more of it, it's going to be almost inevitable, I feel like, it's going to get in, in my opinion. I mean, especially after you see a lot of these other sports getting in, um, I'd be surprised snooker wouldn't, wouldn't qualify for the Olympics eventually with, you know, whatever else might be the blockers. Yeah. And, yeah, you mentioned this a lot. A, a chat guest mentioning Pot Black. That was a great show, you know, a half an hour show, and two uh, players would play a frame of snooker, and it was, uh, I think, a 16-player tournament. You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but it kind of every week there was a match and people could tune into, and slowly, slowly it veers down to a champion of mm -hmm. that. Um, oh, look at that pot from Raymond. He's feeling good now. He's on a break of 27. Oh, as I say that, as I say that, no such thing. There's no such thing. Don't even say it, Dave. What, the commentator's curse? No such thing. <laughs> Doesn't exist. We're all at fault about it. <laughs> and unfortunately, he's left... Uh, Still a good break, though. Romeo with an easy starter. Not possible. Looks like the... Uh, only female uh, entrance in this tournament, Frances True, is getting her uh, game face on. She's getting ready. <laughs> you can hear in the background there. She's getting ready. She's. Uh, I think she's going to be up next on the match TV match table, main match table, I guess. Nice that we have two, two TV tables for this tournament, so we can kind of hop back and forth whenever action is low on one of the other ones. So... Yeah, Raymond's going to remember that blue if he loses this frame for sure, I'd say. Because Ramil, the favorite in this one. Mm hmm, being the seated player, but there's a chance for. Uh, yeah, if Ramil steals back the frame, I don't know. Yeah, Safety? Could lay the snooker here, yeah. Yeah. Okay, oh, I think it might have leaked out. It looks awfully close. Ooh. Yeah, I think it's a snooker for sure, but... Oops, sorry. Oh, no. I missed a shot. My apologies. Yeah, it looks like he ended up kicking underneath it and keeping the white down table. <laughs> sorry about that. 20 in it, 35 on the table. Raymond with the lead in this best of three round robin match. Mm, this red is on now. I think both of these players have had a match. Romeo was mentioning when he was in the booth, he was victorious in his first match. I don't know how Raymond did, but all the stats are up there on cloudsnooker.com. Hmm. It's interesting, Ramil didn't take that pot on anyone to play the safety behind the bulk colors. I'm pretty sure, I mean, the clearance was there if he makes that tough red and maybe gets on the blue or the pink. Doesn't need the black if he clears up with a high value color on the red. So, interesting choice. Maybe he's just not feeling quite warmed up yet. So, taking the safer route and maybe trying to force a mistake from Raymond. I think that would be a prudent way to kind of help put more pressure on your opponent. I feel like, oh wow. Got a bad hit on the horn there. <laughs> Very interesting, Richard Parker, that the first episode of Pop Black debuted just as Neil Armstrong was landing on the moon. Hmm. 
have to go back and watch that movie. I've never seen it. Ooh. Just gonna leave the red into the middle. Was the blue gonna come to the rescue? Maybe to the corner. Hmm. If you're Raymond, you take this on, right? Well, he's thinking about it. Uh, three cushion. Red needs to run enough. Yeah, with hampered queuing, I don't think this is an offensive shot for Ramil. That's a shot I'd like to have back, but that is a tricky long red here for Raymond. Yeah, he's taking this on though, I think. Well, actually, no, the, the cross double is also not a bad opportunity. There's a lot of kind of a nice wall with the yellow green up table. Uh oh, is it going to drop in? And the pink to the rescue. Yikes. <sighs> the hand wave. Yeah, great sportsmanship in this game. Looks do happen, but uh, when they do, players will acknowledge it with a, a raise of the hand. So, Ramil definitely in a spot here. It's down 20, in a tough, tough snooker escape. What do you do? Three cushions? Is there even a three cushion? The green is pretty large going this way around this bottom corner pocket. Don't know if you can go one cushion or two. It's too close to the pink. You would be going over the pink, which would be tough, and maybe coming or zigzag top cushion and then right cushion. Yeah, he's gonna tricky. go Z shot here. It looks like it's got to open up a little bit more. It's a tough shot. Definitely gonna be putting it back. Let let's the ball stop rolling. Now he's gonna be careful here because. Now 24 points. Actually, no, he'll, he won't get the 35, so it's, it's good. We did have a scenario earlier where we were talking about it. Um, if there are snookers required and you need... So if you need snookers, you're not allowed to put back the opponent. Correct. And uh, if that does happen and your opponent catches you picking up a cue ball, putting you back, it's actually a foul on, on the person picking up the cue ball because mm -hmm. it's supposed to be played from where it lies. And even if it's still rolling, mm -hmm. and you pick up the cue ball as much as it's not going to come more near. So Raymond is definitely aware of that. Yep. As he's letting that ball just. Uh, oh, is it going to get there? Oof. He almost went three rails. Yeah, that's a tough shot because then the more left you put on that first rail to kind of open up the angle, the, uh, the more straight off it's going to check off the second rail if the spin is still on. So difficult. Difficult escape, so maximum snooker points there for Raymond in terms of the four four point fouls. Only they're only doing yes. three attempts. It right? sounds like yeah, I think it's three attempts, two putbacks. Tried to get a little explanation of that from Alan Morse, but he has got pretty much a hundred and one things that is on the go. Oh yeah. Good to see Alan, though. He's running the tournament. Mm -hmm. So not quite a snooker's required stage for Ramil, but definitely needs needs a color with this red. Yeah, more high-value color for sure. Pink's okay. It's out in the open. Black is kind of just in a tough position up against that top cushion. Yeah, he needs he needs a five, so brown to tie and needs at least a blue, pink or black to win with the points available. Ramil. But uh, if this red goes down, maybe we might be able to clinch this first frame. 
Yeah, this is definitely his, uh, his frame ball here, Raymond. Mm, good pot with the rest. That was nice. Very nice. Yeah, good to see Charles is tuning in from the Hoosier State. Two snookers. The tough part is obviously then he's got to get the two snookers and he's got to run out. And pink and black are in very tough positions. Mm, it might be close on this, but it's going to leak out. pace as that was the yeah just wants to leave it right <laughs> the theme of uh, that last match of just kind of rolling it over and mm -hmm. Hitesh wasn't able to do that against uh, Jack A and unfortunately it kind of costed him he was able to win that frame but Jackie was able to come back in the third and win it super thin on that ball from Ramil uh, the down this yellow's out in the open there might be a opportunity for a snooker here Brown sits in a nice spot. You want to kind of roll forward with the cue ball. Two cushions in behind. Looks like that might be what he's opting to do. Just be careful the yellow doesn't hit the pink and stay held up. Oh, he went to go one cushion. I think he might go in. Yeah, I feel like he needed to go into that left long rail. So That's a concession from Ramil. So Ram Raymond takes the first frame of that best of three. Match leaves one nothing, one more, and he could get a match win, which is important in these sh short sprints. And now we're back to our featured TV table, but Mr. Christian. I uh, might take a little break just to get some lunch. Yeah, sounds good. If you're good. all right, that I'll leave you in the trusting hands of our great audience. So uh, good to yeah, go. It's uh, David Bernie saying I'm going for lunch, but I will be back. So take care, everybody, and enjoy Christian and the great broadcasts. We'll see you, Dave Bernie. Thank you. Thank you. gentlemen Dave Bernie's on his union break it looks like taking his lunch if you guys haven't been to embassy it's a sweet spot sweet setup we've got the cafe right across the street or right across the parking lot as well also owned by uh, our manager here and the defending champion actually Stephen Wong so go check out his uh Cafe Tasty Choice, I believe, across the parking lot from Embassy. Good stuff. Kind of like a Hong Kong style cafe. Pretty good. Uh, Richard Parker. Yeah, looks like Jackie ended up clearing up the colors at the end there. He had the last red and then cleared up all the way down to the black. Actually, cleared up fully. I think he had a 35 break at the end to clinch the decider against um, 
Matesh, I believe. So that match ended, and now we've got in front of us Dharma and I hope I don't mispronounce it. Mr. Oh, let's call him Mr. Zhao. Dharma versus Zhao. Looks like pretty two pretty strong players. Haven't really seen who else is in their group, but uh, Dharma is, I think, number four overall seed. He was a semifinalist last year in the U.S. Nationals. So not a player to snooze at for sure. Well, I think we might have to check back and forth on our... On our table here with um, Ramil and Raymond. So they're kind of getting on with it. They've split open the pack over on their side, so uh, I think yeah. Now Ramil's at the table with an open black and plenty of open reds. So good opportunity to put down a big break. Let's see what you can do. Uh, David Brock asking, uh, can you tell us the seedings or where to find them, please? Uh, yeah, I don't know if the seedings are actually on cloudsnooker.com. I don't believe they are, actually. Yeah, so cloudsnooker.com cloud snooker is what what, uh, what USSA is using for running the tournament, keeping track of the scores, etc. There's a bunch of tablets in the room that the players are scoring on. Um, we did get... I think the players got an email with all the seeds, but uh, maybe I could pull it up or list them off at least for you. From what I understand, Stephen Wong, defending champion, is the f first overall seed. CCU, second overall seed. Ajaya, USSA president, number three seed. Dharma, who's playing at the table now, is number four seed. We got Ramil over here on our second table. He's the number fifth seed. Number five seed, sorry. Uh, Jackie Wee, who we just saw playing on the main table, is the sixth overall seed. Uh, John Poon. Uh, don't know where he's at. I think he might be. Oh, he looks like he's on table ten. I believe he's seventh overall seed. And Liwa Chen, eighth. All right, we're going to get uh, the man, the myth, the legend in the booth with us. We're going to get some help from Sargon Isaac. So we'll set him up. We'll be right back. Ready to go, ready to go. So in the booth, the man, the myth, the legend, Sargon Isaac. Hey How's it going? Guys. I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Okay. Have you had a match yet so far? I huh? have not had a match. I've got a match at 2.30, so I'm waiting for my first match. I think there's a bit of a delay for group matches, so yeah. we'll see what happens shortly. But um, <laughs> Sounds good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've got a I just saw the black mist and it just threw me off a little bit. I wasn't <laughs> expecting that. <laughs> yeah. So hey right guys. now, overall, we've got an uh, overall seed, Dharma, number four overall seed, it looks like, playing on our ma main match table. And we got a pretty spicy match over here, too, Ramil versus Raymond McCarthy. So Raymond took the first game, huh? So yeah, he took the first one. He had a pretty good, I think, 25 break midway through. 
And a couple of missed pots from Ramil that were not characteristic. I think uh, a couple of shots he was on the cushion that uh, you wouldn't expect him to miss. That's the thing, too. I was talking about this with somebody yesterday because it's um, especially um, in these non-heavy scoring games, right? You, If you think about it, when you're missing the seven, it's a crucial pull or any, any colored ball, really, because instead of gaining the points, you essentially lost that in the difference, right? Mm -hmm. So it makes a bit... Well, for example, like if Romel misses an easy black, then you're giving not only... Are you losing out on the potential seven, but... Um, then you're giving the ball, ball back to the opponent who then are potentially obviously use that easy ball to make the points as well too. So especially in these mm -hmm. lowest pointing ga scoring games, it's really crucial that you get those balls in. Even if you lose position on the next ball, object ball, right? Yeah, just you're take better, the points. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're better off, better off taking the points. I mean, obviously you want to continue your break as much as possible and everyone, most players are looking to do that. But I mean, it's crucial that you don't give the ball, ball back with an easy opportunity to break away with another break as well. Uh, I, I didn't see all of the first game too. I saw bits and bobs, but... But yeah, so we'll see what happens here. I think uh, there's a little bit of a lead by Romel too. The balls are open. Blue's a bit of a way too, but um, Romel is a really good friend of mine. So I'm, I'm fully like capable of him. Raymond, I know we're pretty well too from California Snooker as well. Nice. Um, both good players, very good players. I haven't played Raymond that much, to be honest with you, apart from little tournaments here and there. Um, but yeah, it's it's Romel is honestly one of the like most... I think there's a few players that tactically like mm -hmm. um, are like elite. When I say tactically, like defensively, safety wise, and can just go back and forth. And um, Ramel is one of them. Um, he's not. He he can be heavy scoring at times too. Um, but defensively and tactically wise, if he's in it, it's like. And I'm talking like I've played sessions with him and no easy shots, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, he is more capable. Can more, definitely capable of scoring. Uh, but tactically and defensively, he's uh, very, very, very strong. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to see some names who see B B Roy. What's up, man? And then Manny too. Good to see you guys. Good to Manny. It's a shame you're not here. Also, um, hopefully we'll see a lot of you guys come out soon. But yeah, this is my actually first nationals in quite some time, right? Quite some time, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's nice to be out here and see the familiar faces and all that stuff too. And, and thank you for the setup that you have done yeah, um, and all the work you guys are doing too. And hopefully it's really exciting, obviously, because when we've got this many players, like what, 64 players? Yeah, it's a huge field. There, yeah, and a lot of people have been asking me previous years, you know, especially because the last time it was here, um, Daniel Bush from POV Paul, he streamed it. Mm. And that was the first time we met, and then he got heavily into pool too. I think the snooker thing was just a one-off for him. Um, gotcha. Okay. Okay. But then a lot of nationals, and you know, like Manny did. Manny had his events streamed as well. Like there was opportunities there too. But a lot of the other events, unfortunately, there were just you know, really. I think majority of the events that I, I played in the remaining years wasn't, apart from you know yours last year, mm -hmm. um, wasn't streamed. Unfortunately, and there's a lot of people that really don't know this event existed like i didn't know at one particular time like 12 years ago right? i had no idea until i met a giant and then he informed me about mm. this one too mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. hopefully beautiful opportunity to kind of just share what's out there too and now that they've opened it up as well are the green green card holders now yeah green is just an fyi for two now it's it used to be a citizen requirement which there was a lot of pl snooker players that were citizen Christ too but generally it's really popular i've noticed in like for example like uh, the, like Indian community, like Middle Easterns, uh, mm -hmm. especially like f people like myself from England originally, or like U UK, different parts of Europe. Um, different. There's a lot of communities that you know they come here. They obviously played snooker back home and just mm -hmm. this, and, mm -hmm. and really didn't know it was an option here because Paul is kind of blasted everywhere, right? Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I mean, even Paul too is kind of struggling to get out there as well. But that's a different story. Um, but yeah, no, it's really nice to. Um, really nice to be out here see some familiar faces and some of the um some of the familiar faces i've literally not seen since last time i was here in embassy really um, wow. yeah there was i was talking to some of the gentlemen earlier and um and uh the last time i was here which is um when i won a trophy here the three people that presented me the trophy two of them have passed away oh really? uh, yeah wow. yeah so tom collins was one and hugh brown was the other Tom Collins uh, Sr.? It's Tom Collins Sr., mm. yeah. And his son is here too, which is nice to see his face as well. But yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I know I'm rambling on a little bit, but it's, <laughs> nice, like, it's nice to like be here. And thank you guys for all the messages too. I'll, I'll, um, 
I'll, I'll continue sharing it as well. If you guys have any, and I know also too, it's very difficult coming from a pool scene too. Um, and then there's a lot of like uh, nuances with the snooker rules too. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. if you guys have any questions too in the stream, right? Like it's just a little bit um, confusing in terms of like, you know, free balls, for example, what, which was yeah. stuff like that. Especially fouls. Yeah. Yeah, Especially yeah. fouls and stuff like that too. Because it's so familiar for us. So we'll probably just shout it out and not realize that some of the stream knows. But please... Please feel free to just throw some questions in there. Yeah. Um, there's another solid player too, Raymond Fung too. I wish he was here as well. Raymond, I was asking about you. I was hoping you would be here, but I know you've got family, family obligations too. But I d I'm a phenomenal player, Raymond Fung. Oh, yeah. Um, Runner yeah. up last year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's an absolute machine. Um, and I heard he was sick last year too during the finals. That true? <laughs> yeah, he had a cold, I think, during, during the this whole la last two days. <laughs> he, he would, he would, we would go to New York. He said, like, yeah, Sargon, I'm not playing too much. I'm not playing too well. First match in the group match, you'd get like an 86 or something. Yeah. In <laughs> okay, Raymond, you're not playing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Raymond. I hope you can hear me, Raymond. I'm only kidding, bud, but... Um, He's a really, really nice guy too. Great player. No, and that was the one game, thing yeah. too, hopefully you'll see Christian is like, mm -hmm. as this keeps repeating and year to year, really it's not, it's, um, it's more like kind of a friends thing, right? Um, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's more of a friends thing um, where like, you know, you get the opportunity to see a lot of familiar faces that you've not seen in a long time. We will mm -hmm. have a laugh. Like you probably saw us yesterday. Like I was literally rolling on the floor a few <laughs> times because <of laughs> me and Romel were just cracking jokes nonstop. So, but yeah, you, wait, you're here? No, he's in. The, he's in. The, he's in the chat. I think. He's oh, I yeah. no no yeah. Hi Raymond. Sorry, I saw your message. Sorry, I thought you meant I'm here. Like you're in the snooker room. I was about to come over and give you a big hug. But next time I see you, God willing, sir. But yeah. Anyway, back to the match. Sorry, I know uh, I was rambling on a little bit. But no, no, good stories. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then um, a lot of history, right? A lot of room, history. Yeah. yeah, and did um. I saw Romel was on here too and he had the opportunity to talk about his place like he's been yep. my queue actually funny enough was over there with him um, he's got an you know, Arizona snooker table four star tables too you guys should check it out it's a beautiful beautiful club um, and it's, it's funny too because there's some people that have you know these snooker facilities right around the corner from like you guys right you guys have mm -hmm. a box and stuff like that and I'm when I was, you know, moved here from this uh, from England, I was itching for just a decent 12 foot snooker table. Yeah, yeah, there's not a lot. There's not a lot, unfortunately, you know. So, but we've got California snooker, got Arizona as well. When I fly out there and stuff like mm -hmm. that too. But no, it's definitely growing. It's yeah, definitely growing. Yeah. yeah, it's and then um, Fremont as well, California Billies as well. They've got a few now. They got three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so hopefully it just picks up now because it's 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 nice to see so many faces and ever and, and all, a lot of these players are strictly snooker players too like they, they've got a huge passion for the game as well mm -hmm. so but anyway um who do we have in the stream if you guys have questions or comments in the stream please feel free to shout out shout out to christian and these guys doing for such a great job for the stream like the quality is immense too i was like yeah not bad right those. cameras yeah, are nice yeah. definitely not bad yeah yeah um so we'll we'll, we'll switch, switch over to the Table one. We got some people asking for table one. Table one. Okay. Yeah. So which was this one? This is Dharma. Okay. I don't know if I can pronounce his first name, but Mr. Yeah. Zhao over there. We should switch between the two, I think, because yeah. it's going to be a lot closer. There's, and then the other game's got drama as well, I think, a little bit. Um, yeah, it looks like Ramil's got the initiative in the, the second Yeah, so they're frame. in the safety battle, yeah. <sighs> so just as an FYI for you guys, right, the, first, the two tables that you see... Um, if you see you guys missing fairly easy balls, right? The two tables that you do see, like uh, Christian's kind of pointing out too, yeah, these are two. very tight pockets, right? Like they're, they're extremely cut. Uh, they, they've cut very small. The rest of the six club tables that Christian's kind of panning to as well, yeah. um, they are um, club size pockets, right? So it's a lot more lenient, you know, especially off the cushions and stuff like that too. But uh, yeah, um, that was a great shot right there by they will. But yeah, anyway, I'll get back to commenting too. Please, if you guys have questions, let me know. Um, also, you can message me on Facebook as well. Steven, shout out to Steven Wong too, who's behind us as well. Like all the hard work he's done. Yeah. Guy's an absolute machine, not just on the table, but all the work he's done in terms of preparing the tables, the balls. He shows Guys. up at 7 a.m. today, yeah. warms up a bit, knocks two matches out of the park. And yeah, then I don't believe him. Now he's running the tournament, running the club, everything. Yeah, yeah it's pretty you good. You don't believe him. He's like, I'm tired, I haven't played. Same same as Raymond Fong. I'm tired, I haven't played. He nah. comes on the table, gets... 60 breaks, 70 breaks, like it's nothing. On a tight table, too. So, um, Someone's asking, yeah. when, when are you playing next, it looks like? Um, uh, I honestly don't know. Oh, sorry, uh, 2.30 I'm playing, but I, but I, d but there is a bit of a delay. Yeah, um, We might be putting you on one of these tables, I'm pretty okay. sure. I okay. just don't know. I think up next on the m on this main match table is going to be, I think, Francis Cho and Jack Kung. Oh, that'd be a good Previous match. champion. Yeah, so Jack Kung's a phenomenal player. Um, yeah. I don't know how much he's been playing. Um... 
but yeah, still previous service. champion it's yeah. not nothing it's news at and uh francis the only only female signed up for the event yeah yeah cool. yeah and i actually met her at one of the pool events too so oh yeah that's right yeah yeah so very cool We'll and we'll try uh, not to, Dave. I mean, we're, we've uh, got two matches on too, and people are asking for both too as well. So we'll, we won't switch off every second, we promise. But we'll try and focus on two of the key moments as well, like especially towards the end of frame and stuff like that as well. Yeah, we uh, got to see the end of this. I think uh, Ramil just played kind of a weird shot. So Dharma up against it a little bit in this. Um, I'm not sure who I'm playing, Roy. To be honest with you. Um, I'm no, uh, no idea. Schedule somewhere around here. I don't know where it is. Oh, is it right here? This yeah, one? It's over there. This one? Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. That's good. Is it touch screen? Is it? Oh, nice. No. no. Uh, so, oh, sorry. Looks like you're going to be playing against... Wen Shin Jiao. Uh, I'm not sure yeah, who that Wenshin is. Yeah, Wen Shin Jiao. From New York? Yeah, I'm not sure who that is, to be honest with you. Yeah, we got a lot of people from all over the country here. It's a pretty big event. Like I said, 64 players. Pretty cool. So it looks like uh, Raymond and um, Ramal are on the colors, raining colors, and it looks like yeah, it looks these two. Uh, uh, there's a score there. Yeah, so that one's. We can switch back to that in a little bit or something whenever it's worth. Uh, so who's Sam playing, Roy? Sorry, or am I playing Sam? I'm not playing Sam if that's the question. Uh, or is um, s the the schedule, I believe, is on Cloud Snooker as well. If you guys want to see the schedule, yeah, you can see the, and the scoring there. as well. The groups, the scoring, and everything on Cloud Snooker. Roy, message me if you. I'll, I'll send you the links. Yeah. Message me on WhatsApp or something if it's easier for you. Okay, so this game. Let's back to the snooker a little bit. Um, so for me, I mean, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, you so playing this red off of the, off the other red? No, I would actually or try and cut the red in. I think the red goes. Yeah, on the bottom sorry, red. it goes. I mean, the the cue ball position and just screw back. No, I wouldn't even go for that top red. I'll go for the bottom red. For the bottom, it's yeah, a shot to nothing, kind of. Yeah, because if you play that boss, uh, the natural angle is going to pass the blue and the pink on the right hand side of it. If mm -hmm. you make it, you have the black to the center. If you don't make it, you're safe, right? So yeah, you got to hit it higher. Pace see, that's the only though. problem with that, right? Mm -hmm. You'd rather you. He got a little bit fortunate. He plays the red in the middle, but you'd ra you have to play that on the thinner side because then you naturally go up the table. Um, and if you miss it, it it's a kind of a negative shot too if you play it, anticipate playing it a bit thinner. But at least then you don't leave the cue ball this side or in the balls. And he got a bit fortunate really because those two tied up, which unless I don't know, it's a I'm looking with my pool eyes here. It's probably it's a plan. It's a plan, I yeah, think. Yeah. But this is a probably a straight in red, which might be a pretty high percentage shot for... Yeah, the only problem here is just the, 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 the position, right? So um, unless he's looking just to collect points. Yeah, I mean, the, the pink was definitely available off of yeah. this. So, I think the plant all day. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, know. it's pretty close to the pocket. I know it's they're tighter pockets, but see, the problem is you miss it, right? The then you're leaving. You have no idea where that second red's gonna go. That's one. Yeah, you and the second piece angle. is you're leaving that top red open, right? Because you're gonna most like he's most likely gonna play for a color. Yeah, right. Screw so back so he's gonna screw back. But now if that doesn't go, oh, I mean, green. Yeah, I, you got to roll it behind the green here, I believe. Unless you can see the pink. I think you can't, though. It's very close. Yeah, yeah. I mean, rolling behind the green is the right shot here. I mean, you're so behind only by a couple points, so it's still anybody's frame. Exactly, yeah. But pressuring I mean, your opponent, that red is few. wide in the open, right? Yeah, and I think the other thing is, too, here is, like you said, right, the big point is it's not necessarily if he fouls us, but the fact that the red's in the open, right? Mm -hmm. So he doesn't want to... So we do have a three-miss three rule in effect as well. Um, my yeah, understanding. three attempts. Yeah, so the reason they did that is, is because, it, well, it's challenging to do without a ref, and we do have refs later, so later on coming as well, just there's a lot of group yeah. matches happening. But, um, but yeah, there is, is, it's just on saving as well. Like this, There has been situations where person person could like potentially try and miss right oh so did he hit i think he hit it did he hit it it was Ooh, uh, it looked it really close yeah i think he i think he hit it thin it's just a bit difficult for me to see on the side yeah yeah dharma's just getting to the table so i think no so foul. he just naturally come round for the blue uh, it's a little bit short. short but unless the yellow goes Do you go for black to play position or brown to play position yeah brown on the right hand side and then yeah. on the right side yeah i mean he's probably gonna have to do that yeah, there's no point in trying to just take the high value points. It's yeah, unless he pulls it back, I think. Oh no, I see. Yeah, 
Green. Well, he went round. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. I didn't, I didn't see that angle. Yeah. Green is really the only tough ball here for the clearance. Yeah. Well, the thing is, too, as well, where the blue and the pink are, right? Mm hmm It's... It's kind of, it's, it's almost like a... It's like a half table pattern almost instead yeah, of a full table, right? Yeah, yeah, and not just that. It's almost like a wall, right? Because yeah. what he could do is get yellow right now, leave the white where the yellow is, and or look to push the green behind. Or So he's going to go for the black, get the points, get the yellow. Yeah, this is good. Now I just dropped the yellow in, but I, I mean... He doesn't need black for the, for the clearance, right? He just needs, what, blue... Yeah, but I don't know if green... I mean, to play green, he's got to be perfectly on it, which is basically, like, right next to the middle bag, but to the right of it, right? So... Single looks... Can you drop in behind it here, maybe? Uh, the problem is you can drop behind it, but it's not that easy on this table the center. But he did do that. That's a good shot. Uh, yeah. These shots on this table are pretty tricky, right? So, so I mean, if he gets the green, he needs... What did we calculate? He needs up to the, the blue. Yeah, he's on a break of 10 now, I believe. Yeah, see, the, the those shot, shots on yeah. these tables are tough, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'd almost wanted to take the double on instead of the... Yeah, I think it, but I think you were right. I think it was actually not as hard as we anticipated. Just missed it, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so I think, he, see, that's the problem with the going for the green, right? Is you open up the table now. So now if he makes this green, so he's a potentially away, right? Yeah. So, I mean, this is not an easy buy a shot by any means. you just got to... Looks like he's stunning it. You sh should probably just roll it through for the brown. Let's see what he does here. That's a good shot. See, the problem no, is with stunning roll, it. Yeah, yep. you have to... You you do that on, on, on a slicker cloth for sure. But yeah, on yeah. This cloth, I think you Assuming gotta, you, you missed the blue. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, agreed, agreed. It's like a stun run through kind of mm -hmm. across. Yeah. Just doesn't quite move enough with that level of queuing. I don't know. Um, though it looks like on the second table, Ramil's getting down to it. Let's have a look on this. Uh, since it's kind of framed, can we switch to the second table real quick? Yeah. After this, this must be close. This pot looks <laughs> a little, little hampered. Just make sure there's no. No. Oh, foul we just situation. made a beautiful blue. We might just made a group group blue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's. That's good. Let's check over here. Yeah, we just made a beautiful long blue. I don't know how much. Yeah, he's in it. It's his. I think that was frame ball. That was frame ball. Yeah. So, I mean, at this point, just just keep it away from the black, right? If you miss it, keep it away from the black. Yeah. Nice blue in the frame, or no? No, no, because okay. he only needs one, right? He so only needs one, yeah. But we, see, the problem is here. Can we switch back real quick to there? Yeah. Just to quickly see. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to get the black off the cushion. Oh, it's right? 21. It's going to be end of frame, mostly. He's, so just as a rule, you, I think you can play up to any three snooker difference greater than that than his end of frame. So for yeah, he just wants... For the group stage, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he just wants to keep the distance here at this point. So we can go back to the other stream. I'll be very surprised if Raymond gets the two snookers with the black on the cushion, right? Mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. so clearance opportunity for yeah. Mr. Zhao here. Oh, well, that's perfect. Yeah, bang perfect on the blue. He might be a little bit too far unless he pulls it back and plays the pink in the right. Got to uh, stroke it well. Yeah. You can you can hold it, I think, still on this cloth. Depends how slick it is right now. Oh, oh I didn't like that. He kind of decelled, right? Yeah. He's on it, though, actually. So there was he a little bit it. too much angle then, unless he pulled it back more and stunned it less, right? So Yeah, yeah. I felt like a decel on that stroke. Like yeah, no, I, think I think I agree with you, yeah. Maybe just uh, thin this in. Thin to win. Yeah, could do. But if looks like it's on. Oh, it's the draw! <laughs> no way! Oh, it's actually not that bad. Look at that. Yeah. Drama. Doesn't need the black though. Was that his frame ball? No, I think he needs the black. He does need the black. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, he yeah. was twenty something. This is not an easy shot on this table too. So, I like potting this at pace. Yeah. No hesitation. Yeah. Don't roll it. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. What a great shot! Wow. wow. So big potting here from. Dai Wei Xiao. Let's go back. It's like they yeah. are just playing on the pink here in this frame. So just to give people a heads up, right? I mean, who's fairly new to snooker too? So there's 21 points in it, right? Pink is worth six. Black is worth seven. If there was a foul on the pink, it's worth six points. So basically, one foul would make 19 points, right? So mm -hmm. 13 plus the f one foul. So 13 on the table. 13 audible, on the right? table. One foul is worth six points. Two fouls, obviously, is worth 12 points, so increments of six, right? Because you're on the pink. Because you're on the pink, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Just what he, what Raymond is trying to do here is he's trying to get the blackout 
or keep the distance of the cue ball, which I'm not a big fan of right now. He should be no. trying to get the black out. Or the roll the pink up to the black so Ramil's forced to exactly, bust it open exactly, and, yeah. and get the black off the cushion because exactly. there's nowhere to play behind, right? It's yeah. too close. So we'll see. I think, I mean, if, if, Raymond, if Ramil should, uh, that's the right shot. Yeah, just so roll you it. just keep rolling it. But I don't like the safety, though. There's no need to play safe for him, right? Just mm -hmm. keep rolling it. Just to keep trying to soft roll it over the back. So yeah, the one pocket, just roll it up to the pocket and force your opponent to pot it. Yeah, see, he gave him an angle to open up the black there. You don't uh -huh. need to do that. So now the same thing is just roll it in and leave the cue ball on the bottom on the by on the bottom of the screen, right? Just yeah. No need to hit it hard. There you go. That was a little hard too in the pink. Yeah. He Again, yeah. Hard. Again, he has an angle, right? Mm -hmm. You can leave mm -hmm. the pink safe and just. Yeah, I think you're right. You got to keep the you got to keep the ball. So he's just trying to get it out. Pink. He's got it. No, he it is. And you got to hit it harder too. So if it makes contact, you you adjust it, right? So I mean, he might be playing to drop in behind it. It looks like there might be a tiny gap if the black is not fully touching. I don't know if I like this as much. Yeah. See, the problem is there now. Now he has the cross bank, right? Yep. So I'm using my pool terminology, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's... That's going to go in. Ooh. Oh, nope. That's going to no, be no, end of frame. frame. Yeah, end of frame. All right. So a decider coming up on our second match table. Ramil, fifth overall seed in the tournament. And uh, back to Dharma, number four seed. I was speaking to Dharma earlier. <laughs> He's like, I'm not playing too well. You know, like, I just feel like I could be playing a bit better. I was like, you know, how'd you do? He's like, oh, I got a 40, 225, 30. I'm like, I think you'll be fine, dude. You'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be okay. Just keep playing. So, anyway... Yeah, he's got uh, maybe maybe that high standards from last year's uh, semifinals wants to do do better than that, and it's a tough field this year for sure. Very tough yeah, field, yeah. very tough field. There's a lot of solid players too, and their first time here as well. Uh huh. Um, there's a lot of players from like I think they've played in Pan Am previously. Okay. It's gonna be. Who are the who are the players to look out for? Who are you looking out for? <sighs> so I don't. So I can't really give high names because I don't know everybody here, right? It's yeah. been such a while yeah. too. But definitely the names to watch out for. Obviously, Ramel, one. Ramel, um, yeah. Steven, two. Mm -hmm. And then this is no order, right? Like yeah. when I say one yeah. or two, right? Um, uh, Obviously, the definitely, definitely Dharma, too. Yeah, definitely Dharma is, is what a potential. I'd say Andy Number well. one seed, Andy. Andy McClowski, very okay. good player. Um, so Ajay is always, a, you know... Don't let uh, uh, Jai is it's, it's, he's a unique person. Super it's consistent. Super right? consistent. Um, he's number three seed overall. Looks he's like he's number three seed probably. Then okay, that makes sense. It doesn't I surprise think, me. Uh, a player that a lot of folks are looking at is uh, Renat. I Renat think. too. He was the other one. Yeah, he's unseeded in this tournament. So yeah, and I think the seeding thing can you know throw people off a little bit too. Sure, sure. Consistent, right? But but yeah, definitely. Um, I was playing with him yesterday, and he is you know. Dialed in? Dialed in, yeah. He's playing That's very good. strong, very strong. So, But, yeah, there's a lot of good players, too. So like I'm looking around, too. Jack over there, too. Mm -hmm. We've got um, some previous national pl champions here, too. Um, oh, you got CC as well? CC too. And CC too. He's, you know, he's, he's hungry for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's long overdue, too, yeah, to be honest yeah. with you, you know? So he's had his chances as well. And oh, um, yeah, Darren. Really nice guy. Darren as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Darren as well. And I'm looking at some of these other players, too, like... Um, just looking around real quick, there's a, there's a lot of solid players. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I think you. So a bit, I mean, just as a reference, right? Like if you win this tournament, um, you're gonna ha you're gonna have to be kind of consistent, right? It's a 64 players, no oh, sure. anything, and they're not particularly long races either, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, what a pot there from Dharma. Yeah, David, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I didn't even think about Darren Tooney sat a few seats away from me too as well. I'm looking around the room. I was like, who do I see? That you know, <laughs> and um, but yeah, Darren is absolutely up there um and there's a lot of guys from new york to um locally as well some local players as well so i hate to say this because actually i probably shouldn't have said this because i knew i was going to miss somebody like renato who's clearly probably one of the <laughs> top so um but yeah and and then darren also but yeah it's going to be a really strong tournament so i'm excited to just be back and yeah, just see something else. So yeah and all right we'll try mike we'll try christian too you know <laughs> The sleeper pick, don't, don't the worry. The sleeper, the sleeper lefty. You, you there you go. Lefties, you, can, you know, you never know about lefties, right? <laughs> you leave them open and they just pump a century. Like, it's just something about lefties, you know? Something about it. 
I've never met Mike actually. I've seen him on the streams and I've seen like you know pictures and stuff like that. But I'd love to stop by Seattle one of these days too. It's been a little bit crazy for me the last few years, but oh, yeah. I'd love to check out your place one of these days for either a snooker tournament or even a pool tournament too. So yeah, we got to think uh, Seattle Open is going to be our big tournament next year. We're trying to have that as like a yearly a snooker tournament thing or a pool thing. Yeah, snooker tournament okay. in, keep in me March. Posted. Yeah, keep me posted. I'd love to come by. Yeah, we're gonna try to host uh, possibly some qualifiers coming up. That's awesome. Um, you know, maybe some neighboring clubs, some clubs that are here represented. Maybe one in Arizona, maybe something in California. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. And uh, we're also trying to start the uh, Washington Snooker League. We've already started Washington Snooker League, uh, and that's gonna be kind of the main feeder into the Seattle Open, just to get uh, you know more prize money in and more players involved. So that's awesome. Well, yeah. no, we, we I, I personally, and I know a lot of other people appreciate like all the effort you're going to like running stuff like this too. I wish we had stuff like that around me. Unfortunately, we're just not even just in, you know pool hall, unfortunately. Um, yeah, we're yeah. just like pool leagues. And and don't get me wrong, these guys are great to me. Like Tony Bush and a lot of the people at Diamond Billiards too, like the pool hall and stuff. They're really, really good to me. Um, but I just don't have a snooker table there, you know. Mm -hmm. So they they used to have a golf table actually, like a like a, I think it was like a seven eight foot golf table, which I'd yeah, actually practice yeah. snooker on with snooker balls. Just because that's, that's all you have, but right? Yeah, that's all I have. But yeah, one day, hopefully, a lot of players put some uh, additional snooker players in. <laughs> yeah. So what time's your game, Christian? Have you played yet? Uh, no, I'm in, I'm in actually the last group of the event, so I'm gonna be I think second to last match of the day. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure who's gonna be playing where or what, but uh, I think I've got another. Uh, Twenty odd matches, I think, before I play, and I think today's only a one match. You got one match today. I got one match yeah, too. Okay. Yeah, so it's one very weird feeling, right? Like normally two you tomorrow. play two, and then you got one to wrap up. But yeah, we're in the yeah. other reverse, right? One, yeah. and then we get two. So, which I understand why that's happening. It's just you know very different. So, yeah, Mike saying he'd love to have you over at Seattle. Oh, I'd love to go yeah. to see you guys. Yeah, no, it's um, I was actually um, I saw you guys' recent post too, where you had a bunch of the pool guys out there as well, like hitting us snooker balls too. I'd, yeah, just oh to yeah. Stop by. It's only just started recently getting into pool too. Really like it as well. Um, yeah, we had a uh, who was it? Uh, up and coming player, um, snooker player, or pool, player? Oh, pool player, Sophia Mast. Yeah, young yeah, yeah, girl yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. She she was playing on the snooker table. She's starting to get a little addicted. It's like, oh, her flight's got to go, and she's like, well, you know, my bags are over here. You <laughs> can go grab them for me, right? I got to play another frame. And I'm like, okay. She's starting to get a little hooked. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Tyler Steyer, Margaret Steyer, were there. They were doing a clinic and. We gave uh, we gave Tyler this a uh, 10.5 millimeter tip uh, Qtech uh, carbon fiber shaft, kind of designed for playing snooker, and he starts knocking balls in with all the side he wants and all this stuff. He's oh like, oh, yes. I'm a little dialed in with his deflection. Maybe I'll play snooker a little bit. I'm like, okay. So what do he uh, what does he play with right now? Cause is is it carbon fiber too? He plays with a yeah. So, so Tyler's playing. Uh, with Predator, he's sponsored by Predator. Oh, so he's, he's playing with a okay. Predator Revo shaft, I believe. Okay. I think 12.4. And I, I so was talking to him about some of the stuff and found it very interesting because. Uh, I'm of the philosophy that I like to play with a little bit harder tip, typically, yeah. right? And he needs, he's saying, yeah, all the top pool players, they're all playing with harder tips, and they're also all playing with almost, you know, you talk about the radius of the of the tip, kind of the curvature of the top of it, right? And uh, a lot of the pool players are playing with a lot more flat of a tip than you might think. Everybody's yeah. always saying, you know, you should go dime yeah. and whatnot radius, and it uh, seems like a lot of the players are actually, you know, they're, they're so good, their timing is so good. It's actually easier for them to control the feel of the shot if they're kind of have like a flatter tip. So they're playing with almost like a quarter radius. It's like really, yeah, really flat. I like flat. that actually. That's and a harder tip. tip. Yeah. Yeah. So I like it. You saw mine yesterday when mm -hmm. we, I think we were you were placing your stuff. Yeah. So mine's flat around the sides and then domed kind of at the top too, but not yeah. uh, almost like obviously not 100 percent flat. But mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. I kind of like that too. And I've noticed too a lot of snooker plays, including as well, going hard tip. To yeah. With you. Yeah, for sure. It's just something about the reaction. Like it feels like a soft tip can sometimes get muddy. Almost. Yeah, yeah. You don't get the feedback quite as quite feedback as for sure. Yeah. And sometimes when you feel like you're putting something off center, you feel mm -hmm. like it's actually throwing it more. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of gripping in a weird way. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, it's. I mean, it ultimately comes down to preference, realistically. But uh, it's interesting to learn about what a uh, you know pull, pulling down the veil and seeing what's behind the scenes from a lot mm -hmm. of the players when you actually talk to them. It's pretty cool. One day, Michael. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll. I'd love to ch keep me. Please go open in that. Um, wow. Keep me open in that sh snooker open. I'd love to see if that will work and I can get out there. But yeah, that was a great hot shot by Dharma. Yeah. It's such a challenging thing too because it's such a diff. I mean, the shot was great, but just to control the white is very yeah. difficult in that cluster, right? So now he's probably going to have to go back up table. Yeah. So another thing I've been trying to get used to is the uh, over at Ox we have the super fine cloth. We've had the number ten for the past year, so a lot more slick and smooth, uh, but fast as well. Fast, exactly. So it's a lot different of a style of play. It feels like, you know, e especially with really tight pockets, you can really just cue the ball pure 
and just clean, even though the pockets are tight, you can kind of still, you know, get around the you table don't and make a lot of shots. You don't have to force it, basically. You don't have to force it, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so it feels a little different on this table because a little bit bigger pockets is a trade off, but slower table, a little bit more reaction, actually, with the yeah. other 6811. You can actually get the ball to zip, like, sharper a little more. Mm hmm. Um, so it's a little, it's a little different, uh, but yes, just something to adjust to. It's uh, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, when you're, I mean, I I can understand the adjustment being a bit, a little bit odd for you, right? When you're going for a, from a table like that with you know the speed and then this, I mean, for me this these cloths feel fast because what I'm used to, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I fully understand if you're going from cloth like that to basically what you're referring to too as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely require more um. A lot of this is controlling the cue ball, right? Especially it when is, you're trying yeah. to break world. The whole game starts to become almost more like pool, where it's like, you know, you're playing on a bar box. It's, it's not hard to make a shot anywhere on the table. It's about where you put the white. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of what this becomes as well, with with a little bit bigger pockets, yep. more potting ability of all these players. It's just uh, play the position. <coughs> so interesting stuff. So a little bit of a clustered frame here. I think this black is what's going to be next. You're playing to open up this red. I mean, at this well point, right, just rail. take the points, take maybe, the points. Uh, and then you can play that red on the left if you can see it. Don't get fancy, just make the ball. Um, is it that? Nice shot. Yeah. So I don't think he went far enough to... See, what would have been nice is if he went a little bit further and you play that yellow, by the red by the blue, right? And you push mm -hmm. it up the table and then you put the white behind the green, but I don't think... He's looking at it now. Yeah, you get back to kind of a standard... Exactly, yeah. Game. You want to... You and yeah, and you're taking control of the game, right? You're putting the cue ball behind the green, yep. which gives you an opportunity to, to kind of get the ball back in a prime position too as well. It's so, it looks like Raymond or something's on a break, is he? Let's go check over our second table. Ooh, Raymond's got a 24 so far. So 20 points up against Ramil, but uh, he's looking at a three ball plant maybe? I don't think he's going to take that. Unless they're dead. No, I think he's... Worth. I think if the bottom red goes... Clean, yeah, you can't go for that three because you'll leave the cue ball down here. Yeah, the right. bottom red, if it's on, though, it's a shot to nothing, right? Yeah, absolutely. I would hit it on the thinner side, too, to yeah. ruin the plan. Yeah, yeah. You know, and get the cue ball up at the top, so... Which I think he's going to do. Well, let's see. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's gonna so he's going to hit the yellow. The yellow. <sighs> which actually is not too bad. Yeah, nothing on. See, the problem is he's forcing him to take the red by the black. Mm-hmm. And then the other problem is that, well, he Romel has to hit it in a way that's going to open up those bottom two. Yeah, it's, right? it's tough. I mean, I don't think you can go two cushions unless you really hit it thick. Go around the black two cushions. You want to start getting to the point where you get the cue ball closer to the brown spot. So you take away the left edge of the pack, right? Correct, yeah. And then you can force the player to have to either come with the shot or, or somehow get out of... You know, there's a lot of traffic on the right-handed side of the table. So just get up to... Shoot the gap between green and brown somewhere in that area. If you get the cue ball there, even though you can see all the reds, it's going to be tough to escape if you can't see the left edge of the pack. Oh, red is on. Wow, Raymond pushes in. Yeah, he's, he's queuing well, Raymond, too. And Ramal is a very solid player, too, so he's not really giving him any chances here. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be interested to see if he goes to the green or the blue. Oh, he's going for the black. I'm not sure if I like that shot, to be honest with you. No, you it's have a very it's a yeah, it's a very risky shot. Yeah, um, you have plenty of reds to play for. Just use green, stun one cushion into the little gap area between the rail and the and the pink or something like that. Yeah, I think green is the right shot. Yeah, green. Um, but you know, if he drops it in, I guess I'm I'm wrong, right? So the thing is, too, it's a it's a kind of if he makes it, you know, obviously the plus seven too, and he's away on a break, so this is a yeah. big shot. Higher risk. If not, he leaves it for a mile. Higher risk, high reward. Oh, he hit it hard. So let's see where it went. Ooh. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. I think the red yeah. goes. There's one red that goes to the right for Stun sure. Stun into the red by the p and open up the pink. Eight. Risky shot there, but uh, he's going for it. He figures he's got to go for it against Ramil, I guess. Yeah, you have to go for it. I mean, the natural angle is as long as he pushes out that red a little bit more and the white moves a little bit more north, he should have a shot on the pink. Oh, he hit it hard. Oh, he got away with it, though, I think. Oh, I, didn't I like don't know that. why he did, yeah, why did he s uh, screw it back? I was even going to ask him about that. Just do a, s a short screw off of the red and play for blue. Just play high on the blue. Yeah, you could have done that too. Or just stunned it into the red and play the pink yeah. to the center, right? Yeah. After that black too, I mean, that's it's kind of a yeah. tough feeling, right? So, see, this is the thing about Ramel, right? Like he's he's going to put you, gonna put you yeah, back. Tricky behind I mean, the he has green. nothing anyway. So now the game's... Unless you can see that red to middle, which might be able to actually. Can you spin that angle, Christian? Yeah, yeah, he can see it. 
can he make it though? I think that's the you know it's close, right? And thank you for being able to have that other angle. That's oh, love it, love it, love it, <laughs> love it. I don't know if he can make it. Yeah, it looks like he can. The way he's queuing up for it. Let's have a look. See, that's the problem, right? It was see, now he's there. so he he's gone from. I think he's that's gone from having that red to the corner, and then you know stun it and have the pink to the center. He would have been on the break still now, right? Mm -hmm. And now Ramel is in. So there's. Um, I think that's what you're talking about, though. That that shot is undervalued. Where what Ramil shot to to kind of put him in that position. Exactly. He, he exactly. has to go for that red, really, and realistically, yeah. he's up against the cushion, not anywhere really to escape. But you know. Raymond well, he didn't have to go for the red, I don't think, right? Yeah, I mean, he could have played the red on the bottom here that we see by Raymond's name as mm -hmm, well and just mm -hmm. left it down there because this is a tough table. But I agree with you, too. He kind of gave him that kind of bait to go for it. If yeah, Raymond would have made it, it yeah. too, there's no guarantees on a color, right? Right. So. Um, Ooh, screw back. He's black doesn't go. He must have been playing the pink. Was, I think he was trying yeah, to screw I'm not for sure the pink. What, yeah, he was probably trying to screw for the pink. Oh, sorry. So now, so the shot, either the, the shot here, Raymond should do is is put just maybe mm -hmm. put one red safe, right? Put one red safe and put the cue ball on top of the table. Yeah, I Fin mean it's, a, it's not red. 32 and for a good player it's not a big difference, but at the same time, Ramal is easily capable of clearing up the table. He's right? taking three ball plant. I don't oh like that. He, no. he, he, well, he got away with it, right? So, um, but Raymond, see now the now the problem is is Ramal can't play up table. Mm-hmm. So, mm. he's still got initiative though. Yeah, so he's probably gonna what push this red, red to the top. What about this? What about the red next to the black, up to the top left corner by the yellow, the yellow pocket, and then just stun over? You could try that. Yeah, that's a good shot. But you just have to make sure you don't go too far with the cue ball, right? Yeah. Stun into the little bit of the black, like the black. Yeah, and then and then roll up if you make it, right? Oh no, no, he could stun into the black and play the pink. That's play what the I'm pink. saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess he. Yeah. That's assuming you open up the black, right? See, that's what he did. But oh, there's too. M he stunned it. So. But I like that shot because, I mean... You're still leaving a shot, though. Still, still leaving a shot, but, but yeah, his pink shot, pink shot would have been very difficult on this table. So now he's... See, this is the thing, right? The, the, the question is for Raymond, does he go for this red? You're kind of because yeah, you're if he misses it, he's in trouble unless he goes right on the top cushion. So he's... Yeah, he doesn't... See, what he could have done is that is just hit it super, super thin and just put it on the cushion, Right? That basically what I'm getting to for, mm, for the forcing folks. Yeah, you're forcing, forcing top. Yeah, and the thing is, Ramal is easily capable of clearing up the table. So you want to make it as difficult as possible for him because it's not like all the reds are not open, right? Raymond can go in in the break and you utilize those four or five reds in the open. doesn't need that red. So if he puts that red further up the cushion and just on the cushion, then it, it just kind of limits the possibility of Ramal. Ramal can still up. jack up on this, basically, right? Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying the red Stripping. safe, right? So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. see, that's going to come back, I think. But he actually might be okay. Yeah, he's okay. So, let's check over here real quick. Let's yeah, let's have a look at those over here. So, Daiwei up in this one, looks like. So, from what I remember last year, I mean, especially the Dharma, the Dharma style, I feel like I noticed was zinger of a amazing long pot red and then he'd you know play a safe and play kind of the right shot at the right time i feel like he's maybe just not uh got his uh engine started quite in this in this match and kind of like a higher risk high reward type style where mm -hmm. you know uh you make your you make your red you get an easy color then you play safe or you get on a little bit of a break and then you play safe um so it just hasn't seems like he hasn't been able to string them together in this one quite as easily and uh Daiwei's just taking yeah, taking Daiwei's advantage doing, yeah and that was a really good shot though we didn't get a chance to comment on that red to the middle it was a really good shot but i mean see this is the thing a lot of these shots now it's just going to be kind of single wall potting right unless he gets mm -hmm. round for the, he'll play right round for the black i'm guessing great shot wow uh, yeah. it's gonna hit the black oh he's got brown brown yeah Go forward, probably. He, nah, probably not going to take the black on. If he really wanted to be negative, he could Put thin the back. Green. No, thin the black and put it behind the brown as well, if you already yeah, want to do that. Yeah. But that will ruin the black. That's the only problem with that. He does have the lead, so... Yeah. He would have advantage if, if uh, all the high-value high colors get up getting safe. 
but yeah, basically these last two reds, once they're once they're down, everything is uh, it's pretty much safe. It. Yeah. See, this is just the stun. Like you can, anything can go any way at this point, right? Mm -hmm. See. Uh oh. Score of the Romel match. Let's go back real Let's quick. Let's go. Yeah, this is uh, on a decided too, so this is a kind of crucial part of the game right here. He's, he's, he's actually Vest is really close to that red too. I don't know if he saw that, but. Oh yeah, he almost touched it. He right? almost touched it. Yeah. Dan Peterson, how's it going, Dan? Is Good he? Good to see you in the chat. Can he not see that red on the left? I don't think so. He's playing the one to the the right of the pink, or the right of the yellow, or above the yellow. So this one, you just play in, play it up the table, and leave the white behind the red. Oh, he's on the brown. brown. Sorry, we were miles <laughs> away. Okay. <laughs> we're That's good. a good shot. That's a good shot. See, like the... M I mean... Oh, he's a little bit hampered, too. Yeah. Going to have to play to the right corner pocket past the black. Yeah, he's going to attack for Romel when he's... In, you know, he needs to attack here, so he's going to go for it, I think. Yeah. I think he should go for that red still. Um, Even with the spider, probably. Yeah, it's pretty because natural to just come down to the exactly pink and, and still you, you double up those into the right middle and you're pretty much okay. Well, I mean, even the black, the best one would be the black, right? Yeah. Come down for the black. Come down for the black, but you're, you're coming down the left-hand side of the table, right? So you're not going to leave any reds on except for the one you're shooting realistically and unless you come short. The only problem is if he underhits it and leaves the reds by the blue, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the other thing, too. So you're better off coming on the overside. Um, but, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Looks like he's going for the other red, actually. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, the thing is, if that red misses and goes up the table, then he's okay. And as long as the tape red stays on the left-hand side, I think, it, yeah, that's he's going to go for that one. If he, str if he just rolls it in, he can probably, he might scratch. Oh, he played the safety. That's a good shot. Uh, did it get there? I think it's I think uh, so. But it's another, it it's another kind of bait shot almost. Yeah, I think he can see it, right? I think he can. You mean the one closest to the pink spot? Um, red closest to the pink spot? Yeah, I think he can see it. Yeah, it goes to right middle. Problem is, you're, you're you're selling at the top of the table if you if you miss this. <laughs> yeah. See, this is the problem when you go these shots right now. Oh no! Yeah, he's got right middle. He's got a couple options. So the black doesn't go to the left, so he's probably going to have to stun it between the blue and the red that's what i would do personally right yeah so stun that gap and play black next yeah yeah that's what i would do i think you kind of want to make pink first though because black on the spot makes everything a little more cluttered so it looks like he's just going to go around it doesn't look like he's pulling it just make pink next yeah, oh this that's is a good, good shot that's a good shot then that's you get pink on the spot opens everything up now yeah, black goes yeah. to both pockets and, and everything is kind of back to normal yep agreed dominic thank you thank you for the kind words Thanks, Dominic. So, the, I mean, he's a little bit hampered right away, that red, right? But this is a big shot because, I mean, natural yeah. angle, like you said, getting to be this two reds. And he's a beautiful shot. See, this is the thing, right? Pressure. See, we at the beginning of the game, we were talking about this five, ten minutes ago. Raymond Pressure had the body. opportunity to play that red and be on the pink. That was at 32 0. Mm hmm. The game is shifting now, right? So, I mean, it's still, Ramel still needs some catching up, and I'm not saying anything's over by any means. But no, he's yeah, But now you're given the you, you can't give Romel opportunities like this, right? Mm -hmm. He's he's the Good score feeling. should be done by the difference should be done by the time he's done. Um, yeah, you imagine you what easy reds that are left. So there's Bottom three, right, right? Top left, yeah, and then the one in the middle of the table. It's gonna be, you know, definitely back in the game for Romel if he yeah. if he finishes all these. And what's nice is he played the red natural angle, this red. And he gave himself an opportunity to play for the blue on either side, right? Depending on where he went. So now he has a red at the top and the red at the bottom. So he has a bit of flexibility here. Ooh, now pink? Yeah, pink is the right shot, yeah. So roll in the pink, leave a bit of angle. You can also play high, but I think, yeah, rolling it's I would. I would rather angle. roll it in, yeah. Just Unless you just don't want to be straight. I guess you could just kind of stun it as well. You could do that. And then play up the table for the blue, mm -hmm. right? Just to, He'd probably do that, actually. Just stun a little bit, too. Oh, he had more angle than we expected it. The only problem is with this shot is if you end extremely straight, which he's not. I don't know which angle I'd like. I'd have to see the angle, but... Yeah, do you stun this and play for... He could even just pull it back, right? Stun and pull it back to the left-hand side of the table, too. Yeah, worst case, you still have kind of a pink or maybe a long blue if you get really weird. 
Yeah, knowing Romano, I think blank. he's going to play the smart shot, so he'll just probably just stun, just, just stun, f uh, stun follow through. Okay. Oh, he's pulling it back like we were talking about, just to play behind the black look. Yeah. Oh, it was oh, straight. That's good why. Good stroke. Good stroke. So now you natural. have a natural angle, right? You just have to miss the blue, or even pink. Well, do you even do you open up this red on the right cushion? You he go has for an angle it? to do that. I don't think he would no. do it though. I don't think we would do it. Well, it looks, I mean, it looks pretty juicy to me. It, the other thing is, is if you if you do do that, um, you have a chance. See, he's in. Oh, oh, he didn't want to hit that knuckle. No, he didn't play. He played the. He played he to go. Play past the red, yeah. Yeah, around the green, right? Uh, to answer, uh, so let me answer those questions real quick. So, Nitin, this court tournament's in San Gabriel. It's at Embassy Billiards. Uh, we have nine. They have nine snooker tables here. All the tables are with, they're playing with the was it G one or one G balls, uh, brand new cloths. Yeah, sixty um, eleven. Yeah, really, really nice club, and they have Chinese eight ball as well as pool table too. And the food food here is fantastic. They've got a little restaurant across the street that you can get food and bring it in also here. Um, oh, I wasn't expecting that by Ramal. Um, I'm just seeing what options there are, but yeah, he's gonna Raymond is gonna have to go for that red. Yeah, and then the next question is, do these guys hold any world ranking positions? That's a good question. I um, don't believe so. I don't believe so, but the only, I mean, Ahmed maybe, right, who won the Pan Am, so. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, he's the only one, but he's not in this event right now. He's over in Sheffield at the moment. Yep. We got some requests to go check on the Dharma game. Let's go so check let's on the Dharma see. game and then come back, because it's 1-1 there, too. A mm, little so bit of a lead. Dharma up against it. So if I'm Dharma here, right, you've got to get the Reds into play, right? You've, what, you're, what, 24 down? Oh, this is the shot to do it right here? Yeah. Just stop. Oh, oh it's playing the pot? I don't know if he was playing the pot or trying to open it. No, I think you're right. The open up the balls. Play a stop shot behind the yellow and just run into everything and push it all up table. Oh, Francis has a world ranking. Like oh, yeah. she's. Uh, I mean, she played in the uh, World Women's Ranking event uh, that we hosted the U.S. That's Open. That's awesome. So that's an official ranking event. Uh, Bike Garrett it is a different Varun, actually. Uh, in this event, we've got Varun... I forget his last name. Uh, is it Rajesha, I believe? Uh, Varun Juneja is the one who won the Seattle Open uh, earlier this year. He is not in this event. Um... But yeah, we all we are all getting confused in the same way. Don't worry. There's many Varuns that play snooker apparently. I mean, Nitin, if you've been to Romel's place, you're probably good. <laughs> no need to go to any other place apart from here and Ox, right? Like, there's, there's, those are pretty the only three, and, and maybe New York Athletic Club as well. Like, those are the four I can. I mean, unless you know Christian of any other place, right? Like, yeah, like as a, as a good uh, snooker place, right, to play. Yeah, there's a there's a spot in Nashville that has one table. It's kind of like a like a private club. I think is that Zia's place. Yeah, yeah. I never been there, but I've seen some videos and stuff of that place. Yeah, um, shout out to Zia too in Nashville too. It's a beautiful table as well. But yeah, no, I've never been there too. I've wanted it. Yeah, he's go invited check it out. me a few times. Check it out, but just never had. My wife's heavily into music and all that stuff too. So oh, there writing you go. and stuff like that too. So maybe I can. That would be a cool a cool trip, right? Double it up, yeah. Ooh. So we might have to go back to the match too because I know it's really close as well. Yeah, let's I let's think we'll it's let's wrap up the his break right here. Dom, Dom's break. Let's see what he did. So the brown, I think. Uh, actually, the problem is with the brown. If he, the brown will go on the spot, block it to the middle, right? It I will. Think. Yeah, it's got to play this into the right middle next. Or yeah, play the play the red if it passes the brown into somewhere in the left half of the table. But if not, you have this kind of blind pocket cut. Oh, he's looking. Yeah, he's looking to left middle. I kind of like the other red to center too, because if, like you said, right, yeah, the black up, because if it hits the jaw, it's going to go back up the table safe. Mm -hmm. See, now he's left that red. See, that's the problem yeah, with that, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Yep. All right, let's go back. I think Ramil's actually on a snook, so he. Okay. No, it's five in it. It's a very close game now. See, this is this is what I was saying, Christian. Right? How? Decider. How? Right, yeah. See, it's one is the decider. And how crucial that red can be it can be for Raymond now, right? Like, I mean, I know they've both missed easy balls too. I'm not just picking on that specific example. Right, there's one in it now. So now that's made a huge difference. 32 points up. And remember I was talking about the red being safe, like putting mm -hmm. the red safe. You, you, sometimes, you know, that doesn't make a difference, but sometimes it can potentially, you know, 
too. And bite you too. Um, Rob, this is not a pro-am. This is the national. It's national U.S. Um, snooker championship. It's just open to green card holders as well. It used to have a citizenship required, so it's, it's, but it is the nationals. Don't know if it's a full, full ball snooker here. You can at least go pretty easy rail first escape. Yeah, just hit it. Oh, that might be over the center. Where's that going to go? Oh, it's going to go just past me. It maybe. might be in, actually. It's it might in. be in. Yeah, he potted it. Wow. Wow, but, I mean, nothing really from it either way unless he goes for the brown. No, the blue or pink don't pass, right? Ooh, I think the is the pink on? No, I mean, the right shot is the safety. Yeah, the safety because the, because the, the yellow is so tucked away, basically. Yeah, yeah, just, put the, just hit the black. Just hit the black roll Yeah, up. just hit the black key. So the one thing Ramal didn't do is come down to this side of the table and see where the cue ball needs to end to block yeah, the yellow, point, right? Yeah, he didn't, he didn't walk around it to see the angle because, yeah, you roll up on the left hand Unless he's hitting the blue behind the pink. Oh, he sees the pink. I don't know, maybe I'm no, talking No, he can see much. the pink, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, you're right, yeah. So, yeah, I think he just wants the points, basically. Put the pressure the other way. Yep, that's huge. So now, you because it was nice, if he went a little bit too far, you didn't want to go as far as this too because you want to push the yellow up straight and leave it behind the green. He went a little bit too far. I like playing behind black here with the cue ball. No, this See, double yeah, kiss. Yeah. Oh, we got away with it. The only problem behind the black is, if you play that way, which I like too, is that you, you the yellow, you have to hit on... You perfect, have to hit yeah, perfect yeah. to come back behind the green, right? The yeah. yellow specifically. Or just play to the right-hand side of the table. Like, play to the to the right long rail. Like go off the left side of the yellow, two cushions behind the black. Because you have a lot of stuff to hide behind. the yeah. Like, where the blue is makes this wall down here a little bit more enticing than, yeah. than, the, than the ball colors, I feel like. Ooh, high break. Do we have, we have that yet? I don't know. I think a few 40s, few 50s. I don't think there's anything special, like, especially high, to be honest with you. Yeah, nothing uh, nothing really threatening a century yet, right? No. See, I don't like that shot when Romel just there, too. And, and Romel's a really, really good friend of mine, so mm -hmm. I, I hate to bash him. But <laughs> This is an easy escape. This or is easy an easy snooker, yeah. I prefer speed, the right? other way, actually. The I prefer Sending the way... Sending the yellow? Sending the yellow up and then leaving the white up top table because... Mm -hmm. It's always better to get the object ball safe, yes, right? Yes, because it's a, this is a naked safety, I would call it, where if you don't get behind something, you're you're naked out in the cold. Oh, no. Yeah, and the other problem is with that, he, I mean, a little bit further, he wasn't snooker behind the green. Look at this shot. Wow. So fouled, wow. and then now he's got a shot on the yellow, but I think it's really straight. Yikes. We got drama. Steven made a 76? Oh, nice. Okay, I didn't know that. Oh, must have been on a side table, or was it on the main main table? I know he had a 50, 54 or something on against Alex in the first round. Oh, yeah. he missed. Pressure pot there. See, I would just now it's what three cushion middle and run behind. See, the well I was lucky to be back in here, so I think yeah. you know, he's just got to. I mean, he was unlucky to foul. Obviously, that's a different story. But just, save just three cushions. Yeah, just hit it behind the black. There we go. And he then other the table. That might be in. That might be in. Uh, yeah, I think maybe hit it a little bit thick. Are they behind so Christian on the matches now, or? Yeah, I think we're a little bit behind on the tournament. I'm okay. pretty sure. Um, I believe Alan is in the back, but uh, I don't know where our Stephen was running around telling me matches and what was happening. But yeah, you said you have a two thirty scheduled match. Two thirty, yeah. I don't imagine it's going to be starting on time. Okay. Come on, Raymond. Come on, Raul. Let's hurry up a little bit. Thanks, Steven. Thanks. Thanks, Steven. Oh, this is on. Break opportunity on for... All right. We... I would say something, but I don't want to jinx anything. No so such thing as commentator curse. There's no it was funny enough, thing. I tuned in earlier to see which match you were on, and <laughs> the, the thing you were both talking about was literally commentator curse. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not going to say anything here. It's a... Uh, this is a big match because this is a big this is very important so I don't think people like it's because the races are fairly short right mm -hmm. this win is huge for both of them because you're essentially seeding yourself in a group and kind of deciding your path into the knockout stage right and that yeah. can change anything so this one frame is a huge difference in all of that right and could mean the matter of like not even just you know who you're playing but also actually qualifying right like now right if if we're I'll so talk after the shot. See, this is the thing about Ramal. He's he's such a good QS in situations like this. He just yeah. looks so composed. Consistent. Yeah, yeah. 
Does the blue pass the pink to the right? If not, he's going to go one cushion across. He went across. a little bit too far, yeah. I don't know what he... I don't know if he'll play around the table or just make sure and just, like you said, one cushion come across and then play the blue into the same left corner. That's probably what I would do. He was a bit short. Yeah, way short. See, but he only needs the blue, right, I think? Uh, he was four up. Four up, now he's now on a break of, what, uh, seven? Nine. Nine, nine, right? Yellow, green, right, so... Yeah. So he just needs the blue. So the just shot here is just play it at a medium pace, stun it, and play behind the black, right? Yeah, so in case you miss a thick, right? Mason, yeah, just play. It's kind of a... See? Look at the perfect. Yeah. See? Exactly like we said. And that's it. And then... Pink may get him. No, still I mean, in. even that point, it's still safe. Ooh, Rob Ashton asking, uh, love watching the snooker at all levels. Would it be right in seeing a lot of the players in this event coming from a pool background? I actually don't know that that That's would be I would the say case. maybe 50%. Yeah, maybe 50, 50, 50, 50. 50%. Yeah, I think we've got a lot of a lot of folks that are international that uh, have become naturalized citizens, I feel like, that kind of started with snooker. I feel like there's definitely a big contingency of those players. Um, but there's also definitely, I feel like, I see someone over here with the pool queue uh, playing on, a, I think, table three it looks like so definitely some pool players out there yeah. i definitely started with pool originally um so i'm i would be in that camp you'll be in that 50 percent the 50 percent huh? of the of the original pool players i mean being in america it's definitely the more popular q sport um so understandably so Oof, rattled it so i was thinking there too like would i go for this or would i just play the blue thin so this game is this game is not as close looks like dharma's in a struggle bus situation well he's going to play him safe here too got yeah, I'm in the same boat as Nitin, kind of, and then now I'm back to Snooker. So. Oh, he missed it. Wow. Well, he can't. This, on these tables, it, there's th it's a, that on the other table, that would have been in, right? Like, just FYI for you guys. Yeah, this is the, the, the tournament cut uh, pockets, right? These are a little bit tighter pockets. Yeah, Rob, that's a really good question, you know. Um, you I think, you know, also, too, that yeah. these guys are just trying to finish it, right? So, I think... Um, I know Raymond, snooker player, R R R R and the other two guys too. I'm pretty sure snooker background too. So specifically the guys you're watching on stream, I think snooker. Yeah, Raymond's from Ireland originally. He said he started playing snooker when he was 11. And uh, Ramil. Oh no, here we go. See, there's a shot right here now. Ramil originally from... Oh, he got, got away, away with, with it. it. But it's a snooker right now too. Easy snooker. Yeah. Just don't ruin the black, right? That's Ramil's the big uh, Dutch originally, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, no, from Denmark. Denmark, Denmark. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't like that shot. Ouch. That actually works out more f better for Ramel, right? Like, you know what I mean? You're better off just soft rolling it. Don't leaving. Don't block up the black. Right? Yeah, leave yeah, the blue yeah. between the black and the pink. So then it's it it's not on the cushion where it's a little bit easier to escape. Uh, I think what he was going for was the kind of frozen snooker on the pink. So he didn't leave an easy exactly, escape. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. And I've seen Ray Raymond's a brilliant player too. So he's more than capable of doing that too. Just mishit that. I don't know if it's a pressure thing. Sort he's rushing thing. a lot now too. So yeah, he's getting impatient. Josh Gill asking, what's the highest break so far? I think, I think we uh, said 79, right, by no. Stephen? Was that correct? No, I don't think that was correct. I think David Brock updated saying he's wrong. 69 from Ajaya, it looks like. So okay. Ajaya playing pretty well, it seems. Big pot here. It's clean. Oh, no. Rattled this blue more than, it's gonna more be than any I'm other I'm calling black ball game now, Christian. <laughs> you are? Yeah, because I, I mean, think he's... I think... This pink is into right middle. Or do you play for it? No, to right corner. Screw, screw it back, screw back, it back to middle, yeah. Oh, he... Yeah, it he was had a little more straight. Angle. Yeah, I don't know about that shot. Cross I mean, I line. guess if you want to play it for the black, too, that's the right shot, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're playing... Oh, stun here. Stun here and two cushions into the black? No, I mean, sorry, though, with the blue, right? Playing position from the blue to the pink. Like, it, yeah. uh, you know, giving it opportunity to play the pink in the middle and stunning it down. Got it. But I don't know what he's going to do here. Oh, he's playing a good... Si that's a great shot. That's a great shot. Yeah, I mean, you got to, you know, oh this no. is the first match of the day, right? So they're both feeling it. Um, so we'll see here. Oh, there's a few UK folks. Hi, guys. I'm curious, um, is there somebody you particularly you are watching or looking for? Or um, did you see somebody share the stream? And I'm not seeing the name, so I'm not sure if uh, I personally know you guys. Playing the safeties. Let's check back over here. It's coming down to it. Dharma. See, well, it's 31 in it, right? So yeah, he needs snookers. He needs snookers. So up against it. I mean, the blue and the pink, the brown and the pink's in a good spot from Wales. Okay. 
Nice to meet you guys. I think a few folks from UK. Awesome. Well, w welcome, guys. Welcome. So just to give you kind of some background, and then you know, here I'll let the I'll stop talking so we can watch the end of these two frames because they're both crucial frames. Yeah, it's getting close actually. Yeah, I think Raymond, uh, Raymond, and Ramel are in a safety battle on the pink. Ramel needs one. I don't think I don't think he's going to go for this. Oh, he went for it. Oh my days. Wow. He's going to come too far. Oh my, what a shot. All right, all right you called it black ball game. <laughs> I called it, I called it. <laughs> black ball game indeed. So, I mean, just then it got off the table, right? Yeah, that's all. Actually, last time I played this shot, I completely missed the black ball. Oh, oh no. no. I don't like this oh, shot. Oh, no. See, now uh, you're giving... Well, actually, it's not that bad, right? But now he's going to do... He's got the initiative now, Ramil. He's just going to do the same thing. He's going to play it thin, loads aside, and he's going to be at the top of the table. Way up, yeah. Oh, oh no, he brought the black out a little bit. I They're both playing very fast as well. I call that the uh, the APA safety, the roll up on just tap it on the ball because you always have the thin option to kind of come out and go up table usually. Oh. See if Raymond's Raymond's going for it, he's lining it up. So 100%, 100%. so I mean, if it's me, I go on the thinner side, right? You want to make sure like you under hit it. Mm -hmm. Any Canadians in the tournament? I think Patrick. Um, Patrick oh, Gigi. Yeah, yeah, he's in the tournament. I don't know about anybody else. Oh. So he did do that, right? He went on the thinner side. That's a good shot by Raymond. So this, I think, is going to be end of frame. Yeah. Dai Wei is clearing up now on this match against Dharma. So well. tough for the number four seed, but he goes down one in the group. It might be the first, I think it's his first frame in the tournament. He won his first match. Oh, he won his first yeah, match. Okay, yeah. so second match in the tournament. Got it. So that's in. That's the handshakes there. Concession from Dharma. So Dai Wei wins it 2-0. Oh, oh is it in? It doesn't have the pace. I think that was going in, Christian, right? Didn't it look like it, it you know? It looked close. Yeah, I mean, it didn't, a little bit more speed, and the nap might have not taken it off, offline. Yeah, Daiwei is solid for sure. Seen him make some really good pots. Big pot here for the match. Oh, just overcut it. Well, he left the white in a good spot, too. Unless Watch the black's out. No, I think he's okay. Oh, no, no. he's left it. it. The slow cloth, that, that looks like it's going to go all the way up, and then it just slows okay. down. If Ramal doesn't make this, he's going to... He's going to be kicking himself for sure. But this I mean, he's missed two or three easy blues, right? So, Well, we'll see if he makes it before he does. See, the thing is about Ramal, every shot is consistent, right? Every cut shot, con emotion, whatever, so he should be rolling it in here. Made Bang. it. Bang. Wait, wait, cue ball, cue ball. Cue ball's good. What a match. That wow. was a great match. There's the handshakes. What a match. Nicely done, gentlemen. Wow, even Romano's at you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you can see you take a breath off of that. Yeah, well, all right. We're going to get uh, Dave Bernie back in the booth. And uh, thanks for having Thanks for coming by. Hey, we'll see you. Good luck in your I'll match. I'll help you guys. Hey, yeah, nice yeah. chatting with you guys. Yeah, take nice care, guys. Chatting. We'll be back in a little bit. Uh, stay tuned, folks, for some more matches.
Hello everybody, welcome back to the 2023 United States National Snooker Championship here at St. Gabriel. We're at Embassy Billiards. Steve Wong is the owner-operator of this wonderful club. The champion of last year, he's still in the tournament, but we got a great round-robin match here with our only female contestant in the, the tournament, Francis Cho, taking on Jack Kong. Yeah, Jack Kung. I think he's a previous um, champion, I believe. Uh, one of one of the asterisks you can see, I think, in our in our schedule. But I think he did win this previously. I don't know what year, but he is a previous champion. Well, he is donning the uh, logo for the USSA on his waistcoat. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Yeah, it, there's some fantastic food down here, so, well, you know, uh, I am like Mr. Dress Up or whatever, Pokeroo or something like that. You always miss the best moments. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll just chat that up to Bernie Luck. Yeah. But I'm pretty, I wasn't too far away. I was in the, the restaurant that's just across the parking lot, so I think if there was a 147, this... Um, room would have been shaken like no tomorrow oh you would have heard it for sure <laughs> <laughs> were you were you out there watching the stream while you ate or are you just chilling out <laughs> uh, i was actually just in the restaurant and stuff like that and then yeah. uh, did tune in a little bit on my uh break just to see what was happening but nice they're actually i think he's got it now but there was a gentleman uh on the uk circuit uh tv director TV director. I can't remember what his name is, but there was a running gag because he never got 147 to direct oh. the 147 from the truck. <laughs> oh, okay, I see, I see. He just he was never there to experience one, is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, okay, very cool. That's funny. Yeah, that is true. Chuck, Dave Hendon uh, has just spoiled me with some wonderful comments on his podcasts of criticizing me or not criticizing <laughs> Labeling me as the best dress commentator. Best so dress, hands down. Uh, I'll take that to the bank, and that makes my mom proud. <laughs> Without a doubt. Well, it's just one of those things. I think, you know, we, we asked the players, you know, they should be dressing the part, and I think a lot of us should be dressing the part. Obviously, sometimes some of the the people running around behind the scenes, you know, running cables, hanging cameras and stuff like that, they might be able to get with away with some casual wear, but when you're on the front lines and you know, people want to see what the sport looks like, you got to look sharp. Always looking, always looking sharp, always looking dapper. Just, just look at him. Just look at him. Yeah, I think I'm most impressed with the pocket watch, honestly. That's, okay. That's the next level. Pocket. Everyone has their little points, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I might do a video, you know, to show people how to tie this knot. <laughs> oh yeah, the Eldridge knot. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> get that, get that on camera. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of a slower start. I don't know how much Jack has been playing, but uh, obviously being a national champion previously is no easy feat. But, uh, boy, what a what a couple matches we had just now. It was pretty pretty close. Came out of a black ball game in the decider between Raymond and Ramil. Dharma getting uh, possibly upset, although I don't know much about um, Dai Wei. I mean, it seemed like he was playing pretty strong in that event, in that match. And let's see what we have. Looks like our second match table is going to be Sargon. That should be pretty cool. We'll definitely check in on him. We have in the booth earlier. Great guy. Let's talk about snooker. Definitely on that note of podcast, uh, you can also listen to Talking Snooker with Nick Metcalf and Phil Haig. Uh, they mm. as well have been paying us some great compliments uh, from our U.S. Open coverage a few weeks ago. Yeah. 
Nick was mentioning, maybe they were thinking about trying to get Mr. David Burney on their podcast. So Hey-o. we'll see what happens. Really enjoyed uh, meeting Ooh. those two gents at Sheffield this past year. Good pot there from Francis, but uh, she didn't didn't end up putting enough top on it, I think, to get onto this red near the brown. So it's going to be a little tricky. It's been a little shell-shocked, I think. Uh, Sargon's a little bit higher pace, higher energy than you, Dave, so he's been <laughs> just rolling and rolling and rolling, so I feel like now we've taken a little bit of a breather, we've been relaxed. So much thinking. So many things to say. Yeah, and I'd have to say probably... Uh, Sargon being with a very well accomplished player, you're going to get a lot of good analytical stuff. Oh yeah, and definitely. That's, that's what a good team can provide. Like there's a lead commentator and an analytical commentator. Those are usually the good uh, teams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> David Brock saying uh, Sargon broke my speakers. Yeah, I think he was a little bit loud in a couple moments, but uh, you know, hopefully. Hopefully it didn't distract the players that were on our near table, at least. But, uh, back to the soothing voice of David Burney. Like a lullaby. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, I did as I was on my way to lunch. Ran into the Dutchman, Ernest Bazimer. And he's like, wow, the Sultan Sounds of Seattle is here. <laughs> is that what he called? The <laughs> Sultan Sound of Seattle. Wow. Yeah. And I'd say... Well, I'm getting adopted in Seattle, but I do live in Canada, Ernest. But North America. We'll see North America. There you go. Yeah. Well, good stuff. Definitely got more action going in the room. I think a lot of, a lot of players playing their first match of the day in this round, it seems. I think uh, kind of have gone through the first half of the groups. And now we're kind of getting to the second half of the group stages. Um, unfortunately, I'm in the very, very last group, so we're going to be playing mm -hmm. later in the afternoon today. But uh, still a lot of players around the room watching. It's kind of a nice separation here. It's like all the snooker tables are on one side, and all everybody else can kind of view from this other side. It's a little bit... Yeah, and it might just start to get a little busy I think this room opens up at 2 p.m. so we're obviously in the mm. opening hours so that yeah. might be a little thing that the players are going to have to contain with a little extra click of the balls because there's some pool tables and Chinese eight ball tables in the room yeah in the background yeah behind us okay So it looks like players asking some questions. True. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, what's going on there? Oh, it looks like coin flipping. Oh no! Don't flip on the table. Oh. Owie. And there's video proof of it right there. Yeah, Mike, avert your eyes if you're watching. I guess it's 68, 11 cloth, so maybe it's a little bit thicker. <laughs> Still a no-no. Still a no-no. I agree. As much as they say, oh, it won't do anything, but there's just that <laughs> odd chance that it might just come down on an edge, or like a little divot, and then the ball rolls on it. Something weird, you know. You can always. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it looks like uh, Francis and Jack are just having a little chat at the scoreboard, but sharing a good laugh. Okay, so it looks like a break of 14 for Jack there. <laughs> we'll let Sargon know that he, that he broke your speakers, Dave. Yeah, not sure what the head-to-head uh, -head is for Francis and Jack, but uh, definitely the height is dead even. <laughs> Both of them are uh, <laughs> similar stature and height. Yeah, and actually, uh, Francis is playing with a new Q uh, recently. She... Uh, she got a new Ton uh, Priorum Q, but she is her second Q, I guess, from them, and uh, customized it this time to be much shorter. So I think she's been used to playing with pool and sinker Qs that are balanced very much towards the back because she grips it so high because her wingspan isn't very long. So mm -hmm. she grips it kind of, you know, halfway up the butt of the Q almost. And uh, with this Q, I think it's about 50. 
54 inches or something along those lines, or 56, something like that. So much shorter queue. It's almost like you took an extension off of the end of the queue instead of putting it on the queue. Mm. But now it fits her, you know, her body a lot, a lot cleaner, and she's a lot more comfortable with it. So it's kind of interesting talking to her about uh, the new queue, etc. And I guess it's a one piece too, which a lot of people like one piece over three quarter joint cues, right? Mm-hmm. There's kind of that's kind of like an old uh, an old debate, I guess, in the snooker world: one piece versus three quarter. I don't know what you prefer, Dave, but uh, tradition yeah. probably says one piece. Yeah, and I haven't had much playing with uh, a one piece. I've got a three quarter joint mm-hmm. right now, and that's what I got. And I really enjoy my cue and uh, as you know always you know why aren't you bringing your cue down to Seattle Dave <laughs> let's play a frame because yeah. I'm always like I can't play I, I can't use another cue I would consider that cheating on my cue <laughs> oh Dave oh Dave what happens in Seattle stays in Seattle <laughs> don't you know yeah how far were we uh, five hours away from Vegas yeah something like that <laughs> west coast best coast Oh yeah, they do get a lot of lot of pool tournaments down in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, they got the space for it. Why can't we bring uh, something in the world of snooker? Exactly. Yeah. So we're actually, I mean, seeing as Sargon's match was a two thirty, started pretty close to on time, but then Francis's match was supposed to, and Francis and Jack were supposed to start at one thirty. So a little bit of a mix. I'm not sure how our timing is looking, but we're. Maybe a slight delay, according to the uh, schedule we have. Yeah, it's tough to tell on all the other tables. We're just going by the TV table, because we did have definitely a slog of a frame with uh, Jack A and Haitish. Mm -hmm. played that, I think, hour and 15 minutes second frame, and it seemed like probably they were on the pink for... (laughs) <laughs> good close to at least half an hour yeah that, that that second frame right the one that uh that uh, hitesh managed to pull out yeah pretty impressive the fact that they went that long without you know actually potting the pink you know with a fluke or getting rolling it up to the pocket and leaving an easy shot or an in off and yeah or an in off yeah yeah, yeah romil pretty much had did a great job of retaining himself because I feel like he just wanted to. He was helping er, me in the commentary. Jackie, right? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. sorry. Match, and I think he wanted to just jump up and scream. <laughs> when and he was. Hitesh, just roll it, roll the paint just over. Ro- just roll it in. <laughs> That's funny. You know, he, he just was using just that extra pace, which he didn't need. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a plant there. Oh, wow. Uh, Hand raise. Yeah, a little fluke there, but wow, if that was intended, that would have been some shot. But uh, he could come on this pink and get behind the green. Yeah, is he gonna, or is he just gonna roll up on the yellow? He's playing the green, like you said. How's the pace? Okay, took away the right half of the table at least. Well, speaking of this, look at that. Look at the mirror image we have on the other table right here. We've got Sargon in a tough one on on the yellow, which with what looks to be a, a full stack of. Oh yeah, I got to change the scoreboard. Looks like uh, all the balls have been pushed to the right half of the table. Interesting. We'll get a little bit of a match update there in a little bit. Yeah, so this is. Okay. No, that yellow's in the way. Just doesn't want to leave anything on. Unfortunately, she has. Yeah. France is going to want that shot back. I think actually Jack was there last year in uh, Seattle, right? I don't remember Jack being there. No, I don't. Uh, I don't recognize him. I could be wrong. Yeah, so many faces. Sometimes you just like. Yeah, it's. I was talking about that earlier. It's just like a weekend full of like thirty to forty new people that you meet. It can be hard to uh, remember everyone. 
and after a few days you almost have to go back and watch the live streams to see um, who you met and who you didn't meet. Actually, I will say that that one thing. Everybody I think that was on a live stream, I probably remembered because of you know going back and watching the videos and you know editing stuff and learning from mistakes and stuff like that. So. Mindful that uh, pink and brown, she's all right with. Ox Billiard saying, "Let's go, Francis!" Shout out to Mike in the chat. Yeah, Jack could really do well to get this black back on its spot. Yeah, it's a tough shot though. He's right in behind the pink. I don't know if it passes the brown. Yeah, and our oh no, he's on. Is he on... Oh, he made the blue, sorry. So he's on a... He's on a no, he's on a color. He's on a color, okay. Yeah, but okay. That, it's, that pink from our vantage point on the screen definitely yeah. looks... It's one of those shots that looks easy on the screen, but probably uh -huh. when you're at the table, it's very thin. It's, it's, he's banging straight behind it, but also the, the trade-off of spotting the pink, you're going to end up clustering all those reds. Uh, you'd rather get the black on the spot and have an open table to play, play for, so... Definitely the right shot. Just tougher with the rest. Etc. <laughs> True. What's that? Uh, as we've alluded to before, these are big tables, and uh, Jack and Francis are definitely not the two tallest competitors, so they're definitely going to should be welcoming the rest into their repertoire. See what we can do about getting uh, getting our club owner Steven into the booth. Wonder if he's uh, available. I know he's a busy man. Oh, he, yeah, he has been definitely running around the last few hours with the schedule. He had two matches earlier today. He'll play another one to finish his round robin. I believe he won his second, but uh, I just have not been up on the cloudsnooker.com website. That's a great resource for the tournament. You can see live updated scoring on all the matches that are in progress here. Also the standings in all the groups as we have 16 groups of four in this championship. Great number of entries. Oh, she found the gap to come back to bulk and it didn't go into the green pocket. Yeah. Very nicely done by Francis. Do you take this red on, though, into the right corner pocket? I think it's definitely available, but pretty good chance you're going to leave a pot on if you miss it. Well. If you need to check my password, it says David Burney, not Ronnie O'Sullivan. So I don't <laughs> think I'm taking this on. Oh, yeah, okay, so hit the gap. I figured there there was that gap, but he had to miss it just in the right way. Any thicker or thinner, he might run into a red there and sell out something. But it was a bit of a shot to nothing. Uh, one of the best shots in the game. got options. Oh, we're going to have to get Darren into the booth after he finishes the match, maybe. Yeah, I just wondered the brown, was it heating him a little bit for this red that's close to the middle pocket? But now he's left the... Easy starter. The only problem is with the angle of this red into the middle. Francis is going to be on the wrong side of the blue. Yeah. This is a chance, though, for her to get some points on the board. Mm-hmm. Just got to keep keep with him. Yeah, definitely the mindset in these amateur events. 
Just get me to the colors. Mm-hmm. Yep. Get me to the colors and get me somewhat close. Because then, you know, anything can happen there. Yeah, it's give yourself a chance, you know? Mm-hmm. Nice to see that Francis is getting a lot of support in the chat room. Oh, good stun shot. Got a fortunate flick off the yellow. Is it going to get a shot, though? Yeah, I think this red near the pink spot goes. Can you roll forward and cannon off of the leftmost red and get on the black, maybe? Or is it too steep for that kind of angle? It's hard to tell from this angle. can into if not I think you're playing with some top to come off the cushion yeah that's the shot she was trying so she hit a little too thick yeah I think it, if she had not hit it as thick the cannon would have been beautiful a little better yeah really would have put her onto the black so maybe a little bit more top although I guess if it's thinner I guess yeah makes sense Tough shot though, but I think uh, it's only really left this small edge. Can you can you see this? Sorry. No, I don't know if it goes. That is that's a shot that will give you a couple uh, sleepless nights. That's for sure, because it's just just yeah. I think he he might be able to get by and just playing it dead weight just to draw up because of. A little bit of shot. It yeah. would probably rattle in the jaw, so just. Yeah, I think I'd rather just take this honey. But the problem with this is controlling the tip of your cue with the rest when you're 10 feet away is a little bit uh, tricky if your cueing is not mm -hmm. precise. And a little, you know, more stuff on your cue so you don't have to hit it as hard. Yeah, so that you was the thing. No, I think, I think the problem there is he was just. You see his tip at a dress. Um, he was a little bit too far from the cue ball, so his follow through, he didn't quite know where it was, right? He thinks he's going to hit the cue ball sooner than he actually did and ends up under hitting it as a result. So the key thing there, I think, is to get the tip right up against the cue ball so you know um, kind of how, how far away you are. Looks like some people asking to watch Sargon. I think they yeah, will tune in after this. Sure, we can see what Francis makes of this little run here. Yeah, let's see this break, and then we'll switch on over, I think. You can always check at cloudsnooker.com for the scores, but yeah, we'll, we'll check in on Sargon's match. A little tricky on this red now. Or do you just play safe up table? The red on the long rail. Let's check it over. So it looks like Sargon and uh, Wenxiang Zhao. In a close one. Not sure what uh, kind of break Sargon is on. So we'll see. Looks like France is opting to play safe behind the brown here. She might have gotten the full ball snooker on the right half of the table. I think so. Maybe on everything, yeah. yeah that brown, she just can into that brown to create a little wall. And ooh, is there a... I think there's a gap, man. Oh, that is thin, thin. How's your nerves, Jack? Awfully close. Yeah, the pot was on. Wow. wow. That was definitely an every shot. Doesn't get on a color. Okay, so yeah, looks like this match is going to be going back and forth. Let's check in on Sargon's break. Looks like he must have potted blue. It must have been the pink after that shot, so. as we come over to Sargon's match breaks down but uh, <laughs> no such thing as commentary curse I didn't say anything 
Did you say anything? I, we didn't say anything. The camera did all the talking. <laughs> it moved over to this match. Right. So that looks like it was a what break of fifteen or so. Mm hmm. So like that blue's going to come to his rescue. This isn't fun at all. No, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I'm paying for Sargon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just... Like, sometimes you have to be... It's unfortunate when you get forced into taking a pot on. Is you might be in that situation here. Is there even a pot on, though? I mean... Yeah, he's got to be going for the red. That's Almost like third closest to the pocket, kind of. Yeah, that's the only one. Okay, he had an escape at least. Now is the shot to roll up here? Is there really a color worth playing for? Yeah, we're looking at the... They're close enough to the uh, yellow, right? Should yeah. be straightforward roll-ups, safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just didn't seem like there was any angle on any real color to yeah. come back down for these reds. Why risk it when you can, you know, lay the snooker that Sargon did there. Mm -hmm. And then when she's got uh, reds to hit, but... Ooh, got the hit, but it's going to sell out this red to the right corner. I think he needed to go two, almost three cushions and come underneath this, this red that he sold out to the right corner pocket. That would have been... The ideal safety, possibly ideal kind of dump shot. Mm -hmm. Tricky, yeah. tricky to get that line right, though. Yeah, as we've seen before, sometimes it's some players can against certain opponents get away when they're snookered and just hit that object ball and be fine. But Sargon's a different customer here. You got to make sure uh, you get your cue ball safe when you're snookered and trying mm -hmm. to hit an object ball. He's got the experience too. TK, I'm not sure which British guy you're wondering if you're talking about Darren Taylor. Obviously, you can find all the live updated scoring at cloudsnooker.com. Uh, Darren is originally from the UK. His father actually was the great snooker player, David Taylor. And now Darren makes his residence in the state of Arizona. Uh, I, think, I think TK was probably talking about... Um Sargon, actually. And okay. Sargon's also British um, and was in the booth earlier, so I think that's probably who he was mentioning. But uh, let us know who you were talking about. Yeah, Darren's another sleeper pick, I think, though. I think don't underestimate him. Mm -hmm. He's got some history there. Um, yeah, he's a tall drink of water. You know, hopefully maybe we can get him on the, the TV table, as uh, the great Dave Daly says. When we came in, we didn't know who Darren was at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Dave was telling me, he's like, look at that guy, he looks like a Bond villain. So, but the, uh, let's uh, just go over to table one as they're on the colors now. And Jack does have a 29. Oh, going to fluke it. 31. Wow. Point advantage. You know, this is the happiest match I think I've seen so far. Both <laughs> players have been really smiling. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Francis isn't really smiling with glee on that last shot, but uh, both players, yeah, have been. You know, Jack does look familiar. I wouldn't be surprised if he did play last year. I just don't remember his name for some reason. Oh, yeah, there's... It's interesting, yeah, there were some players, obviously, that weren't... Uh, in the tournament in Seattle, but you know, and some you know Jack, uh, as you mentioned, is a previous champion. But you know if he gets knocked out early, it's not on the TV table. It's mm -hmm. tough to me because most of the time some of these players don't really stick around when they get knocked out. 
Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, they they can. hopefully can save uh, a little bit of money on the hotel room. Because these are amateurs. And as we know with amateurs, you do it for the love as professionals get paid. I think France is calculating how many snookers are required. I think she is definitely snookers required stage. 22 on the table would put her at 46. I think she's right on the cusp. 12. So three snookers required to tie means she can still continue playing on. Any more than that, I think it would be a forced end of frame since we are in the group stages. The matches do need to get going. Can't... Uh, could be playing with too many snookers behind. Yeah, which I think very nice rest shot there by Jack. We were all surprised when uh, Jack A just didn't uh, commit or uh, concede that uh, second frame in that marathon match. Yeah. I think he was worried about having to play another grinder because it was one of the things about uh Hitesh's style is that uh he kind of grinds you down mm -hmm. you could just see it in jackie's body language but mm -hmm. wow what a cut there jack king kong <laughs> he drops in behind the pink yikes well you could do yeah. anything now it's pretty much frame at this point let's just roll up yeah behind the black nothing else to do or do you just go for this pot to see what uh what you're made of <laughs> See how well you're shooting. And then probably win this one. Okay. Pot going it. For it. Oh, yeah, we'll we want to see the pot. Yeah, let's. Uh, All right, let's go check in. Table two. I'm gonna see if I can get Steven in the booth. Take a quick break. Leave you in Dave Bernie's hands. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tr Christian, and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, Sargon, very nice, very fluid. And ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to have a very, very special guest joining me in the booth here. Here he is, the man. He's the star of the show here. Last year's champion, the man that's running this great room, Embassy Billiards, Stephen Wong. How you doing, Stephen? I'm good. I'm good. Hello, everyone. <laughs> well, this has been... We're only on day one. It's been a fantastic event. You know, the yeah. hospitality that your crew has provided for all of us is just tremendous. Uh, the, way the tournament is going so far. It's nice and fluid. There's not a lot of stall, so you're doing a dynamite job. But now comes the tough part. How long have you owned Embassy Billiards? One year. One year? One year or so. Wow. That's great to hear. And, like, and some people have told me that there was a previous owner of this room. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. And, and I take over. I change a lot. The light and table. Mm -hmm. Everything. Now we did see your first match on the TV table. How did the second match go? Second match, I I got luck on the second match, and luckily I win two zero. Okay, I don't know about luck. I think it's a, a skill over here, Stephen. <laughs> You're selling yourself <laughs> short a little bit. Yeah, our friend Chuck in uh, Detroit is giving you the best of luck for you and your club here. So, we've got a lot of viewership throughout the world, so we're giving you uh, some good exposure to this club, and hopefully uh, you can get some new friends that come down. Yes. All the friends in the USA come here. That's true. That's why we, we have 64 players this year. Wow. Fantastic. Are we almost in a place that we're going to be on par with the pros and have 128 player tournaments? 
I hope next year we we get more more prayers. Because of this year, maybe we have 5K for the champion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, there you go. I know some people have been wondering. So 5,000 yes. for the champion. But the big thing is putting your name on the trophy, right? Money comes and goes. You got to get the hardware. Of course, of course. <laughs> So, Stephen, how did you get into the game of snooker? When I was 16, up here. Yes, yeah, somebody in Hong Kong teach me how to play okay. snooker. Yeah. And then you and got then bit and you can't let yeah. it go. Practice, learn, practice. Practice make you perfect. <laughs> there you go. All those youngsters out there, there's great words from the champ. You know, practice and you will become perfection. Thank you. Okay, Stephen, you have to go and some tournament duties have to go? Yes. Or? Well, so hey. busy after I pray. No problem. Hopefully we can get you in again and have yeah. a little another chit chat. But thank you, Stephen, for all you're doing this weekend. I know you're a busy man and thanks for stopping in, saying hello. Thank you. you Thank you, everyone. Thank the you. Man. Sargon definitely in the driver's seat of this first frame. And also when this frame comes to a, a climax, we'll head up back over to our other TV table with Francis and Jack. Pink Panther, we are at Embassy Billiards in St. Gab Gabriel in California. St. Gabriel is just outside of Pasadena Probably maybe uh, about a quite excellent. A good friend Prathamish. Uh, now they're in charge of the score. Uh, how we have it linked up. Each table has iPods, and that's linked to the stream and the website. So you can find updated scoring on all matches on all eight tables here as the players do punch it in. The one thing is, at times, we don't have a designated scorekeeper with the tablets, so sometimes the scores run up, and they don't kind of count them as it's going, but uh, as the weekend gets longer, we'll definitely be getting some people to help out and just be dedicated to doing scorekeeping. But uh, the big question is, Prathamesh, why are you not here, I have to say? I know you're a good player, but you're definitely a fantastic color man, I must admit. I do enjoy my time when you're here in the booth. Uh, your analytical mind is top-notch when it comes to these great games of snooker. So hopefully next year we can get you down. So there's the concession there. And Sargon will take that first frame of a best of three. And we'll just jump back over to our TV table number one. Jack King Kong is taking on Francis Cho. Jack was able to take the first frame of this match. Some reds open up here at the ball can so he can nip away and hopefully get a few points. Although that's kind of just in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, shake of the head that's not too happy.
So there's a pathway to this top right corner for the blue. Go for it. Oh, was he fluked it in the middle? No. So, Francis got an easy starter, just uh, waiting for the Jason table for the player to take his shot before Francis can get down to business. And some loose reds, definitely uh, Francis could put a little nice little contribution here, but you can't run away too much. Got to focus on the shot at hand, can't you let your mind run too far ahead. just day one but we're getting some great streaming numbers so we really appreciate all you fans tuning in it's good to hear from some familiar uh, chatters and uh, there's actually even some uh, new people chiming in but definitely let us know where you're tuning in from if you have any comments or questions you know even the in the chat room it's a great spot to put up your questions because we do have some very educated uh, snooker fans out there that can help with answers and we can do our best as well. As I said, there is there is no stupid question. Everyone's got to start somewhere, so... Even if you don't know what the black is worth, you're about to find out here as it's worth seven points and probably the most valuable ball on the table. in here for Jack. Charles, that's fantastic. Tuning in from all the way in Oxford, England, and practices about 12 to 20 hours per week. Hopefully, you're getting some of that good practice. Greetings to you from Austria as well. Thanks for the kind words on the commentary. Glad that it's your first time. Hopefully, we'll be seeing you again because we definitely enjoy putting a lot of these events together for all you people. Next one that might be in the crystal ball. Don't quote me on it. We're still ironing out the details for the PAPSA Open down in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. That's at the end of October. So hopefully uh, we can get things all worked out that uh, that event will be able to be broadcasted and uh, all of you can tune in because that's a very important event. The winner of this tournament does get an invite to that PAPSA championship and the winner of that event will get a two-year card on the Pro Tour. Every snooker player's dream of just becoming a professional can happen. <laughs> Charles is tuning in from Scotland. Beautiful country over there. That's some great times over there, especially on the island of Isla. I uh, just fell in love with the Bunahaban distillery. But, uh, never knew that, uh, yeah, we played the real game. Yeah, it is it's growing in America. And uh, just across the, the border in Canada, we're seeing a good regrowth of the sport as well, as Canada did have a, a rich history with so many great players. And then it kind of fizzled out a little bit. 
but now things are back on the upswing and uh, in America it's anyway but up. Mr. Sofkas, sounds like you might be from Greece, possibly, or descent. The scoreboard on the bottom. So, uh, obviously we have the two players there, and uh, the white, the number in the white background is the frame, or is the uh, score in the frame. And then, as you can see, that little three in brackets, that's the best of. You know, so it's a race to two. Whoever wins two frames will win the match. And then the one thing is the scoring system that they've developed with the USSA uh, relies on tablets. And though those tablets are directly synced to the Cloud Snooker site, so you can get updated scoring on all eight tables here in the room at Embassy Billiards. The one hiccup, obviously, that we have right now in the early stages is we don't have referees and don't have scorekeepers. There's just not the... Uh, the people power to make that work so sometimes as the freight builds the opponent might just be kind of in their own thoughts and not to be thinking to scoring it and keeping it updated for their opponent so hopefully that's a good explanation if you're missing anything there feel free to uh, fire a more direct question at me but hopefully I was able to help you there That is true, Russell Jones. They just came out with something as uh, 20,000 pounds are guaranteed for uh, anyone on the pro circuit just to help with the, the traveling expenses, which I think is a, is a good idea. You know, it's a tough thing, but uh, it's nice that they can help out the players and help them continue to stay on the tour and continue the growth of the game. And then when you know you get to the big tournaments and stuff like that, there's a lot of high payouts, and that's definitely what needs to happen because if you're the best, you deserve uh, a good paycheck. Oh, <laughs> Charles, you can uh, please write to the BBC. Oh, would I love to be there. That's my dream. Is, uh, I don't think I'll ever be playing at the Crucible Theatre, but oh, if I could call a frame at the famous Crucible Theatre, there would be a boyhood dream actually coming true. And uh, Mr. Apostolos, uh, we're actually, on this match, we're in frame two. So you can see that Jack has a one in the green. So that means he won the first frame. And then Francis has a zero. So we're actually in the second frame right now. Hello to the, our friends in the Ukraine. Well, yeah, eight tables in your whole city. It, it is tough, definitely. These are large, large tables. Uh, so they take up a lot of space, not alone just the tables, but you also need the space around. Uh, hopefully, you know, things can happen. And, uh, you know, reach out to your governing body. Hopefully, you know, you can get some maybe some uh, sponsorship or something to help because, you know, the people running this game definitely want to see it grow. So, and Pink Panther tuning in all the way from India. Yeah, we hope that we can see a player from the U.S. compete uh, against those top players in Britain. And also, we'd love to get a Canadian back on the circuit. Obviously, for all you new fans, India was the birthplace of this great game way back in 1875. A naval officer by the name of Neville Chamberlain, not that one, if you're a Brit, uh, invented the game way back then, over 148 years ago. Well, I haven't heard any of the German combinators, but I do know there's a gentleman by the name of Ralph. Ooh, his last name is eluding me right now, but Ralph does. Ralph does a lot of great things for Germany. Really has dug in his heels and promoted the game fantastically.
Well, Charles, I am getting you know some nice comments from our friends that run some uh, snooker podcasts in England. So hey, you never know what could happen. And Chuck, thanks for helping out because yes, fifteen to eleven. Well, now twenty to fifteen is the score that's in frame two. But uh, we're here to educate. You know, not sure how the scene is over in Greece, or if you're still in Greece. Mr. Apostolos, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly as your username, but uh, that'd be another great place that we could travel and do some snooker events over there in Greece. What a, what a venue the Acropolis could be, although it's pretty outdoors, but that'd be a sight to see for a snooker match. So this as Jack is thinking about this, he's going to pop over to table two. Just see where we're at here. With a great shot there by Wen Shi. He's trailing in the second frame to Sargon Isaac, who was in the booth. Well, you could be the man in Greece to make snooker happen. You know, it takes... Uh, one person that's motivated and passionate and then you know it will attract more and more people so that pink just rattled in the jaws Sargon is looking for he's, uh, well he's uh, looking for something we'll just jump back over to table one as Francis is Sarkon is just looking for a mark for his match, so we'll get back there when we get everything figured out. So I missed there by Jack, and Francis has a, a slim, thin cut here. Sargon just wanted to have that uh, cue ball cleaned. See, but first of all, let's see if Jack can put this right into the middle pocket. Table two. And Sargon's at the table, ready to do business after that cue ball is clean. I've got another special guest all the way from, well, originally from Northern Ireland, but now lives in America. And I do apologize because uh, I wasn't prepped too much, but I did meet this fine gentleman before, and his name is Mark. But Mark, what is your last name? Mark Wilson. Mark Wilson. Yes, sir. There we go. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. Excellent. So, Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland, yes. Quite a wealth of mm -hmm. snooker action there. Mark Absolutely. Allen, maybe one of the, also a big player that kind of revolutionized the game way back in the 70s, Alex Hurricane Higgins. Never heard of him. No? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, what a player he was too. Mark Allen, he's not half bad either, is he? No. So, so you're enjoying the tournament so far? Yes, it's very good. 
Cool. Yeah, style of the play has been particularly high. So it's always great to see. I hear double the uh, double the pull of talent from last year. Mm-hmm. And double the tables as well. As mm -hmm. Ox is a, is a beautiful club. They have uh, only four snooker tables. So definitely when you have a, a field of 64, you definitely need the tables because we don't want to be here for weeks on end as it is an amateur tournament and mostly everyone here does have other ways of income, not just snooker. Absolutely. Tough question, Adam, as actually Mark is from Northern Ireland, so maybe do they use Irish Spring Soap in Northern Ireland? Um, not quite. Uh, we are uh, not big advocates of the Irish Spring Soap, however, to answer the question above, in relation to the volleyball from Castaway, in fact, that actually is my younger brother. He, he was born <laughs> with just the uh, spherical head and uh, <laughs> I fortunately have everything but Irish spring soap is very 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 powerful scent is it scent. and do you scent. have it over in Northern Ireland or is it just kind of a, so. a North American thing that they're just is. banking on a, a selling point for them I guess absolutely carry gold on the other hand we get that back home. Okay. It's pronounced butter. <laughs> this is definitely looking really good for Sargon here. He took the first frame. He's definitely got a got to be a favorite there. How did you fare in your matches so far, Mark? I uh, lost them both. Oh, sorry to put salt on the wounds. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> it's the Kerrygold Irish butter. There's some fans of it in the chat room. Mm. I can see why it's delicious. The key is... The ratio should be two to one on whatever you're putting it on. <laughs> so if you're using a big sli thick slice of bread, a whole block of butter is usually the trick. And whereabouts in America are you living now? I am currently in Colorado. Oh, okay. In Denver. Great sports town. Great sports town. Mm -hmm. I think it's the uh, the donkeys that play there, the NFL team. Or Broncos, but <laughs> I won't tell my fan <laughs> friend that is a, a firm supporter of uh, the Denver Broncos. But I'm just messing. <laughs> I went and watched my first Broncos game last year. It was a very pleasant experience. Yeah, what's more chaotic? Um, football over there, where you're from, or American football over here? Just as a spectacle going to view it as a viewer. Chaotic. I definitely think uh, American football has potential to take the lead on that. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess I don't know. Do the does football have maybe quote unquote tailgating parties as the American football does? No, not necessarily. Um, okay. All the drinking's pretty much done inside the stadium. Um, show up. Get your Get your booze, get your food, watch the game, have a good time, and then peace. But I do enjoy a good tailgate. <laughs> So 46 advantage here for Sargon with 35 on the table, but he is in a snooker right here. 
Yeah, it's so if we worry about the free ball if this goes in. Mm -hmm. Is that I might put him back in possibly. I think Sargon's just taking a look to see if it, in fact it is a free ball. It might not be actually. It's gonna be very close. Careful with moving it with the cue. <laughs> I think maybe they're just going to go uh, grab a roving a fish aid. While we're they're doing that, we'll just jump back over to uh, table one. Good timing. Mm -hmm. Just about to clear up here. Yeah, this black for the frame and force us into a decider for Francis all the way from Seattle. Wow, lovely stroke. So very exciting. Let's go back to that uh, other TV match as uh, Sargon has uh, invited uh, the president of USSA and PAPSA, Ajaya Pradhakar. There he is right there, double dipping as uh, the prez and referee. So how did you get into snooker, Mark? Obviously, there's a rich tradition in your country. Yep, I um, used to play at the social club where my father worked after work um, every Friday. And I started when I was about five years old. Wow. Playing on the old box <laughs> you know, until I could reach with my own two feet. Mm. Kind of sounds like that 1997 world champion from uh, Ireland, Ken Doherty. Oh, yeah. You know, when he was a youngster, he had a little biscuit tin that Absolutely. he'd have to stand on and take a shot and kick it around. That's really, uh, it's great to see all the inventive and various types of ways the youngsters uh, find the top of the table. Yeah, definitely. He definitely leads up to that nickname, Crafty Ken, as he when sure he was a youngster. Is. He was playing, and they saw Q, and it was five uh, it was pounds in Ireland, or did Back then, it would have been punts. Punts? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was five punts for this Q. And he just, you know, talked to his mom more and more, and finally she's like, all right, you know, here's the five punts. So he went to the shop. And he said, my mom only gave me two. Can I get the cue for two punts? <laughs> so the gentleman uh, definitely uh, sold it to him and Ken pocketed the three punts. Mm. So everyone is getting involved on this. As we can see, there's uh, Alan Morris on the table. He's a lot of uh, behind-the-scenes stuff with USSA. And Darren Morgan right mm. there in all black. Pretty much looking like uh, James Bond's worst enemy right there, <laughs> but he's the son of David Taylor, great player. Uh, did you know David Taylor, the player? No. Okay. Or did you know of him? Uh, yes. You you, okay, yes. you didn't know him personally, but you do know of him. Oh, we saw him on the telly and stuff. Absolutely. So it turns out after all, it was a free ball. Mm-hmm. I think we called that early on, and I don't know what they were thinking. You know, they could just listen to us. <laughs> Brought the entire posse over. Well, he's got a ways to go here to catch his opponent. Just an unfortunate little kick on the blue there to leave himself a tricky red. Yeah, definitely in these early stages you will see maybe a few lopsided matches as there are some 
really top-notch players and some are rather new to the game but giving it a go. Yes, which means it must make for very interesting commentary. It's, yeah. It's very They've always paralleled. It's interesting, you know, obviously, when you're watching the professional scene, you're expecting them to miss. Mm -hmm. So when they are expecting them to make everything. So when sure. they miss, it's, you know, everyone at gas. This is kind of the opposite. You know, they're amateurs, so they are going to miss. But mm -hmm. when they start building a break higher and higher, it just gets more and more exciting. Mm -hmm. Yes, and there certainly is the talent around. And she with the dreaded double kiss, as I always say, double kisses are only good in France, not in <laughs> snooker. Well, I think this is going to be a two nothing match win here for Sargon. Helping his campaign. Sure, he has not uh, lifted the title, but he's definitely got to be a uh, one of the strong favorites. I definitely would uh, say Mark could uh, be there as well. Mr. Wilson, who's sitting beside me, but unfortunately he confessed that he lost his first two matches, so that's going to be a a tough turnaround. But you're not out of it yet. Very tough indeed. say leading up to the tournament as I heard that uh, they just the other day I had a century in a practice uh, session so he knows his way around the table great standard mm -hmm. he has a nice fluent cue action down on the shot he's very still Yeah, definitely for all you youngsters and new players. The only thing that is moving is that back arm, just on that mm -hmm. pendulum swinging back and forth. And just a black for a clearance. To see himself with a 2 0 victory. Very nicely mm -hmm. done. So Sargon takes that match. Two to nothing, puts another win on the good side in his group. We'll just bounce back over to our other TV table, between Francis Chow and Jack King Kong. And it looks like Francis is up early, potentially a, a foul of some point, as there's four points to the good for her. How did you find the conditions here at MPC, Mark? I think the conditions are wonderful. All the uh, tables have been reclothed and they're playing relatively well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's um, certainly a bright environment, <laughs> that's for sure. Are there many tables in Colorado? There isn't many. There is uh, one full-size snooker table that I have sourced a Malhai Billiards and that's pretty much where I get most of my practice um, play a few of the local boys up there you know mm -hmm. some snooker enthusiasts but mostly used for golf if you're familiar uh. the game that might take away from your snooker game Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a competitive environment up there. But we're certainly hoping to uh, try and drive the interest in Colorado. And as opposed to having one next year, maybe we can have three or four. Excellent. 
increase the pool of players from the, the old west. Mm -hmm. And now, do they play golf back home, like on the I've billiard never, table? Never seen it played back home. I've mm -hmm. most people really just uh, use the snicker table for uh, snicker. Funnily enough, fantastic. But it is exciting. I do like it. It's a very strategic game. Do you know the one thing on a snooker table that isn't used? That serves no purpose for snooker. No, do tell. The bulk line. Oh, okay. Because the bulk line is important for billiards. Oh. But it's just kind of a point of reference in the game of snooker. It's like getting behind the bulk line, getting to safe there. Mm -hmm. But. And why is that? I don't know. <laughs> Scholars believe it was lost in translation many, many years ago. <laughs> but if you do find yourself fortunate to have a bulk line on your table, it's, uh, it's a great way to practice your straight cue. Indeed. Well, itself is not just a vessel for the balls, it's also a great tool if you want to try and improve your game. Mm -hmm. so it works for practice, but in an actual game, just a point of reference. <laughs> for sure. This has been a, a nice little break here by Jack. As, far as, here, you know, as I mentioned, our scorekeeping is not keeping up to date as we don't have a, a person behind the computer punching in the scores. Not he'll kiss on the black here, but he'll do well to find another red. I thought he was going to glance off that and run into bulk, but... Yes, I had a similar view there. I thought he was definitely going to take advantage and use the uh, the bulk line mm -hmm. to find his way back up in behind the uh, colors. So a nice strong break there of 38 for Jack. Let's put him in the dri driver's seat of this deciding frame. Safety shot there. Making it hard for Francis's next shot. Right into the right middle. It's so tough to see from our camera angle. Yeah, I mean, I better be careful not to hit the red and the blue at the same time. Right, he's uh, changed this shot selection. He's going to take the uh, cut up into the black pocket.
back by Francis to uh, get back up the table for the blue just a little bit closer to the cushion she would like there. <laughs> Blue rattle along, looked like it might go in the top left corner. Then almost her cue ball almost went down there. Seems like she's probably okay actually. there. Clip off the left side of the leftmost one and probably can come around behind the black. Oh, oh went for the pot bold strategy. Just left a little bit hampered by that red in front. I don't think she can see it. That's the strategy to keep the break building, just a shot on a long red or color from anywhere on the table. It's a great strategy and it seems to be working. <laughs> and then take on a long color, yeah. So I have another long red open here. Yes, I think just flirting with feet a little bit there. <laughs> Too much work to do in the end. If you dance with the devil, he's going to bite you someday. Mm. Well, it's still not an ideal setup here. There's a couple of reds blocking the path for it. And they see he's starter in the corner, so he's going to take this one onto the middle. A great shot. Fortunate little kiss on the green. Definitely jump into that match. It uh, has got a little bit underway, just uh, just in the beginning stages. So we'll just kind of hold with Jack to see what he can do with his visit to the table here. And maybe we'll pop over to table two. went out of position a, a little bit there. Yeah, tough to navigate a path back to bulk on that last shot. Yeah, he's got uh, 
34 point advantage. About 75 on the table, so lots of points there. But let's just take a. Oh, another great long red there by Francis. Superb shot. Seems like she played out with a little safety in mind. Mm hmm. Hold good shot to nothing. Definitely after a, a nice ball like that, deserves to be on something a little bit easier. Just gonna maybe roll up to the yellow here. Okay. Right over here on table two. Definitely some heavyweights. Renat Danka. Bahador Rami. So this actually might be a heavyweight match. We'll keep our eyes on table one to see how it's faring. Well, definitely there's a, a lot of interest in the stream on this match. So these are two great players. Playing the punt there. for Renat. Renat actually coming to us from Chicago. He's actually a long uh, long haul truck driver. So one of his great stories is he was driving truck and it's, it was an empty truck. He was driving west to get his freight and one of his buddies called and said hey Ronnie Sullivan's at the club and back in Chicago. And Renat pretty much did the best 180 you could do in a semi truck <laughs> and drove back which he's not supposed to do so probably got a little grief from the boss but was able to come back and uh, get to meet his snooker idol so wow I want to uh, must, must be a fun drive all the way back across <laughs> country <laughs> Getting to see your idol. Questionably the best player of all time. Or rather, undoubtedly the best player <laughs> of all time. <laughs> Depends who you ask. It's true. I think uh, if yeah, Ronnie O'Sullivan was to win eight world championships, that would pretty much seal the deal. So many think that he's definitely better than Hendry, but that really would even show with the figures and the trophies that he was the best. Mm -hmm. and of course, Snooker's one of those games that has great context and every generation or decade there's just some new development that makes another goat, as they say now. True, because yes, you have to give it to Stephen Hendry. Like he was the one that really developed that off the blue and breaking up the pack mm -hmm. shot. Yep, and uh, as far as that goes, absolutely the master perfecting it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
this is where we're at. It can be dangerous. You get them in the balls, you're going to be sitting for a bit of time. back he's got those two balls on the left side of those four so have a safe obviously with the middle one but I don't mind cleaning up this one hey our good friend Kurt tuning in from Belgium got to meet Kurt at Sheffield as he is a uh, part of the Luca Bassell army well, too bad, Kurt, you couldn't come out over to the USA, but we had uh, great fun with uh, Luke and Laura. So hopefully everything's well over there in Belgium, and I'm working on my Flemish, so next time I see you, I can say hello and thank you. It's great to see that the uh, the snooker game here is getting some global reach on some capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice to see that we've had some first-time viewers tuning in, so that's great. You know, there's a usual gang of some familiar uh, faces in the chat room. been getting really good numbers all day long actually so that's nice to see and it's only day one it's the 2023 United States National Snooker Championship here at Embassy Billiards in St. Gabriel California just kind of outside of Los Angeles I'm David Burney and Mark Wilson has joined me in the booth originally from Northern Ireland but now finds himself in the Mile High State Yes, the beautiful Rockies. Samuel Lee in the chat room. Yes, I agree. Renat Danka is a solid break builder. And I have to say a personal thanks to uh, Sam. He uh, ran uh, the final of our club championship last night back in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. So. Thank you very much, Sam. I would have been there, but uh, I was here last night getting ready for uh, this big weekend of American snooker. And that was a nice little shot there just off two cushions to give himself a shot at the red at least. And just temporarily run out of position, you would think. recovery to find himself mm -hmm. back in good position I was going to say uh, there's many th differences uh, between Renat's game and mine and that's a big one right there when you go out of position you make a nice recovery shot yes he uh, held his nerve very well and there's something to be said for the confidence to be able to take a shot like that on because mm -hmm. Looks very easy on our screen, but we all know getting down to play it's a lot tougher. I don't know if you've done much commentating, Mark, but uh, you know us in the commentating booth, we never miss a shot. <laughs> well, that's a record that uh, Ooh. I would be hoping to yeah. find myself. Um, Fair enough. But then the old commentator's curse. Thank you for tuning in, uh, Symmetric Cat. Sorry about uh, mispronouncing on your username, but I know you've been with us a long time today. It's all the way over in Vienna, in the Sigmund Freud country. He's really enjoying everything today. He's going to say goodnight. We'll have a good sleep, and we're going to be here all weekend leading up to Championship Monday. So feel free to tune us back in.
So commanding lane here, 53 to 9 for Renat. There's 43 on the table and 42 in it. 40, 44, my apologies. So I was just going to ask you, is math a little bit different up in Canada? <laughs> it's different in America, actually, <laughs> as uh, we're quite familiar with the metric system, as I'm pretty sure you guys are. Very much so. Um, Northern Ireland, do they use stone? Yes. Okay. That's, uh, that's just throw the rest of the world in a, a tizzy of <laughs> <laughs> measurements. into a little CFD exchange and nobody really yet getting the upper hand other than the 53 okay. point lead mm. Pahadador you know, just needs to stop the bleeding here what a great shot this looks to be if he certainly a good attempt up all right for him. Does this red past the yellow into the yellow pocket. Tell to tell from our angle. Okay, it doesn't go. Cut there for Renat. Yeah, we just has to really put 100% into the pot here, just focus on potting the red. shot is <laughs> it's a nice shot there because if he had missed that uh, red was definitely a, a sitter for Renat into the yellow pocket to the uh, final red on our other TV table. Not sure exactly what the score is, but probably uh, if it's still going at the conclusion of this frame, we'll head over there. So Bahador needs both these reds with blacks to tie. Uh, uh, my math is correct, my British math. They must do it a little bit different. Well, that's a little bit of loop, but I think the difference there is 44 on the table and there's 43 before that red went down. But you've been playing a lot today, you know. A lot of things have been going on ahead. You might have jet lag coming down from Colora Colorado. <laughs> but uh, Renette should take this first frame. Best of three, so not a great part. Mm 
Shaha Ador are not out of it. I know he has some uh, good friends in the chat room. Both gentlemen just oh taking sure. a glance at the scoreboard. Because there is a concession if it's uh, more than four snookers are required to win. I believe it's a concession. Is that correct, Mark? I haven't had a chance to look at the championship uh, package that all the players got. That uh, sounds familiar. I, uh, I'm not as familiar as one might hope. <laughs> but I promise for next time I'll do my homework. Okay, <laughs> so there we have it. Bad Gara informed me there was 44 and 43 the difference. Or rather, for a three difference, and mm -hmm. you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> well, now 49 is the difference, and there is a uh, 35 on. So, There's a lot of similarities between commentating and playing, you know. <laughs> tell your brain you want to do one thing with the key ball, and for some reason or another, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. If you need, I'm not too sure, because we're playing a roll-on, roll-off kind of mentality in this tournament, so I just don't know where we're standing, actually, how the day is looking. Obviously, the last technical batch of matches were scheduled for 4.30, now, obviously, we've got all tables going, and we m there was a few slogs earlier today, so we might be a little bit behind. But don't worry. The boys can watch it all weekend long, as tomorrow we'll be starting again at 9 a.m. And that will have the conclusion of the round robin, and I think there might be a bit of the knockout round that will be uh, started there. And uh, there's the concession there by Bauador. We're going to just quickly, as they set up frame two, jump over to table one as they're getting down to the end here. Although Jack has a very commanding lead of 35 points. And there's 27 on the table. And Francis has just left a very easy yellow for Jack. But a good effort. She was able to take a a frame from Jack, who I believe is a past U.S. Open champion, so it's good for the resume for Francis. It's always great seeing her. She's starting to play in a lot more snooker events, really digging in. Session here. I think. Well, Thirty six in it. Mm. Well, I think she wanted that snooker. Maybe she was just giving her a shot there. Maybe she got that snooker. That's one to the good. Definitely uh, sitting relatively nicely to attempt to get back up in behind the bolt. Mm -hmm. Now, Mark, are you just glancing off the green and uh, going behind the pink here? Yep. Um, well it looks like it's sitting off the kitchen just a little bit, so we could be in a bit of trouble here. If all goes to plan. Sure, I think there may be just enough mm -hmm. of the key ball in behind the pink there where he's gonna have a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, 
see the whole ball. Mm -hmm. I call shots like Stephen Henry, you know. <laughs> Someone's got to start talking. Ooh. Oh, she's flipped the green. <laughs> At all costs, avoid the pot. Mm-hmm. We've got to talk to some of these players. We've seen a lot of players not really, like, rolled that object ball over the pocket when their opponent needs snookers, so. Mm-hmm. Just playing a very nice shot there. And just uh, sitting off the cushion a little bit. Gives enough room for the white to travel in behind it. So really got to focus here just on hitting the brown. One, there's a few more, but she's got one. Another 29 and 22 on the table. So Francis can get two snookers and run out the table. It would be quite a steal for the match win. Indeed. So you can't have that white put back because we are at the uh, snookers required stage. But a nice little... I think there's a gap though. Yeah. Good effort. Trying to make something happen to give herself a chance. But for all intents and purposes, I think the match is over. But I think that would have been a great opportunity to do, just like you said, nice little delicate roll over the pocket. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are just not seeing that. I wonder if... Uh, Obviously, in America, a lot are pool players. Interesting how you'll notice as well that little nuances at times. Some of these players are, you know, they hold the cue on an angle and mm -hmm. chalk it that way, where most of the time you see snooker players with the cue up and down the length of their body and their cue on the top. Yeah, and I was actually playing the other day, and I had a gentleman look inside my case as it was open and I was playing, mm -hmm. and all my chalk are diagonally indented, you know, from stroking mm -hmm. the cue from corner to corner and as you say pool players like to plug it mm -hmm. create a nice little divot in the middle <laughs> and yeah the nuances are there and uh, yeah those differences make snooker snooker huh <laughs> they do and that's why we love the game Fortunate got the cue ball on the cushion. Jack just needs to put all his concentration into this. Yeah, I think you know, we have a nice view of that last shot. We were right down the center of the line almost. And again, I think just a delicate little touch, let it hang over the middle pocket. But again, those shots are uh, certainly nuances you ex 
you, you acquire over a long <laughs> period of playing and the experience and as we see there Francis has just knocked the brown in so it's almost <laughs> certainly going to be her last shot you would think yeah, just as a wry smile as she found that brown on the bottom of the pocket Yeah, the idea on that shot was good. The execution just lacking. And uh, big side pocket or big side pocket cross doublets. Yeah, again, I would just be playing off the pink here. Let it hang over the uh, yeah over the middle pocket. That's a great shot. Wow. That would pretty much seal the deal. Well mm. ever, but there there's the hands up, there's the handshakes, so Jack Kong takes that match two frames to one. Get some uh, good match win in this round robin stage and we'll just jump over to table two. You know, things are going for Renat and uh, Bahador. into the blue. It's always a little bit more difficult to control the cue ball. As we see here, he's just landed in a bit of a precarious position. Taking on this plant. Go. He's got a decent cue ball, but he's left this red hanging over the uh, black pocket. Not going to pass the uh, red there. Mm. And that just goes to show the dynamics of each shot are so different. Oh, nice long 11 foot pot there, and it's relatively straight on the yellow and just. Didn't follow through as straight as he'd like and just missed the yellow and he's left his opponent in here for a that was an easy starter. Like to go down the down the street to Universal Studios, get that DeLorean and go back in time and retake that shot. Yes, absolutely. Well, you must get up to eighty eight miles per hour. Is that <laughs> right? There you go. Yeah, I'd have to say, like, you know, going back to all the shots and stuff there, you know, always it seems like this debate, but I don't think it's really an endless debate about the maximum in snooker, the nine darter and darts and a hole in one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the maximum is multiple amount of shots. There's 37 shots you need, pots you need to make, mm -hmm. whereas a hole in one is one shot and a nine darter is nine shots. Mm -hmm. 
So to me, it's no a no-brainer right there. But uh, if you in the chat room all want to have a discussion, I feel free to go ahead. I don't know. Do you have any preference on that, Mark? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, nice little touch there. I think um, you know the greens in a lot of golf courses are made to accept the uh, the ball to some degree. Mm -hmm. You know. The, a lot of variances and you know, you're, you're standing six feet away from the board in the game of darts and you can hone that skill in pretty well. I mean, in my time I've hit a couple of 180s. Oh, um, very nice. But in terms of, you know, consistently finding a four inch gap anywhere in the table, whether by hook or by crook, uh, mm -hmm. certainly, uh, certainly requires a lot of skill and a lot of practice and see it now more often in the uh, professional circuit but I think that's just a testament to the amount of practice that those guys are putting in and it shouldn't take away from mm -hmm. just what a great achievement it is to to, to be rewarded with a 147 yeah. a good friend of the community Samuel Lee putting up a baseball perfect game and I have to say yeah that is definitely one feat for sure of uh when you're playing baseball, the opposing team doesn't get anyone on base at all. The problem is, it's a team game. You know, obviously, if there was a 27 strikeout perfect game in baseball, that's one thing because pretty much just the pitcher is striking out all the batters. But a perfect game, you could have a fly out. You got to depend on your left fielder to make the play. Mm -hmm. back a bit more. Mm -hmm. you know, if we go one better than a 147 and <laughs> talk about the absolute maximum you've ever seen. Uh, what is it, 155? 155, yeah. you ever seen that? I've never seen it. How about a 194? A 194. And Snooker Plus. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me that was the address to somebody's house. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the after party on Monday night. Oh, there we go. I'm sure somebody's going to be celebrating that day. Mm hmm. In fact, I'm 100% certain somebody will be celebrating <laughs> that day. <laughs> Who that is, uh, it's a little bit early to tell. And we certainly have a few contenders in there. And the reference to Monday, of course, is alluding to the the grand finale of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, we just don't know what time that will be scheduled for. Obviously, this is just day one of the 2023 United States National Snooker Championship, live at Embassy Billiards in St. Gabriel, California. We're in La La Land, and the stars are out here on the snooker table. Mark Wilson is joining myself, David Burney, in the booth. It's been lots of fun. Mark has some great insights, originally coming from Northern Ireland, where uh, they know a thing or two about this great game. Yes, and also the DeLorean, of course. Made in Northern Ireland proudly. Missed that reference. We were just uh, talking about how nice it would be Google, how nice it would be to go back in time and retake certain shots that might have altered the course of the match. I think uh, this frame is well balanced, and we definitely have a chance to right all the wrongs in the previous frame. 
of room here. Their hours usually run from 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. daily, so I think the room is starting to kind of get a bit more busier, so that's something that the players are going to have to contend with a little bit. Definitely check out cloudsnooker.com for all the live scoring and updates in the round robin matches. This is day one. A lot more great snooker. Eric made a 10. That's an interesting uh, little tidbit there that your uncle wrote, wrote a I hate Ronnie t-shirt at the Crucible. And then at the break he was disappeared and never seen again. You know, I'm not sure what to make of that. I know they are definitely frowning on uh, football jerseys as I think this past year there was a gentleman that had a Brazil jersey on and uh, during uh, a turnover in frames Next thing you saw him with a, a blazer and the, the bright yellow, <laughs> the Brazilian jersey underneath. Yes, I, uh, I don't think he was going for that sport chic look. <laughs> yes, and I think the dress code and snooker is uh, going through a bit of an influx at the minute. Uh, the, uh, if you look back to the 80s and the 90s and even the early 2000s, it was all very formal wear. But with the game ever expanding and different audiences coming in, more and more people with diverse culture are being encouraged to wear whatever they please as long as, you know, they support the game and help it grow. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, it seems like back in the heyday, obviously in the 80s, there was a lot more flashier wardrobe. Whereas now a lot of players, you know, pretty much are in the all black or the white and black. Mm -hmm. You know, you might see an odd player here and there with the navy blue or the Scottish tartan, possibly. And even so, with even more tournaments that are on the calendar, on the pro side... They do have some tournaments that have relaxed the dress code a little bit. It's still rather smart with mm -hmm. the smart shoes and dress pants and uh, a collared shirt. But it's not the full uh, evening attire as we usually see or we do see at the World Championships in Sheffield. Which is nice. The, uh, you know, with these days are very long and you play multiple matches and you, you really want to be comfortable and you know, it can be a little bit much to adhere to the uh, strictest standard for 8 or 10 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Speaking of flashy tartans and waistcoats, uh, it's quite a flashy red shirt you're wearing there. <laughs> <laughs> I like the red Peter Redden used to wear. Yeah, I know uh, Judd Trump has made uh, a little bit of a noise of you're just kind of restricting our ability sometimes mm -hmm. by wearing the full uh, suit attire. You know, why can't we be wearing something loose and comfortable? And then you could really see what our ability is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's something to be said for that. You know, you, uh, you look at like the, the shootout or whenever they were, you know, just that, that relaxed feel gives them the ability to just have a little bit more flair on the table. And there we have, uh, yeah, Kyron and his uh, shiny purple rain waistcoat. Oh, and that's an interesting one there, Eric. No eating chili dogs at the crucible. I can't fathom why. <laughs> it looks like it's Eric made a ten, learned the hard way. 
Well, feel free to share the story as long as it's a uh, family-friendly story. I didn't even know they sold chili dogs at the Crucible. Well, let's be going back in years. He must have stuck that one in. <laughs> Hide it in a bag of popcorn or... pocket there. So, here, frame here, for Barador. Australian one frame, nothing. Yeah, he can put himself in a good position here to uh, start dictating the uh, direction of which way this frame is going to go. A break of six. Ooh, could have done without that flick on the pink there. Don't want to give Renat an easy starter. He's the type of player, if you give him an easy starter, he'll definitely be on a color and he'll really start developing things after that. Gentleman actually was playing in the 2017 Richler Cup back in Burlington, Ontario, Canada. And in the final, I think, you know, he was potting like almost 100% in the first half of the first frame. He was just potting everything. It was just insanely good. Oh, the nice position. I'll shot off the blue. Put himself directly behind the uh, line of shot there on that last red. It's a nice cannon into that green. He's clawing away at that lead. Good angle on the green to go up table for the brown, so just got to keep his composure. Just got 
a little disturbance from uh, the adjacent table. Mm -hmm. A very intimate setting. And I think that's the ultimate test for us to repair. You know, when you play in a crowded facility and you can still manage to focus on all your shots and concentrate and make nice little breaks here and there. You're doing okay. Nice brown. Yeah, as we're alluding to, we don't have the, the scorekeepers monitoring the uh, tablets. It'd be nice to see the running score of Renat here, but uh, he's making it easy on us just to, you know, pot these balls and you'll win the frame and match. <laughs> Trick shot here going in the opposite hand. A lot more players do that. Oh, just couldn't take it there. So this match goes to Renat Danka's favor. He wins 2-0 to the good. That's a victory win for him in the round robin stage. Just going to step aside for uh, a few moments to just uh, re-energize. I'll just flip over to uh, another TV match that we have going on with uh, Christian Youngers and Jay He. But uh, stick around with that, and we'll be uh, right back. Are you going to stick around, Mark, or are you going to... What's, what's your feeling? Yeah, it'd be nice to stick around. And All right, sounds good. Call another well, uh, shot I'm or two. I just got to step away a little bit for a comfort break, so I can leave you uh, on the headsets, and you can call the uh, great action on this table, as you see. All righty, well, you took that well-deserved break. Thank you, sir. So we join the table with Jay here. Tucked up in behind the blue. He's gonna find that skip. He's played a great shot there. But he has left this red onto the black pocket. For Christian. It's a tricky shot there, cutting back into the blind black pocket. But uh, Christian's left Jay in here with a nice straight red into the middle pocket. shot on the black there with the rest. Nice technique.
excellent shot. Or a break of 17. Ah, oh, Derek. I hope you explained to him what you were uh, what you were talking about. I'm sure now he'll use that phrase all the time. Seventeen for Jay there. Just seeing that word snickered there makes me think of an old song. Snooker Loopy, if you all are familiar with that. It's a song you want to hear for all you uh, snooker fans who like a little nostalgia. Absolutely, Charles. There we go. Definitely a song you want to sing at your karaoke. That's a nice little kiss in behind the black. Give himself a chance to keep this little break going. And Jay's positional play here has been top notch. This black's going to require nice straight queuing. I'm playing that with deep screw. I think to, to try and knock the red out away from the cushion there but he's getting himself at least a, a shot on this red or the option to, to play safe. Treasure, Charles. Hang on to that one. got to do here is pot the red and screw back for the yellow green brown blue pink and black seems pretty easy when you say it like that
I'm trying to play that shot a little bit too thin. He's, he's fouled and missed, and he's left Christian in here with a little dilemma. Place shift there. Twenty two behind and thirty five left. Christian here just needs to get a nice easy starter. And this is a tough little shot into the middle. ball Nice easy skip there. Or at least he made it look easy. That's a good effort by Christian to try and get up in behind the blue. Tough shot. Tough to judge the pace and the uh, the angle off those cushions. See what Jay was trying there is trying to get the white in behind the black at a good line, just a little bit too much pace. And what a great shot by Christian there. And another. Do 
It's a tough ask when you have three long shots in a row. You can see you just kind of throw the arm at that last shot up there, trying to swing the cue ball around the cushions. And he's brought the uh, yellow. Back with it. Brings back in here. Look the green there. I should put him twenty one points ahead with. 22 on. So Christian needs all four remaining colors. And this brown is frame ball for Jay. But he didn't want that. Oh, what a great, great pot there. I'll need to pink and black. Just take a little glance at the scoreboard. The black making this just a little awkward. focus on the pink. Yeah. That'll be the first frame to Jay.
and we'll be right back for the start of the second frame. I'll leave you with your thoughts for a couple of minutes. Hello again, everybody. Thank you uh, to Mark Wilson that covered me a little bit so I could take a little break. And I hope you enjoyed that uh, first frame of Christian Younger's in J.E. But Mark is still in the booth with me, David Burney. And just so you are all aware, this is going to be our last TV table of the day, as we just have about five tables still in action. And it's winding down here on day one, but don't forget uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the West Coast will be starting up. So that's around noon time on the eastern side of the continent and probably around 5 o'clock for our good friends back in the U.K. So do tune us in. There'll be a lot of moving and shaking. A few people are going to be going home tomorrow, unfortunately, as we'll conclude the round robin. And then we'll start the very exciting knockout round to find out who will be the 2023 United States National Snooker Champion. Yeah, so welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thanks sir, for filling in. Hopefully it was a exciting match. I kind of came back and saw a little bit. It looked like it was going to the last few colors, actually. Yeah, just um, Jay let Christian back in and Christian put out a nice couple balls and pushed the ball out a little too far in the pink and the penultimate shot of the frame for him okay. and Jay just stepped in and took advantage. He finds himself 1-0 up here. Yeah, so I obviously know a bit about Christian Obviously, as the streaming producer, but also I've seen him play a bit. I don't know much about Jay, so was it pretty much Jay's first frame to have, and he just kind of let Tristan have a chance, or was he back and forth a good old sparring match? Um, yeah, he, Christian was 22 points back at one <laughs> one point, and um, an uncharacter, uncharacteristically missed opportunity by. Jay, that Christian back in, and um, as I say, just different shot selection, and mm -hmm. maybe the boat was a little bit too far from the pontoon. <laughs> but uh, he's found himself in prime position here to dictate the early stage of the second frame. And uh, maybe just the first frame jitters kind of. Mm -hmm. Got in the way a little bit, but made a couple of nice long pots. Um, I say uncharacteristic misses, but it was a it was a pretty long, yeah, pretty long shot for a third shot in a row, and that's a tall order for anybody at any standard. Mm -hmm. Very nice red there to keep this break going. And yeah, hopefully uh, Christian is able to uh, turn off his uh, streaming producer brain and just be a full fledged snooker player right now. It's definitely looking promising. It's a good start. and they shot with the rest and the previous frame there was a couple of nice shots with the rest from Jay and it's usually one part of the game especially an amateur snooker that's overlooked but these gentlemen have done a fine job of taking advantage of fully focusing on the stroke He's a 
left it there for Christian. It's going to be a definitely a long one, but. used to the great conditions they have at Ox Billiards. Visit Mark if you're ever up in the Seattle area. Definitely pay them a visit. They've got the star tables, the heated stuff. That's one thing I felt differently mm -hmm. last night when I was in the room. Just put a hand on the table just to make feel like how the nap was. And I'm like, oh, it's not as warm as Seattle. Yeah. But uh, still beautiful tables, but... Not all of them can be heated. <laughs> yeah, here Seattle is a, a booming snooker community, which is fantastic. And those guys are certainly spoiled with great playing conditions. All top-notch stuff up there. As you say, the star tables and the heated slates. In fact, one of my opponents from earlier today, Angus, was uh, another Seattle native. Mm -hmm. An incredible flair, great player. Very quick, a lot like Jimmy White. <laughs> uh, I think. Go ahead, Mark. I think Jimmy may have even told him to slow down a little. You know, <laughs> enjoy it. Might come with age, who knows, but uh, mm -hmm. Al, it's the 2023 United States National Snooker Championship, and it is in Embassy Billiards, which is located in San Gabriel in California, Southern California, just outside of Los Angeles. So uh, the palm trees are out. to probably check with uh, Alan Morris after this frame comes to conclude. I haven't really heard of many high breaks. Usually that uh, kind of comes our way over the course of the first day. So maybe it's just day one. Everyone kind of just getting a feel for the tables. And obviously tough in the uh, quick format of the best of three. You don't want to really make a careless miss and let your opponent come back in to put a high break. Everybody's a little tentative. Mm. And those shots probably the toughest shots to play on a snooker tail will cut back into a blind pocket. Struck. Played that with it almost safe. Obviously, if he misses, his cue ball's going into bulk. And he's got a good angle on the brown to come back down to the business end of the table. Not much in the way of playing your percentages on that last shot. You had to play a really good positional shot to, to find this red. And he did. Just didn't want to cannon into that red. He's kind of coming for the black. and 
Al, we're getting there. Al is asking how popular snooker is in the U.S. Uh, it's true, nine ball is definitely the popular game in this part of the world, but uh, slowly and surely things are materializing in the great game of snooker. As we've seen a lot more interest. I think about six years ago this tournament might have had 30 players in, but now we have 64. the US Open for the women's professional side although the women's tour is kind of almost a as I understand a stepping stone to the pro tour kind of minor league but uh, there's some very phenomenal players on that circuit and they've come over to Seattle to perform at the US Open so that's ran for two years so that's uh, definitely promising and uh, Ahmad Ali is the first American over on the tour in some time. I don't know if he's the first, but uh, definitely he's the, the newest. So there's lots of good stuff happening in America, and there's lots of good regrowth in Canada. So North America is definitely jumped on to the snooker world. That's a wonderful game. You can play pretty much your entire life. Played and viewed in over a hundred countries. So not a tied 12 12 here in the second frame. Important one for Christian. Doesn't want to lose this one 2 nothing. See if he was to lose 2 1, you still have that one frame that could be advantageous to any tie breaking procedures. Yeah, the short format versus the three frames. You can't make too many mistakes. Right. Oh, he's done well there. Back down this side of the half, this side of the table off the uh, brown ball. Still not ideal position. To pull up a little bit. I think he might have ran just a bit too far for this black. Best place on the table to get a double kiss. Good effort, which I think. Yeah, you can see it. Not a bad shot for a right hander. Left hander, mm -hmm. you'd be a little bit uh, in trouble. Easiest shot in the pantry, but uh, definitely uh, I know Christian was trying to snooker him behind the green on the last shot. So. Yeah, not a not a terribly big gap between the green and the cushion, but he found it. No damage done.
Very fortunate there. Mm -hmm. Double kiss could have been disastrous. As a lot of these reds down around the black are getting spread out quite nicely. Yeah, starting to look more like a little practice setup there. And you had to fancy whoever was amongst the balls first to, to do some damage. No, pretty much everything on the right side of the table cover here. Jay's left Christian with a little head scratch in here. And that uh, red in the middle there, looking at it on the left side, just to the right of the, the pink. Left side, come around a couple cushions, shoot back into bulk. Benefit he's taking the black out of play there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Does the pink go to the left middle? Hmm, that's not ideal. California earthquake is going to stay out. Charles, all these jokes, I think you got to send those over to Dave Hendon as on the Snooker Scene podcast. He's uh, brought out a, uh, a joke section in his whole podcast where he reads out a few jokes from fans and some that he has created himself. So. Give him a roll at the Snooker Scene Podcast at mail.com, I believe, is where he takes any submissions. Yeah, they are coming in thick and fast. <laughs> We see this in the amateur game where all the reds are on one side of the table and all the colors are on the other side of the table. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very familiar sight. <laughs> That's where Eric was uh, talking earlier. Why his uh, uncle had illegally parked or something like that. Okay. And it said he was snookered. And uh, just looking at the word snookered written on the screen rem just kind of reminded me of uh, the old song by Chaz and Dave. Oh, boy. I'm not sure if you're familiar. Uh, well, there's a couple. Yeah. A little snooker loopy that mm -hmm. actually was all right. But yeah. the Romford rap, which actually was terrible. <laughs> well, yeah, if you like a little nostalgia and some comedy value. Watch a bunch of snooker players in the 80s trying to sing. Mm -hmm. Were you around during the heyday of the, the snooker in the 80s? No, I was a... Uh, I think I was a thought by then, you know? <laughs> I hope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And I think he mentioned he may have had it on vinyl record as well. And I'm pretty sure my, my father had it. Well, just, you know, back in the 80s, snooker was just the thing to be over there. It's amazing how it just took the world by storm and, you know, are we seeing a resurgence? Definitely is hugely popular in China. Yes. Uh, lots of great things have been happening over there. There are obviously, we know there's been some unfortunate events that happened last spring. But they're producing a, a high standard of players. Yes, and I think uh, snooker in general is finding its feet again and expanding its audience. And it definitely seems like there's always some sort of generational resurgence. Mm -hmm. And we find ourselves in the midst of one right now. And as you mentioned, it's great to see um, a lot of new talent coming from China and even America. Mm -hmm. That's got to be a big statement. Yeah. I, know. I think they definitely would love to get into America. And definitely Ahmad Ali is helping that out. And as we've said numerous times, you know, the Olympics would be a, a great thing to have. I know Jason Ferguson is still pushing it. I know someone in the chat room is mentioning that uh, it's quite possible that that snooker dream, uh, the Olympic dream is done because Barry Hearn isn't there anymore. And Barry's still somewhat involved, I think, from a behind the scenes kind of feel. You know, doesn't want to be the front figurehead. But as I understand, uh, the Olympics is a big uh, Jason Ferguson push. He's the one that's really trying to put it together and he's the chairman of the WPBSA. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think the more platforms we have to perform and compete and show off how great this game really is, can only really, uh, do great things. This is going to go back. The last picture show is our friend Fevin five seven zero Megan saying the last picture show in the early nineteen fifties in Texas it features some snooker in the dialogue. So very interesting. I had a friend that was working on actually let me think it's the Tales of Unfortunate Events, the Netflix series, mm -hmm. not the movie, but the series. And there was one scene where they did have a snooker table in it. And the lead character is taking these children through, opens the door, this is the games room, you see the snooker table, but nobody uses it. They close it just like that. <laughs> so uh, it's interesting to see that snooker can weed its way into pulp pop culture. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's always a great conversation to starter when I talk about it. People think I'm talking about food. It sounds like Snickers. I guess, to some people. People think it's a dirty party trick back <laughs> in Canada. <laughs> Snooker, what's this all about? <laughs> oh, fantastic show. Who's your favorite Canadian snooker player? Ooh, wow. You know, I'm a 
a, f a fan of all of them. Like, I can't really just pull out, like, there's Cliff Thorburn, who's just, you know, put us on the map, being mm -hmm. the 1980 world champion. You've got the the dashing, wonderful, handsome looks of a Kirk Stevens with that beautiful hair and uh, white suits. Well, not something. Then you've got quite a character of Bill Werbenick that would drink you under the table. Uh, you got Jim Weich that has done so much for the game in Canada and didn't you know played over in the pro circuit uh, does a lot of commentary for a pool now mm -hmm. has a great club in Toronto um, interesting obviously when there's controversy there could be a Canadian Elaine Robidoux involved in that uh, left-handed playing by Ronnie O'Sullivan so mm -hmm. many years ago and got to know actually Brady Golan because he plays in some he lives in British Columbia uh, in Vancouver or in Canada, and that's uh, close to Vancouver, or Vancouver's in the province of British Columbia, so he comes out for some tournaments, and it's been nice getting knowing him, because he had a, a stint over there on the Pro Tour. So, yeah, I really just, there's not really just one, there's... Uh, yeah. There's a great network of players from Canada, and anyways, mm -hmm. kind of tickled me that there was never really that much of a presence in the U.S., given the proximity. Pretty much so, yeah. Like, obviously, some of the more northern states, like your Minnesotas, your North Dakotas, Montana, Washington State, where we see Seattle's doing wonderful things now, but those are places that, you know, aren't the funnest places in the winter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe, maybe just America wanted their independence from Britain, and they just wanted to be independent from everything, <laughs> and that includes their <laughs> games and sports. Well, this is a devastating blow here. Don't know if this black ball is frame ball. It seems like it is. Never can tell. Well, he's, he's down giving it some consideration, so... Person's sure. coming back to the table. Yeah, so we got a little black yeah. ball game here. One hiccup with the scoring software there, so five points in it. Black ball here. Does he take it into the side? Force us into a decider. It's oh a big shot. Oh. You gotta get a good cue ball on the plate. Oh, the shot. double kiss, and he has. Just avoided that. So he's in the side of relief, but I think you know you kind of do a so a cross double here, you know. Might not be crossing it into the pocket, but at least you have some distance. What about green pocket? Thump it off uh, the black cushion. Oh no, where's the okay? Oh! Yeah. Wow. That's a little luck of the Irish there. <laughs> I should maybe just shut up then. <laughs> 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 a little fluke there to force us to the cider. So we will be uh, standing by for a few short moments while these guys uh, rack up the balls. But we'll be right back with a decider. It's our last match here of the day on day one of the 2023 United States National Snooker Championship. So stand by. Live action coming up very shortly. And we're back here. Frame three is kicked off. Let's see if Christian Youngers can ride the momentum of that uh, wild fluke on the black to put him into this position. Can Jay he calm the bleeding? So this one really has importance now. Definitely getting a match victory really is going to help yourself moving along. This is this is group P 
key, I believe. Mm. That's correct. So 16 groups. So I think uh, players in this group have just only played their first match right around this time, the latter part of the afternoon. So they'll be back on the tables playing their last two. So this would be a good statement if you can win uh, this match. Yeah, I feel a little swing in momentum. Christian, Christian just clinging on to this much. And that's Italian CFD there by Jay. The pink gun is dead. And That's barely. Uh, to, to tell. Nope, doesn't look like a touching ball, or they'd be on that like hawks looking at it. <laughs> mm, they're in store for a little tit and tat and stuff like that. Maybe a re rack, who knows? How many shots do you give it before you ask for a re-rack? be interesting to see how it plays out in the amateur world, especially right now where we don't have referees on the table, where it seems like in this day and age, obviously, they'd be playing around for quite a while in the olden days. And now the referees kind of getting on them a little bit sooner and even so much almost sometimes the players are even with themselves without mm -hmm. the referee just going oh, how about we have a re-rack I think just obviously the professionals they just know their ability so much and they can see those shots ahead that they just know what they're going to do their opponent's going to do and what they're going to do back and then what the opponent's going to re retort with so it's like why are we wasting any time and Obviously, they both concur with both players, and if they both agree. Yeah, I think the moment you push it right away from the pack, there's always that chance to play away. Mm -hmm. And that's just what happened there with Jay. He saw that one on the cushion and played up into Bolt. And now we've opened them up quite a bit. for this red to the top right corner. Hmm. We could see if they show. Quite annoying here, Christian. Maybe you can just sneak by a little bit to give him a chance at this pot. Abdur, hello. Welcome to the, the broadcast. Thanks for tuning in to the stream. 
Definitely anyone out there, if they have any comments or questions, let us know. So you feel free to let us know where you're tuning in from. I find sometimes in these short matches when you lose that first frame, you really kind of dig in and, you know, kind of wakes yourself up. However, Christian was very close to being uh, losing this match. <laughs> and just like that, when I thought he was getting going, he kind of defaults on that blue. It's nice to see we've got some viewership over in Pakistan. player yet to get going in this room. I should really run for that one. I don't know if Jay has just that red that's below the pink. Can he get enough of it? Maybe shoot it into the middle pocket. To take that withdraw, he's not going to relieve a, a lot on because that black is being a pain on the top left. Yeah, and <coughs> we say there's <laughs> all chance for a re rack out the window back in the day when they used to push them over the <laughs> one side of the table. Yeah, it was a big pocket with that black there. Trish, Christian was trying to use that to get the red in, but unfortunately wasn't successful. Oh, is this right on the cushion? Oh no, just gonna look. So I had to pull up here. That's maybe what Christian needs just to get a, a little break going. Mm -hmm. well, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, Butler McDonald saying the score should be nine and not eight as two reds went down or down. Players are in charge of the scorekeeping, so we'll leave it up to them. And I think Christian may have pot of pink. safe. Oh. Might hurt the little fluidity of this game.
would almost think the advantage might go to Jay a little bit in this match. Christian's been doing a lot of uh, work today. Um. Yeah, he's been here pretty early this morning. Sure, and unfortunately, Butler McDonald, uh, the players are the scorekeepers. As uh, we've alluded to, they ha each table here is outfitted with uh, a tablet and the players are to punch in their scores and that goes directly to the cloudsnooker.com page where you can see live scoring and then as well on these TV tables those tablets talk directly to the scoring software on the stream so we kind of have to leave it up to them uh, we're always looking for great help behind the scenes if people want to come and help out and yeah, I feel like it would be helpful if there was an actual person there to manually keep score because then it would be up to date and they would catch maybe that missing red. Yeah, it's a nice reference point for us to go back and look at to see where the <laughs> break scores are. So, Butler, if you just keep updating that little comment, red, black, red, black, green, let us know what's coming next. Well, neither players are really... Either of them, neither of them are really bothered, and I think we're way past that time now that we really couldn't. If they notice it a little bit earlier on that that mistake had happened, and maybe, you know, we'd probably have to pause it, maybe hold the stream a little bit or someone might in the room that's got a, a smartphone or something like that they could pull up the stream on YouTube and go back in time but hopefully as we continue to grow we'll get referees we'll get scorekeepers on each table and uh, these kind of errors will slowly slip away but hey we're all human and we all make mistakes I think that's why uh, we enjoy watching it how exciting would be Snooker if it was a couple of robots? That would be interesting, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a great way to get into the game at any level. There's a refereeing. You can be a player. There's certainly uh, other ways you can support Snooker, as my colleague says, behind the scenes. And we're always looking for great minds. Yeah, sometimes I think we all come into this game, you know, wanting to play, but sometimes we got to realize, you know, but we do have players that are involved in doing other things behind the scenes, as Jay Prodhocker is the head of uh, the United States Snooker Association. He's got a lot of duties to do throughout the weekend here as president, but he does participate in the tournament. I know back in Canada I do have players that help me out with refereeing and scorekeeping and uh, they as well will part participate in the tournaments. Myself is doing tournament direction sometimes back in Canada. I just find it uh, too tough to do. Uh, there's some things you can do but being a tournament director, and if I'm playing you, Mark, you know, all of a sudden a player finishes a match, then they look like a, a lost year with their scorecard, not sure where to go. Mm -hmm. And that so kind of takes me out of the match. It's kind of unfortunate to you because you're like, where are you going? So. All right, Mark Wilson is my witness. And the entire chatting community out there. Ooh, Mar RJ. But Butler McDonald, what can you do? Let's put on a tournament out there. Let's get it broadcast. Let's get it streamed. I'd love to come out to Nova Scotia. I have some family history out there. I've never been out to the Maritimes. So I put it to you. Let's uh, put a nice tournament out there. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. Maybe start with a little small tournament and build and build and build. Yeah, these um, these tournaments certainly take a lot of work. Um, but any place to start is a good place to start. Mm -hmm.
Oh, nice shot. Sometimes you just got to take your medicine. If the shot's not there, you don't want to force anything. Oh, what a hit there. Unfortunately, he's left the red on, but... First, I thought he was going to miss everything, maybe even hit the black, but... find any kind of open area on the table there and he gave himself a chance at this point just take one shot at a time and Keep fighting for ideal position. Yeah, you can never win a frame or match of snooker when you're sitting at your table, so. Christian's just got to take care of these shots that he plays. Know that he's kind of playing with house money after that fluke on the black in the last frame. is starting up now and he's pulling out of the garage and it's going to just start motoring around he's potting a bunch of balls as well Butler McDonald back to Nova Scotia let me know if there's any uh, rooms out there you know, living on the west coast of Canada, I don't know much about the east coast. So if you're let me know what, uh, what, the, what the scene looks like out there, hopefully we can uh, do something to foster it and grow it. That's for sure. When we call it a, a blind cut. It's really when you're in your field of vision, you can't see the pot that you're cutting your object ball into. Just into the wrong side of the block there. Take care, Eric, made of tin. Hopefully you can uh, tune us back in tomorrow, Sunday, and holiday Monday for this great tournament. But have fun uh, with the dog. Our friend out in Nova Scotia letting us know that uh, he knows of one table and one at one pool hall. However, there is a, a legion, a Royal Canadian legion, that has two tables that are very aged, plain poor conditions, not suitable for tournaments. Well, for sure, feel free to uh, well maybe uh, reach out to me and maybe we can uh, help you out. Yeah, I'm affiliated with some uh, snooker organizations back in Canada. Well, 
there you go, New Glasgow. It's two hours from Halifax, so a bit of a drive, but they have five tables. Pale tuning in from Manitoba, the middle of Canada. Home of the bourbon. Uh, yeah, Darcy Michael, who hails from Winnipeg in Manitoba, is doing a lot of great work for the snooker scene. It's actually, in fact, where Bill Murbinick came from. A lot of great players actually came from Manitoba. It's, you know, about 30 below. I'm saying Celsius. I know I should be changing it to Fahrenheit as I'm in America, but we're talking about a Canadian place. But uh, <laughs> if it's 30 below, why do you want to go outside? Why don't you just stay inside and enjoy the good fun on a snooker table? Yeah, that's certainly like an ideal time to be on the green beige. With the heaters on, staying warm. Yeah, nice cup of coffee or for your young player, a little hot chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, she, uh, Christian was telling me he had a little issue with his tip actually last night. Something had happened. And so he had to. He found that they did have a little bit of a, a lathe in the room, so he went to try some handiwork. Actually, as the cue was spinning, he burnt his hand a little bit. But it seems like uh, everything's playing all right now. So, yes, and to note that's not a bandage that he's wearing on his hand. I believe <laughs> that's a friction glove, right? That is true. Yeah, there's a few, but not. You don't see many players, a lot more pool players obviously put the glove on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just really increases that smooth action on the backswing. Takes the sticky element of the back of the hand away. I've never played with one, so I'd be interested to see how they perform. I have not either, so I do not know how to comment on how they perform. Interesting that he went, well, this is brown, oh, but he had a lot of opportunity to probably lay a snooker there, and, you know, it's 35 on the table, there's 26 in it, so... Yeah, and Christian can now dictate a little here. He's got a lot of a lot of opportunity to get this red safe. Butler McDonald, we are on the other side of the, this continent. We're down in Southern California at Embassy Billiards. It's in St. Gabriel, California. That's where we will be here all weekend leading up to crowning the 2023 U.S. National Snooker Champion on Labor Day Monday. I've seen a lot of uh, green between object ball and key ball today and some players make it look very easy 
and take no shots on. Um, Christian, he's one of those players. He had a couple early in the first frame, or the second frame, excuse me. Yeah, actually both Christian and Francis play uh, out of the same club up in Seattle at Ox, so uh, maybe there's something in the water up there that uh, makes you successful with your long potting. Yeah, it's been very good. Well, that in fact, he just needs a color mm -hmm. to be his frame ball. This has definitely been a, a great turnaround for all the Christian Younger supporters. That's what I say with the amateur game, you know, just so many matches are decided on these colors. Yeah, all you gotta do is just get down and pot them, which sounds a lot easier. <laughs> easier than said in than reality. Done. Than <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Putting them for the uh, for the match, all kinds of noises going through your head. You'll just take them one at a time here. Just keep it simple, yeah. So this is quite a steal of the match for Christian here. I don't think Jay's going to be coming back to the table. He's giving a little smile over there. And there's the handshakes right there. So Christian Youngers turns this match around to take a 2-1 victory in his first match of this 2023 United States National Snooker Championship. Mr. Mark Wilson, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining me in the booth this afternoon. You're more than welcome all weekend long. We'll see where if we can uh, bring you back in here. I hope you enjoyed your time. Thanks for having me. It's been quite a pleasure watching these guys. Um, and I look forward to coming back and commenting on another game. Sounds great. So we're going to say good night, everybody. That's it for all of us over here. Day one of the 2023 United States National Snooker Championship at Embassy Billiards in St. Gabriel, California. It's free to watch on the stream. Check out Ox's Ox Billiards channel on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch TV. And if you're in the Southern California area feel free to come on by as it's free admission and they do have some cool treats and some tasty eats so it's david bernie saying good night everybody and we'll see you tomorrow 9 a.m pacific standard time take care everyone